Yeah. yeah, chasing my bag, my feet in the cream. cream. Running these laps, not losing my steam. steam. I'm feeling good, this life's what I need. Mm. Don't intervene with my energy. Yeah, yeah. I'm in her scope like Jimmy Iveen. Yeah, no Superman, but I'm feeling supreme. Mm. This not a movie, but I'm making a scene. Hey. Yeah, I can tell you how to live your life, but, hey. but, hey. but hey. you just gotta get up. Yeah. We paying a price. price. Mm. Piece of the pie, I need me a slice. slice. Yeah. Rolling the dice, the scariest spice. spice. Mm. Sticky like rice, the tricky reprise. Price. Yeah. Love will suffice, I suffer in silence. Mm. All alone, I'm lost on the island. Lost. Let's spread peace and less of the violence. Duh. Sebastian Block, I'm God's playing violence. Yeah. The flowers violet, give me my rose. rose. This for my city, all for my bros. Rose. Did it alone, so far in my zone. Toast. So raise your glass, let's all have a toast. toast. I can show you how to get like me, live your life to you, D-I-E. D-I-E. Yeah, look, I can tell you how to live your life, but, 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 you you just got to get up now.
the game. Been through the flame, I'll get out the way. Whole lot of change. Still been the same, put that on the name. I had to go through it just to get to it. Look what I became. Elevate, level up, way to the top, headed to the peak. All them boys want to talk, hit them out of law, but don't got receipts. I do it with ease, to you it's a burden, to me it's a breeze. You feel that? That win is degree, that kickback. You coming at me, boy, sit back. Came out the womb like this, hit the pedal in room right quick. Gotta get it, we going up, way up, my land on the moon. You step in the room like this, we breaking the rules right quick. They killing the mood, and up in the fuel, my land in the tomb. You be the witness. At the time, turn a repeat to a 3P, yeah. yeah. Got the franchise on me, you more like G Lee, yeah. 21st century, you all the way BC, yeah. Old boys been washed up, I'm not stuck in TT, hey. Came out the womb like this, hit the pedal in room right quick. Gotta get it, we going up, way up, my land on the moon. Who step in the room like this, we breaking the rules right quick. They killing the mood and up in the fuel, my land in the tomb. Whoa, VVS all on my neck, whoa, 
elevated on focus. Came a long way from the lowest. Yeah, gotta get it though, mindset. Gotta put it in motion. <laughs> This is the moment. Gotta one of my opponent. Back then, they ain't noticed me. Now they know it's me. I'm the chosen. It's my time, yeah, I put that on Bible. No excuses, gotta get to the final. Take all of my idols and turn them to rivals. It's all or nothing, man. The trophy is vital. Game time, bet I'm coming in clutch. No hang time, man. They can't keep up. The game's on the line, seconds on the time. Who can't fight? It's gotta be us. Better under pressure, go ahead and let it fall on. Yeah, whole lot of times they doubt it. I wouldn't be who I am without it. Sleepless nights, I count it. It all paid off, it's really astounding. I had to keep the faith to elevate. Hope for better days, they were coming. Now we can celebrate, knowing every day is a bunny. Yeah, it's my time, yeah, I put that on Bible. No excuses, gotta get to the final. Take all of my idols and turn them to rivals. It's all or nothing, man, the trophy is vital. Game time, bet I'm coming in clutch. No hang time, man, they can't keep up. The game's on the line, seconds on the time. Who can't fight? It's gotta be us. Better under pressure, go ahead and let it fall.
clothes, give me a blindfold. This shit is easy, like a recital. I'm taking my shot, like my hands on the rifle.
I know a place that will break you into a thousand pieces. Stay away from them. Stay away from Lorca, Paco, and Picasso. Don't ask about Lola. I, Caballo Grande. I, Lord Nieve. But, in spite of everything, it occurs to you to visit Andalusia. Don't say I didn't warn you. Be careful of the Andalusian crush. Hey guys, it's Jimmy Lin, former professional Counter-Strike player and Valorant coach. Watch out for the stairs, clear this angle, you're going to be able to fight this. Red Bull gives you wings. I'm out here in the cold night, running till I barely feel my feet. Wanna see it through my own. There's no going back, and I'm not afraid anymore Cause I know I'm gonna be the last one standing Yeah, I'm not afraid anymore Yeah, I don't wanna wait anymore I'm ready to fall
welcome back to the Riot Games Arena. We are coming to you live from Berlin to kick off the new season of VCT EMEA. I am your host, Yingsu, and I'm joined here once again by Kukuka and a, a guest, Bone Cold with a 3K. Welcome to the studio. <laughs> Yo, thank you so much. It's, it's so nice to be here with you guys. Am I happy to live in Madrid? No, I'm not. Am I happy to see the teams now from EMEA competing? I am very happy to see them again. I'm also very happy that I have you here with me, Kukuka, and Bone Cold as well. I can't wait to dive uh, into things. But first, let's talk about Masters uh, Madrid because that didn't end all too long ago. And uh, Kukuka, what do you think about the uh, EMEA performance at Madrid? Brief, quick and brief, actually, if some, might, if some might say. I mean, I think that especially with the expectations that were created through kickoff and how this team performed here regionally we thought that we might be in a new era of like the rookies taken in and all that but in the end it felt a bit of it lackluster team heretics also having the crowd buff didn't actually play to the to their strengths but honestly kc which i think was coming in as the stronger team lost against top three teams in the tournament yeah i feel like kc like i'm just very excited to see how they're going to actually perform now in berlin i feel like I've had the same thing happen to me even in Berlin when I was playing, where they get their first international matches under their belt. I'm just so happy to see, you know, like what kind of confidence they're actually going to bring here today. I feel like they're probably going to come in with a lot of confidence. I know other people call us a zero team region, but we're an 11 team region. <laughs> and we're going to prove uh, that. And with that in mind, let's talk about the format this time around, because it is a little bit different compared to what we saw at kick off. Uh, coming into this for stage one, teams will be playing within uh, their respect groups that will change in split two but we'll talk about that when we get there six teams out of these 11 will be heading to playoffs and for each win these teams get during the regular season and playoffs as well they're going to be earning one point you guys can see on your screen right now on the left hand side cake of course they won uh kickoff so they are already coming into here with three points and of course the teams that win split one will also be earning three points as well and of, of course uh, three teams will also be heading to shanghai at the the end of this and there's a lot of information for you guys to digest but don't worry we'll take you through it as the weeks go on and for anybody at home that is wondering when are we going to see clove they will be available in week two so stay tuned uh, for angel for redgar <laughs> i have no doubt they're going to be uh, on it but you guys saw the groups uh, already so let's talk about how hot or cold or should i say how bone hot or bone cold these teams are coming into this split uh, kakuka i will kick off with you which teams are you feeling are might be a bit phone cold so if we think about the thermometer and how things are going to be i love this graphic by the way i think you look it's stunning. Incredible. No, 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 both of these pictures um, are fine i'm gonna start right at the bottom and i think that the first thing i'm going to mention is going to be bbl right i'm going to put them down here i feel like last year they had Tremendously bad start, four losses in a, in a row. I feel like this year as well with those two losses, I think they're coming in cold because as all the teams have gathered up, uh, stronger together, right? There's less of a um, different level amongst them. I think that BBL start, say, is the team that has the most to prove. So they're bone cold. They're very bone cold, exactly. <laughs> uh, and then uh, a little bit higher than them, but still a bit cold. I'm going to place Giant X. Now, same logic, like right? last year, they were the winners of LCQ, but you know, maybe with the new change coming in, we're going to see a different face of them, maybe adapting more to this times that we're uh, running with all this crazy place. What do you think, Boko? Uh, Give me some bone hot. Give me something yeah. that's some bone, bone hot. hot. No, it's a little biased because I just got, you know, like uh, like released out of Vitality. But I do, <laughs> I do still think that Vitality is going to be one of the teams that is going to come up strong Ooh. in this split. I feel like I feel like they have like very very good individual players. I feel like now with Trex joining as well, it's going to be very nice to see them. You know. I, I'm just excited. Come to together, together. Yeah. them come mm. together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, another team that you think might be bone hot? As I said earlier, I think KC is like 100% going to be one of the other teams that I'm just so excited to see just because of their experience that they got from Madrid. It's going to be nice seeing them with the confidence. I feel like these are pretty good picks, but there's a couple of teams missing. So if you can do me a favor, uh, I'll take care of the bone medium rare and just throw Fnatic, Liquid and Navi in there. You know, I think they're in the middle. I don't necessarily think they're bone cold uh, or bone hot coming into this, but Kakuka, maybe some potential to move up with them. Uh, hear me out. I think that people are very excited for Fnatic. 
Celtic maybe forgetting a bit of what happened during kickoff. They're still a top-notch team. Same for Navi. Maybe a little bit of the nerves now that Ardis is back. We want to see the Navi that one once made us uh, fell in love with them. And for Liquid, I think the same. You know, with that super strong Apex score, they have a lot to prove during this first stage. Yeah, of course, they're a Liquid, so they can't be, you know, bone hot or cold. They're just bone liquid, anyone? No? Okay, anyway, uh, that's my one uh, boomer joke out of the way today. Uh, let's talk about the first matchup we are going to see here, kicking off with Carmichael versus Giant X. We're just going to have to address uh, this roster change right off the bat because not many te uh, teams around the world even made a roster change. So, uh, Bone Cold, talk me uh, through Purpo, uh, the fact that he's coming in for Nuke. Yeah, I mean, Purpo is actually a super exciting player to actually see coming into this league. I was playing with him, uh, I think he subbed in for us in Ascend uh, back in 2022, I think. And uh, even back then, he was an amazing flex player, super nice to play with. But from what I've heard, he might be coming into the duelist role. So it's going to be nice to see him, you know, like, let's see how he can flower off, you know, like, into the scene. Yeah, exactly. And uh, of course, this is the tweet where they announced that he was going to be joining them. Nuke, I'm, I'm sad that we have to like let him go. I hope that we see him again either during their year or maybe next year. Uh, definitely, it's not the last of them. But just to give you a little bit of information on who Purpo is, I think Bob Cold does is a brilliant introduction. He does have that VR, VRL experience in uh, KPI. Uh, obviously, you know, the best players, <clears throat> Mini Boo, come from uh, the Spanish League, also in focus last year. But as you said, he also has that VCT experience. He only played a couple of matches. He did join Gambit in that transition to uh, M3 Champions, right, to, through Mech, but he only screamed one time and then he went on to play that one time. The performance wasn't great, but he was the kind of player that people expected that sooner or later he will come into that top tier. I, we also could see in the graphic the last agents that, that he played, a lot of initiation, info gathering, but he actually is a super, super flexible player. This is the thing though, this is a good pickup, you know, he's been doing really well in tier two and Bone Cold, uh, he played with you uh, for one match I believe that was right so what was that like no yeah he was stopping in for us for a week and uh, he seemed like very open he seemed to have like a lot of ideas on his mind he was very uh, at least for us he was you know like even even though he came in like so new we were the world champions you know like back then he was still you know like just full of you know like just energy coming in to play with us so I'm very excited to see him play. Um, but this is the thing, you guys also kind of theorize a little bit what role he can play. He looks very, very flexible. So is the one for one uh, Nuki the right move? Or uh, as you guys said, maybe just stick him on a duelist. I think you have to identify if your giants, what went wrong in that kickoff, right? It, it, it feels like they weren't very sure of what to do or who had to be uh, doing which. Uh, feels a little bit undercooked. So maybe a new direction with a new player, it kind of, you know, opens your mind into, okay, it's not only what we want to do, we also have to react to to the other things that we're seeing around the globe and especially here in EMEA. How are we going to counter that to make us, again, a very good contender for titles? Well, you guys have heard from us. Let's hear from Giant X's coach Pipson, who gave us some insight into their new player, Purple. I'm now joined by Giants head coach Pipson. Pipson, welcome back. Now, you guys are coming into this split. Uh, one of very few teams has made a roster change. So talk me through what led to this. What was the reason for this change? Uh, I don't think that there is a one exact reason why it happened. We worked uh, for a pretty long time, like all together. I think we didn't make any changes after Champions. It was Ryan retiring himself and the stuff like that. So um, it's just like with a matter of time, we had the issues which we couldn't fix in general. And it's not related to only like Jiggy. Uh, 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 it's related to the full team. So it's not us making the change, it's not only changing Jiggy. We're changing a lot of stuff. Uh, the way we will approach the game, the way we will play, the roles, like uh, to make people more comfortable, to also take a look on uh, players' personality. Like for example, um, what is the traits of the personality and what fits him more inside the game and the stuff mm. like that. So we did a lot of changes and it's not only about changing like a certain player, but uh, so there are a lot of different reasons to uh, to make that change, and uh, it has nothing to do with uh, uh, with Nuki mm. personally or something. I think we're still like in a good relationship. So I worked with him for like two years, starting from G2. So it's just a matter of time. I will say the purple, great pickup. He's very very flexible. Uh, you talk about the role. So what role what role can we expect to see Purple on uh, in today's game, perhaps? Uh, let me remember what was the map, Vito. <laughs> I mean, in general, uh, what's I mean, being shuffled around? Because he's very flexible. Yeah, so you will mostly see him on proactive roles, uh, like uh, being more proactive and uh, uh, 
uh, Fitinho will also flex more, mm. like uh, in that sense that sometimes he will play duly, sometimes he will play something else and the stuff like that. So uh, we are just um, trying to make everyone a little bit more comfortable and uh, it's also switching other roles because Jiki Matas was playing a sentinel role, so someone else has to take it. And uh, so it's a lot of different changes and a lot of different uh, changes, not only inside the, the roles, but also inside the game, the way we want to approach. We kind of forgot all of our fundamentals, which lead us to champions previous year, and we just played garbage on kickoff. So it was unacceptable. And uh, I hope we will uh, show right now that it's much better and yeah. we are developing rather than regressing, you know. Thank you very much for your time, Pibson. I can't wait to see it. Best of luck today. Thank you. Now, we've heard a lot from Magnum and Tomazzi on social media. They've been spilling some tea and I thought we would also spill some VCT. See what I did there while we are at it. We're going to talk about Casey in just a second because I felt like Kakuka mm. Pipson was spilling a bit of tea as well. What did you make of that? I love the fact that he is always so honest about why Purple is also such a big pickup, but the, the way that he's talking about, we lost all the fundamentals, which by the way, as a coach, like admitting that about your team, it's probably admitting that you made uh, a mistake and you're admitting it in front of everyone and like taking that blame. We've seen that from, from other coaches, but to be so open, so specific about such a big mistake, I think it's great. Yeah, what did you think, Bonko? Code. Yeah, I, I love Pipson. He's always like super straightforward when it comes to these types of things. So it's super nice to hear, you know, like kind of, you know, like see behind the team as well a little bit. Yeah, well, uh, we spilled some tea on Giants, but let's uh, hear what the tea has been spilled with KC because I'm going to ignore everything Magnum has been saying on social media. Kukuka, you heard any rumors, anything coming out of KC? I mean, I do hear a lot of rumors, right? There are some that I believe, some that I don't. Now, what I heard is that from the beginning, they didn't actually intend to win Masters. They just wanted to get the reps. Also, they think that they're like so superior that they just wanted to get the reps also in the vaults for the other teams oh. to actually see and spot where the flaws are early in the year so then they can win champs. They gave them a chance. They, they are exact, no, no, no. They want, they want the other teams to study them, to counter them, so they can learn how they can be countered, so they can fix it before that, winning champs. That is a great oh. That's the young method. Yeah, really yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Anything that you've heard, Bone Cold? I mean, some people have been talking about, you know, like it was Casey, you know, like honeymooning, you know, like through the first split and, you know, like into Madrid, but from what I've heard and, you know, like just what I've seen as well, I, I don't feel like it's a honey, honeymoon. I feel like they're playing super solid. What about you? Have you heard anything? Uh, I've heard many, many things, many, many things. And the thing uh, that I like the most about what I've heard is very much same as you, Kakuka. They wanted to give Americas a chance, you know, let them have one. Exactly. Uh, for this one, and we go to Shanghai and Champs and stuff, it's going to be their time. They just wanted to get comfortable because otherwise EMEA would have been on top on like trophies and they just wanted to get things even, you know? Yeah, make, make things a bit more interesting. Exactly. Because right? yeah. otherwise, right. what, what are we fighting for? Yeah, and I also heard Narei is actually uh, from EMEA. I heard he's not, he, he's a fraud NA. Did you hear that as well? No, I haven't heard this. Well, well now you're, you not, have. You're, not, you're not on the right channels because I have heard that as well. <laughs> <laughs> I've been missing out on the wrong discords. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, now we have heard that though. Uh, what are we expecting, Bone Cold, from a player like Narei? Does he have an even higher ceiling than he's shown? I mean, he's he's been like mechanically, he's been like unbelievable. So. I, I'm wishing to see, you know, like that this team, you know, like they can come like more together than what they were in the first split and in Madrid. And I want to see Narrate, you know, like taking the like taking the responsibility and you know like bring his like standards even above what they were. I feel like I want someone else. You know, I'm missing a bit of like Tomasi action. I feel like last year he was great. I feel like Narrate has taken all that spotlight, which yeah. don't get me wrong, he deserved, he earned, right? And especially in the roles that he has been playing. But uh, to me, it's like, I've had enough of him in the sense that I want to see someone else, uh, you know, like taking that role of surprising all of us. Yeah. Uh, would, would love to see like like Mar like Martin is yes. someone. Yeah. I think, I I think we will probably see that uh, indeed. Uh, this is going to be a rematch and things went in the way of KC the last time we saw them go up against Giant X. But it's time to bring out the teams again and see if history will truly be destined to repeat itself. Red. Returning to the region that they now rule. Please welcome to the stage, Carmine Corp with Nari, Martin, Tamazi, and Shin.
KC beat them before, but now we'll see the Giants' second stage. Welcome Giant X with Fitinho, Parkbo, Red Guard, Cloud, and Hoodie. Rounding up the squads, of course. They couldn't be here without their coaches. We've got Aang and Pipson. The kings of EMEA are back here on stage. They're going up against Giants once again, but this time, Giants, they have a different look, they have a different player, and you have to wonder, Kakuka, yeah. what have they been doing when Casey were out there in Madrid? Exactly, Casey might have been getting all of those reps in the international tournament, but we brought the best teams in the world to Prague here at EMEA, and I am sure that Giants was on the... Uh, on the uh, um, better end of that, right? Bringing in a new player, trying something else, and finding a way to counter everything that it was seen in the international stage. Yeah, let's talk about map vetoes real quick, mm. because Bone Code, again, they have played against each other, uh, as we have a look and see what maps we're gonna get today. The last time it was uh, Sunset, I believe, Split and Lotus. Do you think uh, we're not gonna get a Lotus this time around? Yeah, we won't be getting like Lotus, but like, for the maps, it's going to be it's going to be interesting to see. Oh, we have Sunset as well. I mean, Breeze. We haven't seen these teams playing Breeze yet, and it's so interesting because Casey. Just this year, they've played 25 maps. None of them have been Breeze. On the side of Giants, we haven't seen them play, but right, they play like six maps, so it's not that bad. The fact that they are selecting, choosing to go on this Breeze, also knowing and hearing from Pipson that Purple might be uh, on that duelist role, on that more flexible One, two, role. So three, really yeah. think, what crazy things are Giants going to be bringing in today? I mean, banning Lotus is super smart. Bone yeah. Cold, other teams, they have tried to take Lotus to KC, and they've always lost against them. So uh, what do you make of this? Yeah, I mean, it's. I'm, I'm just uh, like very excited to see, you know, like their new map, like bringing in the breeze into that pool. It's going to be very fantastic to see, you know, like what they have been prepping up, you know, like since Madrid. I think that especially uh, focusing on what Pipson said about the fundamentals, Lotus, especially the way that KC play it, the way that they are so well organized, especially when it comes to the retakes and playing it from the defense, uh, it's a good pick to ban, right? After the, all the performance and all the reps, even though the VODs are there, there are things the that you cannot prep against. Wrong? Also, correct me if I'm wrong. When Purple oh, played VCT what? for M3, it was Breeze. It was Breeze, right? And it wasn't good. So this is like a redemption thing because uh, when he stepped in as a sub then, mm -hmm. he was very shaky. Uh, but this time around, he's not a sub anymore. He's coming in uh, as one of the main players. So he's yeah. got a lot to prove. Yeah, I think that it's different because um, I asked him, like, uh, because he was a sixth player, right? It's not like he's used to for a map, but he only prepped with them one map and it was Breeze. And then he got into, you know, and I think it was also like, the final against Liquid for last chance qualifier, and we know that is the Liquid champions qualifier, so there was nothing that he could do against that. I mean, on the <laughs> other side of this, uh, Bone Cold, uh, Casey, they're coming in as the reigning champions uh, of EMEA. And Madrid may did, maybe didn't go as well as they would have had to hope, uh, but how much pressure do you think is on their shoulders to make sure they have a good season and star well here against Giant? I feel like they, you know, like they have, I feel like the players themselves will have a lot to prove, you know? I feel like you, you know, as you gain the confidence, you get to Madrid, you know, like you, you kind of get the privilege of looking down to other teams being like, you know, like, hey, like, oh, where, where oh, were you guys in Madrid? Yes. Okay, the agent select oh, is very enjoy. interesting. Uh, and uh, yeah, <laughs> Fidinho, you're... Uh, Fidinho, you're... Okay, purple on the, on the jet that is... Running it back, we're running, running it back. back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's so interesting to see them going with this double duo this, you know, playing the extra pressure. Uh, they're going to be starting on the attack since they picked this map. KC, they're going out with a very, very standardized uh, composition. Martin, they're on that Jebna raid. Right I mean, I, I really like this. What do you think, Bonko, about the compositions? It's so nice to see the, the double duelist. I feel like, especially on a map like Greece, where we have so much space, you know, like to work on with the Yoru, it's going to be amazing to see, you know, like how like how they will actually take the space with the, like Jet and Yoru, and how yeah. will Purpo and Fitinho, you know, like play together to get the space for them. Uh, totally. That is something that we need to see that 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 synergy between these two new duelists. Also, Red Guard Cypher, I'm all here for it. Wait, we <laughs> missed that one. Yeah, well, it's time Keep to jump into close. game and throw this over to your casters for today. It is Mitchman and Tombis.
Thank you so much to our analyst desk. Yes, Tom, it's time to kick this one off, and I'm excited. There's a first time for everything, and Fitinho coming in with a Yoru. It's exciting. This guy's always been a star duelist. This is somewhere he could really shine. Yeah, like well, we heard that maybe he would be shifting a little bit with Purpo coming in. Purpo yeah, has yeah. stolen his jet, so I guess that's something a little bit different. I'm also excited for the the cipher coming in on Redgar. Like normally when he flexed, it was to something. I'm not gonna say stupid, but that's the word I want to use. It'd be like, oh, I'm playing Rain in this game, or I'm playing Jet. That's what he did back in the Gambit days. But now he's actually playing the the sight anchor, which definitely isn't the normal role. And I expect to see him on the server. So definitely some large shifts coming in. Something that was mentioned by Pips and when they were going into the interview with Sue. So it's a new look for sure. The question is, are they going to be able to hold up against a team that we expect to be one of the top in the league? Well, it's a really tough one for them. I mean, opening up against this squad, they've been here before, but KC at the time were an unknown. We didn't know how to read them. Right now, KC looked like one of the best teams in the world. They could have challenged for that trophy. And they certainly challenged for the EMEA trophy. They took it last yeah. time around. So we can definitely shake the fact that GX lost last time, but this time the stakes are even higher. They're less favored. The good thing is though, they've had the time while that international event has been going True. on. I'm sure they wouldn't feel great uh, starting out. Like, oh great, we got time to prep now at least. <laughs> but it is something that might stand to them coming back in here now. KC had a grueling international schedule between media days, coming in, makeup, hair, all the stuff that they've got to do on that, on that international level. They didn't have time, very much time to prac throughout those days. They're focused on officials with a couple pracs under their belt. Giants X have had weeks now to sit back and plan everything meticulously. That's why we're seeing these new agents come out, them trying things they haven't tried before, and they've made a roster change. If ever there was a chance for them to win that matchup, it's now. I think the more interesting thing as well is going into the map pool, because although you say that KC haven't like had the time to make changes, this is a map they've not played. They, they have not gone into Breeze at all. They also are picking the map that last time they played Giant X, they lost. So in terms of a map pool for Giant X, going based on what we saw at kickoff, this is not a bad spot to be in. For Although sure. we have no data on them either because they only played two matches. Well, that's it. I spoke about the international schedule, something I spoke about with KC, and the fact is they had little turnaround, but they were still able to deal the damage to some of the best teams in the world who had a lot more prep, a lot more time under their belt. Now, they're coming in here with a couple days. And hey, KC with a couple days could be a scary thing. Time to put them to the test on the side of Giant X, their defense start. We'll see them not really be able to use the, or rather it was KC that chose the defense, wasn't it, Tom? Yeah. So that graphic is not right, but that's okay. Yeah, you know, the, the HUD still being transported over from Madrid, so it'll be here soon, don't worry. <laughs> It, it, it's it's on the fastest delivery possible. Purpo, though, this is what we like to see. Leading that charge, taking that space, and Fatinho, well, his debut has not gone fantastically on the Yoru. The rate is just holding the line, already managing to reposition. I think a little bit surprised to spot Purpo in that corner. And now it leaves, well, the debut of one agent didn't go fantastically. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the Cypher debut is going to work. All right. I mean, the, the pistol round Yoru on attack, sure. I don't want to say the debut's gone to hell just yet, but yeah, for Redgar, maybe there's a chance. He could pop off with three. They're watching every single line. Yeah, they're ready. It doesn't matter where he comes from. First player spots him, even if they go down 1v2 with info to play with. And look at the reaction. Immediately, they put him in a well, box. Look where the they spike know he is spawned, as well. And they like. run to the site, take the fight together. <laughs> there, there's no way. It's going to be a triple swing on contact. They don't even need to take the fight. He doesn't actually have time to go and get the spike and plant it. So they're just waiting for him to walk into an implausible angle. And yeah, KC, as ever, vigilant. And, and that's what we've enjoyed so much about this team is you're coming in with a, a group of youngsters, a very experienced coach and a brand new IGL or brand new to the role at yep. least. And somehow this team has always looked incredibly structured with everything they do. And, and that's, I'll be honest, that's the one thing I'm a little bit disappointed with going into this map is the comp they're playing is old school. Like, this is something we've seen for a long, long time, like running in with those double initiators, basically the double Sentinel with the Viper and the Cypher. But if their synergy is on point, I don't think it will matter. Well, one to zero, of course, to the defensive side of Carmine Core. I'll, I'll keep you updated on that as, uh, you're as we go tally. throughout it. I suppose I will start doing a little tally up here. Somehow you're going to write the tally the wrong way around and confuse yourself. Well, we can draw on the screen. Let's not. Let's. Let, let's. There not we go. Do Perfect. That. But they're also on the wrong side, so it doesn't really help too much. Color it in blue. Get a get a blue color. <laughs> You've got time, Tom. You work oh, away you on that. What? Oh, I'm a genius. 
What have you done? <laughs> Oh wow, that's, that's actually good. That's actually good. But I only, oh, have, wow. the, I only have the number one. So after, after one this decided. round, yeah, after this round, this doesn't work anymore. But for right now, we've saved that, it. That is currently we've saved the, the scoreline. It's perfect. Well, at least there's some semblance. Of, oh, I don't know what's going on anymore, Tom. Well, for Giant X, they're pulled back. They're on the A site, nice and cozy, looking for a little bit of mid control down through the doors. They haven't seen anything there. I mean, this is a round where they come in with a, a decent amount on the side of uh, KC's defense, of course. But for yeah, Giants, yeah, they'll, they'll blitz into A. They've got a lot of space through that tube, though. No, I mean, it's being watched left. from way back yeah. in spawn. That's they, it. It, it's also just timing now. Can, how much damage can they do? Oh, shit. It's just going to farm. Getting himself a. halfway to that Viper's Pit in a singular round is definitely going to help out in the future. And for Cloud, well, at this stage, it's more so die like you've, you've just got to go down you don't want to be holding on to just a classic martin will get that final frag and put them 2-0 up good start expected after the pistol tidied up nicely now we see an opportunity for them to take it even further and i mean for shin it's not bad as well picking up those orbs early i think a lot of this is Similar to the broadcast, they're, they're going to iron out some of those little issues as the rounds go on. On the side of Giant X, here's the, those issues especially. I mean, they're trying to figure out fist bumps, high fives. What's the what's the default for Casey? They're getting back in the swing of things. Give them some time. But a 2-0 lead is good. This is their opportunity to capitalize. Giant X are going to buy rifles. They're going to invest pretty fully. Ooh. An opportunity for Redgar presenting itself. Two players sneaking up, but does he check the left? He's seen one close. He tries to retreat, and Martin catches him. Very nice by KC with a double two push. It's netted them a lot of value. The pressure's on B for them to hold on, but look at the util and the players on the way. Yeah, the rotation's already coming in quickly for that defensive side. Of course, something we didn't talk too much about is the fact that we haven't seen much of the Sentinel at all out from Tamazi. For most of the time, he's basically just been playing on other agents. Nice work from Cloud, though. Managing to put this round on his back. For Martin, though, he does still have a rifle. He has something to play with, can try and do a little bit of damage. We can see how safe Giant X are being using that drone late in the round. We mentioned this is around the KC. Shouldn't really win, but they've got a chance with Martin now. The positions are good, though, from Giant X. You've got a player tucked up close that has to be cleared, and Cloud, it's just a little too quick. Four kills in that round for Giant X. That's a lifeline. If he doesn't pop off, they could have traded that round out and ended up with next to nobody or just nobody online. All right. Speedy. <laughs> That's one of those things. That's what I was bringing up during the round is that this is actually within this team, Thomas E, I believe, first time playing on a Cypher. Now, he was, we were told he was moving to a Sentinel, and then over the last couple of months has played Viper 19 times and played a couple of other agents along the way. So, again, new ground for him, at least within this team. But for now, at least, we are going to be seeing this aggressive push into the site. Giant X taking that space, and not really anybody actually looking to hold on to it. Yeah, they know what they're up against at this point. They just create that space instead. Vitinho being an annoyance up close at yellow, now just backing out. Having created the space, having found it all, here comes a drone up and over from Magnum. And they're looking to barrel forward on the back of this as a decoy that hasn't quite distracted them or drawn their vision. And as KC closed in towards the site, the fight is good for Shin. Now right into Mazzy stepping up too. And they know exactly where Hoodie is thanks to the last kill. But as Util could buy some time, one snake bite already used, but he's just about out of toxins. Now it comes down to a 1v3 fight, not one he's likely to win. He needs to hit these opening shots. He'll find the first, but that is all. Giant X, they won their round on round three when they were expected to, but KC are right back in the game. And this is something they were good at throughout the entirety of kickoff. And when you went over to Masters as well, the retakes from KC. I think one of the better teams within EMEA is sort of giving up that control and then moving back in as a unit. And while in the end, made it look quite easy. There is still going to be a purchase though. Giant X are going to be able to put something onto the board. They could even maybe pad the gap a little bit with the fact that they have the Hunter's Fury online. But Shin being one away from that Viper's Pit might help them out if he can get himself a kill. Once suppressed.
Oh, we can take stock of where we are. Yeah, you can look at Giant X's credits down on their last legs. Big investment from this attacking side now to try to push KC back from this early start. One that they're likely to just run away with, considering the squad and their performance internationally. Not a map they're known for. And with Purpo taking the opening and dropping Martin, KC are now on the back foot. How will they fill in this information? This is void that they're left with. I mean, the good thing is all that util on B in the cam, it, it's locking down the control. They can afford to commit bodies elsewhere, and those bodies are coming down middle, Camera looking for a fight on Redgar. His timing could be good. And the hat off his head. He's lucky to get out of there alive. Oh, he knows where he is now. <laughs> <laughs> At least. Just about. And it will give the space over Shock in towards start. the site. Shocked up. Can I have the planted. desired result? And at least at this point, not a bad position for Giant X to fight from. Already looking for the trade back. Purple is going to manage to get another hoodie with one more. And now Magnum only with a marshal in hand, and he's being flanked. Redgar, the survivor, is going to get that backstab in the end. A response once again from Giant X. A back and forth to kick off for Breeze. They traded out decently as well, Tom, as far as ults go. I mean, it's Giant X are going to have a lot coming online, high impact ones later. But for them early on, it's a good sign to still be able to compete like that, make these rounds work. Redgar even getting a slow play up through mid. You know, he used to, he used to command one of the best Cypher players out there for flank and for getting behind, for being a menace. It's going to be very fun to see him attempting to do some of that himself, already finding success in round five. Round six sees the reward. Giant X of rifles. As I said, Ulti's coming online for the next round, uh, or, or maybe just after. And if you look at what KC are working with, well, pistols. So for Giant X, their, their ult economy is going to help them out in the next full buy. Do you want to know something really interesting? What's that? So we've spoken about this before. Okay. Purpo, I would say, was somewhat harshly given his debut in the VCT, mm. playing for a team called Mech. Yeah. Do you remember what map he was subbed in for, Mitch? I do not. Uh, it, it was Breeze. <laughs> <laughs> so he's, he's come back uh, to, to play against Redgar this time on the same map that he was subbed in for. <laughs> yeah, it, it's all swings and roundabouts. Oh, oh, oh. The streets never forget with someone like Purpo. Oh, that's Although it. Hoodie, well. What a start to the round. Yeah, it's huge. They have pistols, but actually it's good that Hoodie gets those kills. That's Viper's Pit online. I mentioned that it might be next round, it might be the one after. Well, it is next round. A big ultimate to have, especially when KC have their own pit to play with. Now, Shim's picked up a weapon, so he is out of here. He wants to save that, but Tamazi and Narrate aren't too keen, keen on uh, doing the same. We'll go down to the spike, save over some money. Those sheriffs not worth quite as much. And we'll see a six, a sixth round close with three to three, neck and neck, despite a pistol round to KC, a bounce back in round four. Giant X have those legs to their attack already. And I guess this is the question, right, for KC. Letting this map through, Tom, you mentioned that this was a map they were banning uh, constantly. They didn't want to play it. And now opening up the season, maybe it's because it's early season as well, though. We don't know whether they've worked a ton and this has been their speciality or whether they're like, hey, let's try it now, see yeah. how we can figure out our, our pool as the season goes on. So they, I, th I think they, they ended up banning Ascent, so it could just be that they felt a little bit less mm. comfortable on that map. And I, I guess also versus a, a team like Giant X, who've just brought in a, another superstar duelist, you're thinking, do we really want to face off against Purpo's Jet on that map? Maybe not. I think also just it might be an Aang thing of like, <laughs> I don't want to have a perma ban. Like, yep. I don't, I don't want to have a map that we don't play, so I, I'll let it through, see how it goes. And the thing is, I, I especially think on Breeze with the players that they've got, they can definitely get away with it. Look at the amount of aggression already, though. A complete push through B is going to garner them the information yeah. that it has to be either towards mid like or towards that A site. And with two players already deep within A, one waiting to watch the tube, they are about to have a flank that could catch players off. Yeah, it's, it's the one gap that Giant X have, even as Redgar comes back through yeah. mid. But do they check it? Do they even look Coming to their left on the way through? They haven't. They haven't just yet. And they've taken a kill. This is where, presumably, Redgar turns around and finds them, but a little too late to the party. KC have already picked up a wealth of kills, and that advantage will be hard to fight back from. The pit not even reaching 
all the way onto the spike. It, it, this is going to make it incredibly difficult if Purple goes down for Hoodie to have very much of any impact, especially with a Vandal. Those sprays through the smoke aren't going to go too well. Well, here's a real test for Hoodie. They know where he is now. They've echoed. Well, I, I thought they did. They're still looking in main. He almost snuck his way back over, but just too many bodies to deal with. And the round goes to KC convincingly. Yeah, this is one of those sort of problems that we would suggest a team might have if they're not running a Cypher. Giant X are running a Cypher, so that the fact that they managed to get that far with absolutely no one realizing is a big problem. And I, I think either you're going to see a pause taken or just something from Regard to say, okay, we, we can't allow that to happen again because that is such a ridiculous amount of map control that they've managed to take without any information going in the other direction. And while for KC, it almost gave them a free round. Like they're able to get all the way through, have the players within the site. So even the players pushing were just walking into a stack. Yeah, really gorgeous round from that defensive side. Although, again, uh, timing for Redgar w was key there. Maybe even the cam placement, but I think the idea was to cover the tube push. But with that many players there, it's uh, you can sometimes commit the player to it. It's one of those things. They left one gap. That happens to be the gap that KC walked straight into unknowingly. Now in round number eight, Giant Keep X still full bot. Still with some of those ultis to play with, and they've managed to surround these players on A. The door is open, the players are blitzing out. Giant X not winning the engagements oh, to start no. with, and Redgar's gone down to one of their own snake bites. This is a disaster! They haven't even seen Martine! He's able to pick one up inside the smoke and bail back into main. The attackers are now the defenders, and they're surrounded. This is a terrible round. And the information, you know, it's coming in, not for long. That rate's gonna fall eventually but it's still a four versus two yeah and they have no map control that's None. the bigger problem you, you are surrounded on all flanks they're gonna have to almost try and fight forward baiting them in on the plant but you can see thomasy waiting deep and martin on the corner leaves fatinio alone and there's just absolutely nowhere he can go they might even allow him to get the plant down just so they can get into position to try and clear him from that angle and well i, I don't mind it you're gonna try something yeah, audacious yeah, yeah, yeah. you're trapped you're hoping that maybe somehow they're not looking but casey had everything covered yeah shin saw that gate crash called it immediately so there was no way for him to sneak his way out all in all, that is a tragic oh. round. Oh, he was already walking through his snake bite, got hit by so much utility, tagged down low, and then just that friendly snake bite beckoning him in. I don't think we needed a replay of it, to be fair. <laughs> but, you know, throw him under the bus. Just in case you didn't know how he died. <laughs> there it is. It was almost purely to snake bites. But uh, uh, almost a, a couple 1G. of rounds, I think Redgar is going to want to forget of that debut on the Cypher. Hasn't been fantastic so far, I'll be honest. Definitely some gaps within it. And they're gonna go back to this B site hold. Now bear in mind, last time out, Cloud absolutely farmed. It's not gone well to start. Yeah, but they've gotten a lot of space. So they've lost a player, but at what cost? Well, nothing they're able to convert by the looks of it. What was that shot by Martin? Three quick kills, and Giant X are way behind. I, I thought Magnum was meant to be the one with the shaky aim. Yeah, no, 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 that was like that was snappy he aim. He snapped his DPI button in the middle of that fight by the looks of it. That was ridiculous. But <laughs> hey, six and three up. Any sort of danger in this half is somewhat diminished. Oh, here we go again. Like it, it, it looked like he was even sort of Eight surprised points. by the peak timing, and then, oh. <laughs> and then also just catches the second player. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, they're vibing, man. That's a <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We can't play his mic. No, I no, know no, what no, he no, said. No, that's muted. That's <laughs> muted right there. Same reaction though, Hang. I gotta say, Giant X immediately call a timeout. And I'm not sure there's anything you can do about the late round there. Him just popping off with those last two kills. Yeah. But the first kill and the player they lost on the way through, the ideas here from Giant X just haven't really been working out. I understand why they take a breather here. Yeah, and again, I feel like uh, the rounds that they've won, you had Cloud obviously getting a 4K to win them that bonus round that could have gone the other way. And also the, the two duelists, you've invested into having this jet combination alongside the Yoru. Both players have been very quiet so far. Like we, we've seen a bit of space taken by Fatinho, but they haven't really been able to capitalize on it most of the time. And I am starting to get a little bit worried because Again, this was the thing with Purpo. He was someone that I think, as I said, if you've been a fan of Valorant, if you've watched any tier two, 
this guy is someone we wanted in the VCT for a long time. And with Mech, we were expecting it to be this explosive performance where they finally have this star right jet. Maybe you weren't a defo fan. You're That's like, ah, oh, this, this is the guy. <laughs> and then he played and you're like, oh. Bring back that uh, Okay, the, the, the pressure maybe got to him a little bit. And so far, we're not seeing it yet. Now, I'm not going to count him out after what is nine rounds Long in a attack. game. Yeah, it's, it's never going to be easy. But this composition is kind of built. Yes. for the attack. Yeah. So it, it, on defense, it's not going to get any easier. You don't need Purpo to find those openings, but you need one of Purpo yes. and Fratinho to be hitting. If you're not, you're getting space, but you're losing advantages, and you don't win rounds that way. At least not many teams do. Under Fury used. It's caught one, and updraft is saved. Purpo, but he's caught. Unlucky for him, but Redgar might be able to retrieve some advantage, but they saw him. him. They just caught a pixel of him and immediately refocus, push him back, and move towards this mid-rotation. They know that one player's out of pace. That's a 5v3 on the side if they get there quickly enough. And we can see that one player's even in the tube with the Vipers pit down. They're going to find it hard to fight their way back through. Snake fight in. Toxin's oh. running out. There's one kill for Hoodie, but the immediate reaggression. It stacks up the advantage for Casey. Cloud, That's too late. oh, he's going crazy. He's popped it way late, and even then, in a one versus three, this was always good. Uh, 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 I don't know uh, how he survived, but... <laughs> I was but, kind of alluding to Martin killing him, but, you know, whatever. The other way around, all good. Someone else could have diffused it in the meantime. Would have worked out. Yeah, again, just <laughs> it looked kind of scrappy. Like, you, you got yourself into an afterplant with the snake bites. I don't even think the snake bite connected because they put the Viper's Pit and instantly started diffusing and got it to half. And yeah. he had an orb on it. So, so one of the pieces of utility must have not been on top. Otherwise, they're not nice going to be able to defuse. Nice Let's go! <laughs> nice <laughs> <Standing> <laughs> Oh, there is God. nothing better though than when you take a round and you, you just as you're winning you hear that old popular like, yeah. <laughs> Don't got that anymore, do you? I like Fatinho's clearance. It's good. That's what the dimensional drift They're is all happy about. Happy to play retake though. That has been the case so far in this game. They're already going. He's, he's just right on the corner already. Pop flash through the timing. Not bad from Fatinho. At least gets rid of Tomasi. But Martin is just looking to try and do this alone. Has support from Magnum. Oh, it's labored, but eventually the second shot from Hoodie is wonderful. Leaving it into a 2v2 scenario. Redguard not going to get anything done, and now it's left onto Cloud. There's no other man you'd want in this sort of scenario, but already being pinged up by the drone. I think it's already going to start being diffused. I don't think that's actually connected. He can't quite correct. Magnum will get themselves another round, an eighth onto the board. Bear in mind, this was 3-3. You know what I've really liked about Magnum? I, I'm glad he gets this round because those are the rounds people remember. You get three kills, you did good, your kills go up on the board. You're eight and six now, you're positive, fantastic. That gets you into the good graces of most of the community. But the reality is his, his util has been sick. Only one assist. And that was the, uh, this wasn't even one. No, it wasn't because he got the kill. A couple of times I've seen this. I think when he used his ult, he'd already popped a recon over because purple yeah, updrafted and got revealed again. Add to that this round here where you have the flash that came out of Narrate, but there was a reveal popped as well. So that player's blind, spraying, and now he's being revealed just as everyone's ready to fight again. It's been really good to see that utility, even if his teammates haven't followed up on it. It's gotten them info, and Magnum's been able to follow up on a couple of those kills himself. Eight to three right now. Last round of the half. Full investment from both squads, of course. No real ulties in play. This could be a game changer, the op in the hands of Purpo, but there's an op in the hands of Martin, and it's a head-to-head -head battle okay. that Purpo wins. Yeah, a good start to the round at least, but they're putting that pressure onto Redgar again. He's been having a bit of a rough time. I'm surprised Magnum is still going for this. He's being revealed, and he somehow still kills Redgar. They're literally waiting for him. They're watching as well, just in case second there's a player. second layer to this, and there is. Narei, he might catch one on the way out, but Poison's no. Off. They will be able to fade away. Giant X for the first time in a while going towards that B site with a man advantage. And they've got the perfect read. They know Vipers, A, eh? And you're pretty sure that someone just shot at you from tube. So at that point, there's only one player on B. Only one. And that's Tamazi with deep traps as well. He's got to take the fight on the normal as can be. And the trade Spike is quick down. for Purple. Now Raid already on back site though. The pace has caught them off. And he's standing strong, taking every kill, leaving Hoodie alone. Two orbs away from grabbing a Viper's Pit. Oh, if he had it now, that could turn the tides in his favor. But the spike is down in the open. No wall to work with. He's already got his down. It actually might get him to the spike if he used it, but instead he goes walkabouts for a kill. The kill's found by the Viper on the other side. Nine 
to three at the half, five. Tom. This is not looking great for Giant X, considering this is a map KC don't really play. Uh, no. Don't play. Just don't play. No, no. They, they are yet to play it within the entirety of Kickoff and Masters. But evidently, it's something they've been working on behind the scenes. But again, I, I feel like that's just something that comes default with this team having like such great synergy with each other. That I, I think they're going to be yes. able to, unless they're up against a very well orchestrated team on the other side, I think they're going to be able to pick you apart just with good team play. And I think that's what this team has in spades. They're so good at just trading off each other, flashing for each other, putting you utility in position to basically allow someone else to go for these swings. We've seen it with Norate's flashes. We've seen it with their aggression and to aim in and across the map. I also think Giant X just didn't do a very good job of stopping them taking space. I think that, yeah, that's fair. And now on their, well, on their defensive side, let's hope that's not the case for Giant X this time around. There's definitely going to be some challenges for them. Coming back from this scoreline is very tough. Sunset up next, somewhere KC wanted to fight and bind as a decider. It's a long road for Giant X if they count themselves out of this map, and they're not going to be willing to do that just yet, but Martin's trying to help them out. Quick shot delivered to Cloud's head straight down too, with the Sheriff and KC have a man advantage yet again. Yeah, I, I think that that probably has been where the golfing classes differed. I'm, I'm not certain, but I wouldn't be too scared to almost bank that maybe Martin might actually have more kills than both the duelists on the other side. Like, he has been on one and they have been missing Tomazzi as well. All the timing of the peak is so good on the trade. Three players are waiting, three of them fall. Redgar. It, it's worse odds than the first pistol. <laughs> Do you believe in the 1v4? The 1v3, no, but the 1v4, Tom, 70 oh. HP on Shin, 74 on Magnum. So you believe? No. Wow, that was toxic. You, you, for, for a second, you almost convinced me. <laughs> Never mind, the rate is going to put him in the ground, and I'll be honest, this map is looking pretty much done. It, it has been a pretty ludicrous streak, seven rounds in a row now for KC without much of a response. I think they very quickly oh. warmed up into this game, and yeah. Yeah, that'll do it. I, I don't really know how you deal with that. Well, he saw his elbow. That's, so there you uh, go. Um, just, just in case you're wondering, Martin oh, yeah? does have more kills than both the duelists on the other side combined. Yeah. You know, you got to command Giant X for trying something new. <laughs> <laughs> Might be the last time we see this one from them. But uh, I mean, especially having the attack side already under their belts, this is a comp that, uh, put it this way, I don't expect them to thrive on the defense quite as much oh here we go outlaw on one side marshall on the other the only real investment is that on Purpo. everything else is being saved for the next round for giant x just to give themselves a chance in the buy rounds but it definitely is looking like a bit of a golfing class bear in mind the last time these two played it was a, a close series like My giant friend, x went the weak. distance but I think they got bullied out of the third map. The first map, not so much. So I think we're definitely seeing how far KC have sort of leveled up in that time. I, I think Tomazi is, is probably a little bit confused that he's managed to just walk onto the B site. <laughs> Normally you might be calling for teammates to rotate, but I think he just, he got far enough and he's like, I don't actually know how I've got this far without anybody really spotting me. And in fact, Giant X are rotating away from this. They go, ah, this is the ruse. But at this point, he's gone, I've got the whole site. There's no one here. Just come plant. Did you see where the cam was from Redgar? I, I didn't spot it at the start no. of the round. Um, I don't, like, I mean, I would have thought it's B with their setup, but it was broken somewhere. But uh, yeah, uh, clearly a misread from Giant X. And these are the rounds where you want to have those stacks on a site so you can just use the numbers to your advantage. Getting back in, I mean, maybe Purpo hits some shots and stays alive to still do damage in late round. Best hope that I've got for you. And the timing couldn't have been. Oh my, Narrator's just slipped by by a pixel. Well, oh, th th this pretty much puts a pin in this one. The question is how many orbs can he get for himself? That's already two and the third with his death. Not bad. Farm them up and the rest of Giant X will just go down to the spike. That was the plan all yeah. along. Yeah. No surprise to see the round going the way of KC. Now just a couple away from a very, very dominant victory in map number one. Again, it has been a long hiatus from the board now. A 3-3 scoreline.
now 11-3. It's yeah. like <laughs> the beast awoke midway through and, well, not even, yeah, sort of midway through the first half. Yeah. The and first now, quarter. Yeah, this is where you're going to look to see if those rifles can get anything done. Yeah, it, it's still not a bad purchase, though. That's the thing for KC. They managed to keep the, the three rifles and the sniper in. They could still win this, and with the way they've been playing, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> you were saying you that's a first already, Ooh. and brave to stick around. Vitinho Hit now down to 30 HP. Must have been a tag through the wall, otherwise he'd be 10, or maybe onto the leg through the wall. But either way, he's holding on for dear life. He's escaped towards the A site with his TP. But it hasn't helped Giant X out. With a player low and a player down, well, KC are definitely in the advantageous position. They can group up, look to trade out fights, and with the weaponry they have, it, it's not going to be impossible. This isn't a, a very hard round for them if they can use the numbers to their advantage, and I think the first thing they need to do is clear out this man on the corner. If Hoodie can find some value with Fatinho baiting for him, a lot could be done, but he spotted immediately. Now he's going to get out of there while being revealed. He does actually escape. Cloud gets one from afar, but a very aggressive push leaves them blindsided to Fatinho's attack. Even still, though, he's only good for the one. Cloud has to do so much more. The damage done to Tamazi, though. 38 HP. Crossed. Shock dart through. Magnum caught as well. That's it. It's got to be. Tamazi with an outlaw in hand. Only one player that's one shot to him. Spike still to be planted, and 30 HP himself. Still a shock dart for Cloud. As soon as this is tapped, Here. that shocky's on the way. He's trying to work out if there's some better weaponry for him to take. Ten seconds left. Trying to fake one out the sound a little bit. Does manage to land the shot to Bregar. Puts this into a one versus one. Cloud Spike. already looking to wrap back around, but I think Thomas, he might have actually figured this one out. Trying to spot where the man on the other side is. That time ticking down, neither player really knowing where the other is. And eventually Cloud will save them once again. It's their fourth round and the second time he's needed a multi-frag just to get it over the line. And in a bonus, yeah, again, that's, in a bonus again. That's the main thing. You know, he, he basically saved them as we can now look at it, considering the 3-3 three, three to 11-3. He saved them from what could have been a, a devastating bonus last half. Now the same thing here. If he doesn't go big, if he doesn't find every single one of these, they are right back down and, and basically out. Not that it's much better now. 11 to 4, and the rifles come through from KC. We've just seen what they can do with, I think, two Vandals, Bulldogs, Thanks. a pistol, an Outlaw. outlaw. <laughs> I was about to say. Now they've got an ult on the right and rifles across the board. Well, that's because he went running it. in with the Ghost in the prior round. Yeah, so yeah, they, yeah. they were gunning to get this armor online as soon as possible. Now, I do like the fact that Giant X, they've, they've done the classic, put the Cypher set up, but then the Cypher's going to go to the other side of the map. So there's no chance that that utility is going to be online. They've read or seen that the ultimate's available, and they've stacked up on the A side of the map. It's going to mean that they are a little bit shallow when it comes to the utility that's over on B, but they've done the same thing with the Viper Wall as well. So they will be online when the take comes in. Here. I said with the full rifles, it's admitting the outlaw still in play on Martin. I see your game. I like it. Some good opportunities on this map as well with so many sight lines. But he's diving in first. You know, crazy to see a player doing this. He swapped over weapons to grab the Vandal. And he'll be dropped down up close. Magnum didn't even bother taking the, the outlaw. He's right out with a classic in hand. Let's hope he's not needed to fight with Narei down. He may well be. He's finally recovered the outlaw with a chance to do some damage from afar. But the spike is isolated on sight. Shin's being spotted. Could be spammed from that wall any time now. They need to close in the distance and find some control on this attack side. Because right now, it looks like everything is playing towards Giant X's cord. And in a second, blink and you miss it. The kills come in. Shin finds two. And Redgar's alone. The information now finding its way into the hands of KC. There'll be no element of surprise for Redgar. A weaponry disadvantage, but he's got the HP on them at least. 25 shields. Tamazi's tagged and Shin is very low. Problem is, they're not looking to move, Tom. They're just grouped up, waiting, confirming he's still there. And the time is on their side. They'll take the fight. I love the reposition. <laughs> I love the way they drop the wall to take a 1v2 fight. And it catches him way off guard. 12 rounds for KC right now, Tom. It is not looking pretty. If you're a Giant X fan, remember, 
This what was their Shin do here. I, that, that's that's why I want to see because there's something about Shin and finding ridiculous kills and us never seeing it. Oh, and wow. he, he just swings off the back of his teammates going down and insta kill. He didn't even see the second player. And at the same time, Tomazi takes a fight like that. That is the thing again. So much depth within this team in terms of individual talent. It, it's the Eng sort of mantra. Let's just pick up duelists and put them in other roles. It means that you can win any round off individual brilliance and. That's exactly what that was. Now look at what Giant X have to fight with for what is the, the final round, potentially, of the map. Couple weaknesses in there, Tom. I think it's uh, fair to say. Couple. One or two. Or four. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's one not weakness, and that's on Purple, who's ha having a rough day at the office, I'll be honest. <laughs> It looks like we just missed Radgar getting tagged up as well. I, I was thinking maybe it was Decay from something, but a glance at the map sees he's on back B site with a Sheriff in hand, 56 HP. And Fatinho's popping the ulti to try and close some distance, find some information. He'll just get here with the gate crash. Flash was a little shallow, but he's on the site. Just wants to be here for Redgar to fight with him, and he picks up one for his trouble, a second as well. They weren't ready for Fatinho, but he needs to do so much more still, waiting to see Shin's head, but it never comes. Never crests the horizon instead. Purpo and Hoodie are left to do it all. That rifle still yet to find its mark for Purpo. The wall is up keeping him out, so Hoodie's isolated in the duel. The dash leaves him still in the open, but Purpo recovers. One versus one. Martin having snuck away, and the time ticking down. No smokes for Purpo, not even that cloud burst to get him on the spike, to get it near half. Instead, he has to win the fight. Bait Martin into open combat. It'll be the tap and the hold thereafter, but Martin's wise to it. He's just playing with the clock, running down the timer, and finding his mark in the end. 13 to 4, a convincing opening map for the side of Carmine Corp. And not a lot of hope for Giant X in this series if they can't recover from that sunset up next. Yeah, this was their map pick as well. This was an absolutely brutal dismantlement of their opponents after what was a 3-3 scoreline, finishing it 13-4. I'm not feeling good for Giant X. We'll see if they can turn it around after the break. I know a place that will break you into a thousand pieces. Stay away from them. Stay away from Lorca, Paco, and Picasso. Don't ask about Lola. I, Caballo Grande. I, Lord Nieve. But in spite of everything, it occurs to you to visit Andalusia. Don't say I didn't warn you. Be careful of the Andalusian crush. Hey guys, it's Jimmy Lin, former professional Counter-Strike player and Valorant coach. Watch out for the stairs, clear this angle, you're going to be able to fight this. Red Bull gives you wings. Let's do something crazy. Get a bit wild today. Cause we don't do this every day and we deserve it.
we should we'll feed the fire let's see it through and the go what's holding us back just light it up and we'll burn through the past and take it higher is your heart rushing the way my heart's rushing when you take it all in reason KC they win that out dominantly against Giant X on map one as you guys can see Martin here uh, warming up in the aim labs warm up for the next map but before uh, we get to talk about that one uh, what do you guys think uh, of that first map very uncharacteristic I feel like I don't think he needs to warm up I just uh, listen I don't think that there is a reason to sugarcoat this like this was a 13-4 uh, Casey looking great the way that they were working the map that they were gathering information and reacting onto it if you add that onto breeze being a map where you can base yourself off of the individual performance knowing that in kc there is no downside to that i think it was a very rough start for giant so. yeah i mean casey just looked very convincing but then giant x i don't know i feel like they just fell they just fell flat in that match i feel like there wasn't like you can see more Tina narrate you know like going in first but then you see uh Pitinio and Purpo going in first there's a clear difference you know like like how in sync Casey was yeah exactly and we're looking at the head-to-head -head, right that yeah. we're mentioning about the jet of course Purpose uh, first official map with the Giants and I feel one Martin was feeling it do not forget he's actually the duelist yeah. of these teams even though now Raid always has uh, that kind of uh, performance that it's, it's a little bit of an eclipses a, a, a bit uh, what Martin does but I feel like especially what we were seeing in tube the way that he was controlling the area getting the kills the way that everybody in KC was actually moving around the map how confident they were feeling each time that they were uh, peaking, but I feel like we also saw them from almost everyone in that team. The position that Tomashi was taking on mid just to shoot onto side, it felt like even though we hadn't seen them play that this map yet, they know it to a T. I mean, this is the thing, uh, Purpo, a bit of a rough start here. Honestly, get my boy off of Breeze. I feel like every time Purpo has to come to VCT and play Breeze, he's always having a little bit of, uh, of a rough time. And of course, he had to take on Martin, who was incredibly consistent at kickoff uh, as well. We, we can just, we can ignore this, unfair. ignore this a little bit uh, because a bone cold, maybe just some nerves, right? Having to step in your first game on stage as well. It can't be easy. No, like 100%, it's not easy to just, you know, like come to the venue and play your first game out but i was still expecting you know like for giant, giant x to actually put up you know like a, a little bit more of a fight against casey 
I think that we we need to be mindful of the the, the state that both of these teams have arrived into here. Uh, Casey just coming in uh, from Madrid. We saw them uh, when they were playing on stage just here. They were vibing with each of the wins. You get both pistols on, on both sides. Like everything is going on your favor. And as I said, individual duels, those individual fights, we're getting in at the perfect time each time. I also want to have a, a, a coach cam of Pipson as well. I feel I like we didn't see enough of Danny molding it. Here he is now, but we will see Sunset coming up next. Bone Cold, what would you like to see Giant X do differently on Sunset? I feel like they just need to get, you know, like some light, you know, like into their eyes. I know the like the first map was hard, but I want to see, you know, like I want them to like set up Purple, you know, like for good fights and let them pop off, you know, like let Purple, you know, like have fun after such a long time, you know, like coming to Berlin and play. Let the guy just roam free, you know. I love that we're seeing the papers and it said it's like a PowerPoint presentation. You say Carmine Court, and I'm like. What did they have on Breeze? They haven't played on Breeze. <laughs> What's on those lines? Well, they have played on Sunset and yeah. Giant Eggs beat uh, yeah. Keiko on Sunset the exactly. last time they faced each other. Yeah, and not only that, um, ever since kickoff, Casey has not played Sunset. So, so they didn't play during uh, Masters. Of course, there is that preparation coming in there, but also just thinking and, and seeing how prepped they were on, on Breeze. And also uh, thinking that things might be different on Giants. I think that Casey, you know, has an edge on this one. Yeah, I mean, at the same time, uh, this is a map where a giant before didn't run the cipher, so mm. uh, Bone Cold, they don't have to kind of shoehorn a uh, red guy into a role that Nuke was previously playing. I haven't been really like going into the comps, but just looking at like from the previous match, I just hope that we can get. I don't know. I was, I was Would just... you like to see the double duelist, for example? Again, they did it on Breeze. Would you like to see it on Sunset? Not really, to be honest. I would love to see them. You know, like Giants are always they they've been playing very um, you know like by the book. And I feel like when they're doing it well, they're actually playing like super well. We saw it last time in the uh, last chance qualifier. My uh, question is, will we see the Sage? And That's if we the see the Sage, who's playing Sage? So hear me out, right? If we see a Rekka, for example, taking in the Cypher, it actually fits him. We know that he likes to lurk, that he likes to be the last one, and it's kind of the player that you can live on his own. But will we see him? Well, let's find out now as we take a look here at Agent Select for Sunset. And it doesn't look like they're going to do the uh, Sage anymore. And this time around, uh, Bone Call, they got hoodie on the cypher. They've shuffled things around again. Yeah, I mean, the comp is actually like, this is what I like, I really like, you know, like this is something that I expected, you know, like, like very default. This is kind of what I wanted mm. to look like, see them from Breeze, but I'm really happy to see them, you know, like just going with something a little bit more solid. Yeah, Tomasi also moving away from that uh, Viper and and now he's taking what Magnum was in and they're adding in the KO, more initiating uh, power on the side of KC. I mean, that initiation going on to side to starting on the attack is going to be stellar, it's going to be explosive. And Giant X has changed every Thing. Fitinho is no longer on that duelist. Yeah. It's just going to be purple, playing on the race, also incorporating the Soba and, you know, moving away uh, from the Fade and incorporating the Cypher. If KC had any read onto how Giants plays this map, it should go out of the window right now. I love the Soba, but also mm. I, I can't help but wonder, Purple is a good Breach player. He has a, a experience uh, playing Breach and uh, Fitinho, of course, uh, his raise. Yeah. Uh, they've swapped them, these two around. I mean, maybe this is the new edge, the new way that Giants and wants to do things. Maybe Fiti wasn't comfortable anymore. Maybe they want to give Purple something that he feels more comfortable in. They decided to go for this player out of uh, everything that was out there. So there has to be a reason. Well, Giant, not a great start on map one, but they have an opportunity to pull it back on Sunset. It's time to jump into that map with Mitch and Tom and see if they, they can indeed turn this around. Well, the good thing, Tom, is you never really get those one-sided maps back to back, do you? Oh, wow. Don't look at last that. season. Don't Wait. do it. I'm just, I'm feeling like this is where Giant X have, they've got the edge. Last time, comp a little strange Why when it came to the Breeze, edge? but now they're coming in. Purpo on the duelist. Fitinho testing out that support. I don't know. It's new. It's different. I'll reserve judgment till later. But it's possible. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I'm trying to figure out hey, why, why they on, have the edge. Odds on them getting more than four rounds. I'd say there's yeah, like 50% chance. There we go. I'll take those <laughs> odds. <laughs> oh, God. Look, it, it, was a, it was a tough start. That's for sure. And now moving into the defensive side here on Sunset. They're not going to have control over the pace. That's something KC are definitely going to bring to the table. A quickened pace and a much faster play towards this B site as the plant should be coming in fairly soon. Nice and comfy. Spike planted. Ah, this is not going to be the easiest of retake. Attempting to try and 
closing in the back lines as well. Obviously, Hoodie now taking over that Cypher. It seems like that role is going to be split between multiple players. Surprise, Fatinio is not the one taking it, if I'm honest. I, I think Hoodie's breach is one I enjoy, but nonetheless, we'll see how they make this work. This is something that Casey almost enjoy, getting into these post-plant scenarios. They now have that KO as well, which is going to add another layer in terms of the utility, and they may not even need it as they just slaughter every member of that giant egg squad. The HUD can't even quite believe it just yet. It can't keep up, Tom, and I don't blame it, considering how things have been going so far. KC, like we said, we expected a quicker pace. It's nasty to see that B set up as well, though. When you play retake on this map, on this site in particular, it is so difficult to avoid just being spammed out from main. There's angles they can hide behind like this one here for Tamazi. You can't really hit him. There's only a pixel or so of him available. A little wider than that, but it's behind a box. It's through a smoke. And all he has to do is, is aim at a kind of five degree gap. It, it, it's very easy to stop that defuse as we saw. Now for KC, 1-0 on the board. Doesn't look like they're gonna change a damn thing, but Giant X have opted to swap up the setup. Obviously with pistols now, they'll to. stack up on back site. They'll give them the space, but when they look to take it at the last second, the pistols come around the corner, unfortunately. Our team wasn't so hasty to get around there, and he's got the full breadth of the KC attack to back him up. Shocked that it's about as easy <laughs> as can be. And listen, don't go in on Cloud, right? You're, we're going to let him have one, one little lineup with. Uh, lineup? I, I don't know if that was a lineup. Also, he's been practicing that one for days. My, uh, my flank is clear <laughs> at all times because I'm shot darting behind myself. Oh. Not for Purpo. This, this debut, it's definitely not started as he'd hope. Any damage he can do here would be nice. And it's not going to be happening. Nurey is going to add him to the death toll, getting ever closer to Thrash as well, which is not something you want to be facing off against in the early rounds. And this is where Giant X should be able to get themselves in with a purchase. Now, the one thing I do like compositionally is they're going to have quite a lot that they can use to try and set up Purple on this There's one. There's no need. There was no need for the replay of that. <laughs> yeah, Thrash. I wanted a slow-mo. It, very dangerous for Nari, yeah, to have these orbs on so soon. Thrash, not to be confused mm. with Thrasher. That's what they call Magnum when he's swimming in the pool. Uh, there's, there's an opportunity for them to get this online pretty much right away. An orb and a plant, which, you know, you're going to get with Gecko quite a lot of the time. It's been retake setups from GX towards B. This time, though, this KC are it. here to test the oh mid my. control with a straight oh up my. blitz, a paranoia, and a dizzy used. So much space claimed. And KC now, uh, they have their way with the A site. Redgar's ice. Isolated. If anything, they've turned their back to kill they Purple as well. And where does Redgar go? There's a player in front of him, some behind him, and they're all around. Oh, but Redgar got two. Exactly. Maybe okay. there's still a chance with a 2v2. Yeah, there's a possibility. Already able to get extra information. The plant actually somewhat being faked. It looks like they're going to go back to towards the B site. This is such an intriguing reset of the round. You can see the Giant X players, they're slowly encroaching on A. They're making their way in. They're checking their angles. They're looking for their opponents. And they're not there. They're gone completely. All the way over to the other side of the map. You can even see Tomazi has got time to reclaim some of his utility. And I, I think That's soon spike. for Hoodie, the, the penny is going to drop because he's cleared the entirety of the A site. Finally, they're going to start their run back to the other side of the map. But now they do have that Thrash online ready. They expect them to be closer, Mitch. They expect them to be much closer. So yeah, he brings it back. I was going to say, <laughs> oh, but it didn't really make no. it that far around the corner. That's not retrievable. Thrash here, a glorified recon drone. It buys them a little bit of time, but there's a drone on the other side. GX will claim back that space, seeing one, but they didn't see the player close. Oh it was destroyed God. too quickly. Tamazi has the jump, but he loses the fight. And Narrate's now alone. He's good in these positions. Clutch in. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> that connection clinical. And he doesn't even flinch. The funny thing is as well is it's almost like he let the first player run across. Because the thing is, again, Giant X, I feel like they played that right. Hoodie runs yeah, across because he's low. And then Cloud is the one to peek. Narrate kills the peeking player and then goes back to the low HP one afterwards. I don't know if that's planned, intentional, but oh, <laughs> look, he snapped back afterwards. God. That's oh, disgusting. God. And three and zero up from bad to worse for Giant X. They're now going to have to go in with a weak buy. 
Oh, that's a devastating one as well. Uh, just beaten out of the round by some innovative plays from KCGX. They have some tricks up their sleeve. One of them just shown early mid push flash into the double blast packs, but it hasn't worked. And again, the target seems to be the B site. Close nade, not going to clear out any traps. It's the most important one to clear because you just cannot shoot that one. And they send in the wingman, but not with the spike. Oh, it wasn't back. a misclick. Yeah, they yeah. intend to hit the A site. And, and look, well, the rotations, I think it's fair to say they've come in on B. There's a lot of Giants players yeah. on that B site. But it's, the thing is, as well, is what, what are you going to do in terms of utility to delay? Is Redguard going to use his paranoia here in, a, in an eco round? No. At least not until they get back into a retake scenario. Cloud at least having a weapon to play with is something. And they're going to try and at least clear out mid. The fact is, though, KC, they're just playing this as a unit. Like, normally, you would have a lurker. Normally, you'd have a player behind. You don't need it when you've got such a high weaponry advantage. So it will be a question of damage. Even this early, a lot of KC players have low credits. And here comes GX, their chance now to make this costly. Good to start. Two to two trades and keeping players close for the spike explosion. Uh, if it even goes off. In fact, Fatinho's got three and just about enough time. Tomasi needs to be quick getting out of the smoke and he's hit the diffuser. He might uh, just have won them this. It's close on oh, time. He has as well. Oh, that's so disgusting. I, I, I love just the, the brains of the players on KC. They shouldn't have even been in that scenario. Ultimately, not a great round for them. They, they lose everybody. But the fact is, it's that split second decision of if I'm going to kill someone, it has to be the guy defusing. Yeah. And that's exactly what it does. And from another young star. Wow. Like that, that's the thing I always enjoy about KC is they're a team that are playing above their experience level, above their age. Like, you expect someone who's been on this stage a million times to come out and do a play like that. Tomazi, he's been in Tier 1 for a couple of months. <laughs> hey, Fatinho as well. He's not looked too bad. Purpo, though, leading the charge okay. in this one. Two quick kills, and they're fighting tooth and nail for uh. it, but maybe a little too much over committing to the duels, perhaps until... The support comes in. Cloud and nice. Fitinho tying that one up nice and neat. And that is one hell of a change from the round we just saw. But the round we just saw was Fitinho going in. Three kills on the breach with a Sheriff. The confidence now might be the, regained a little bit by GX. The big thing as well is the economy. Remember the last rounds that we've had was it was coming down to the wire. A single player surviving and then zero players surviving the round after. So actually the main problem that's there for KC is their finances are about as bad as you could ever have to actually buy back into this win. So sure, they, they had themselves thrashed. They had themselves oh, a couple of SMGs, but that's not what you expect to see for a team that have won this many rounds. Oh, what? That didn't get a kill. It barely okay. scratched the surface, but now, right? Okay, a return of something for KC. A Rolling Thunder still online. A Cloudburst as well, but oh, I was going to say no chance to use Spot the Rolling down, Thunder. Narrate's actually had a little bit of a whiff. Patino a little closer than he was expecting him to be. And these pistols now left for walkabouts. Magnum won't find the space. Shin will be left alone. And with the spike down, it's not really a chance for him to get out of this one with a win. No. It would basically be down to... Damage. Can he do anything? Can he remove some weaponry? And you can see Giant X all grouped up as a unit, a firing squad that he should never be able to connect onto. And it will be another round onto the board for Giant X. Again, though, not much, if anything, really invested into that round for KC. So this is, again, where you kind of expect to see a bit of a response. And the last two rounds have seen a lot of aggression. Actually, the last few rounds have seen a lot of aggression out of the side of Giant X. Now here, they can feel confident in taking those duels, considering the weaponry disadvantage their opponents have. They also started it out with a showstopper, which is obviously something you're going to use to break the momentum and charge forward. But it's something that can get a little bit predictable. I don't expect to see them throwing it out round after round. But here again, the blast pack play comes through. The stun has actually caught Purpo. Yeah. Which isn't ideal. But Look either at the way, instant no rotation there. as well. That's the main thing. You already have yourself the majority of the players rotating over on the other side of the map to get themselves set up and ready. Now, the Thrash is at least going to clear some of the utility, but actually sending it forward 
It's only going to slow them down. An immediate response off that rolling thunder, but the showstopper is going to drop Redgar immediately. The flash through, however, is only going to garner a trade. And now that pushback coming through from the side of Giant X, making things more costly, making things close, as it will just be Tomazi left. A one versus two as they look to peak this one together. Great work from Giant X and a good round overall. Yeah, another very good look from them. A great read. Uh, obviously, on the back of the A aggression, they get so much control, they can be confident that that play is not coming in there, or at least they can rotate on time if it is. The B site has been just straight up blitz when KC go there. They take a lot of space, they overwhelm it. And although we've seen Giant X play retake before and it really didn't go too well a couple of times, now we're seeing them get ahead of that, actually fight, take down the wingman, not yep. let the plant go in. This is much more of what we need to see from this squad. They're getting involved and really getting their teeth into this. A third round already they're found. Do it again. They're on the heels of KC. Aggression. No, it's the, this is what I'm saying. It's not the same from Giant X. You can't, you can't just push up like that every round. Eventually, there's going to be five guys staring this at you when you make a round. See, look at the jump already. I thought my team might actually be able to get away with that. As he does get very far forward again. They make these rounds look competitive, but the amount of HP they've already lost should make this easy pickings for the rest of Giant X. It would have to be a crazy round for them to recover. Even with the smoke down, those players aren't going to go barreling through. I'll give you the time that you want to get that spike planted because they've got the numbers advantage to work with. I do like that they're just sticking together too. Just a blob of defenders as I see Redgar go back the other way. Get a little worried, but he's got the HP on them. And he was only holding it for a moment. 45 seconds, a ton of time. Looks like we're going around the world for both squads. KC might just get an open a site plan. But either way, this is the plan for Giant X all along. Let them plan. Yeah. Maybe we catch them off guard here or there. And then we play the retake as a team. The big thing is how much utility is available for Giant X because of how fast-paced this round was for the side of KC. There's not really going to be any opportunities to wean out that utility. So you've still got Paranoia, you've still got Nade, Aftershot, Flashes, Stun. Like, they, they should have everything needed for them. Now, being in mid, they will be able to... Well, they should be able to hear what direction they need to go in. And, and the main thing for Giant X is that they don't get caught off guard. They don't make a mistake giving up a kill. And for now, at least... They are still sticking right together as a unit. The only worry for me is they are moving very slow. Yeah, the, the timer's going to be ticked away. There's right some there. weapons to spam with. Narrate, not really. Right He's on there. the Vandal. A chance for Shin. We'll see. I mean, it's, it's going to be down to blind look, essentially. They're oh. willing to gamble this round with the lower HP on spam wins. It's not always oh. going to work out. Defuse underway. Out, out of bullets. Spray from Shin is good. A few bullets connect and now right closes it. They gambled this round on spams through the smoke. <laughs> oh, no. And it's worked out in their favor. KC can't put a foot wrong. The lead will remain in their hands. Uh, they shouldn't have won that round. They really, really shouldn't have won that round. Like, the initial spam, I was like, okay, that's a nice kill, but surely still Giant X are going to be able to convert this. And then the raid. That, what, what's what? that? That's a what, what, what even is that? It's just a blind random spray that just takes out one player and gives him an easy 1v1 on the second. I, I don't know how they've managed to take that one home. And actually, it, but maybe they agree because KC are going to be the ones to take a pause. What a weird time to be alive, man. I've got Zelsus convincing me to be a fan of Sentinels and then narrate possibly my favorite player in the MEA as a North American. He's one of them. Yeah, I was about to say, I'm we, not we, talk about all, the next match. we all know who your favorite player in the MEA is, so no one believes that for a second. One up, one up. I don't sure. think you've ever nearly ripped your hair out watching KC. That's true. <laughs> well, actually, maybe last year. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's for very stressful. different reasons. Melons. <laughs> but yeah, no, this is like, Narrate is such a fun player to watch because he's the kind of guy that genuinely, I'd be I'd be calling hacks on if we were in a ranked lobby. I, the things he does. You're not just in ranked lobbies. No, of course not. That's <laughs> Colin Smurfin, at least. The, uh, the shots that he hits, man, the shots he goes for, I think that's more the impressive thing because he hits them sometimes that's just look but he gives himself those opportunities yeah. again and again he's so cocky but it works out 11 and 4 right now as a gecko thrash is almost back online we've seen it a few times also tomazi again like as i said i think before being in this team he played cypher five times ever it's his second map in a row mm. it looked pretty decent on the last it looking fantastic at the moment in this map 
It is showing just how much depth a lot of these, like I said, duelist players actually have within. Again, they're going to have themselves a free reign into the site. Now, bear in mind, there was early contact last time out. The afterplant didn't happen. And oh, there was him. a lot in terms of the retake. They had a rolling thunder. Now, there is a Hunter's Fury available for Cloud, which he's going to try and throw through here. But he's actually had to give up on it. Or, well, didn't have a choice because of the null command. Yeah, had to give up on it uh, very literally. Good old by Magnum, countering it perfectly. Fight in towards spawn. They can't overcommit to this. GX are tucked in some nasty positions. In fact, it was Fatinho I was talking about. He's given it away as three look to push forward, but the reposition from Tamasi. You mentioned his Cypher looked good, but this is just him looking good. Fantastic play. And even though he's gone down to four, he stopped Breach. Fatinho from being able to put any util down, from being able to fight with his team. Maybe that trade would have changed the, the course of this entirely with the players in main. 80 HP, 30 HP. They just needed that extra gun in the fight, but they couldn't get it. I, do, do we have a rule that we're not allowed to show Shin multifrax right live yes. in the round? Because, yes. like, before it was a joke, but I'm genuinely starting to believe it now. Now, don't get me wrong. Zilv hates Shin. We, we should have been following Tomazi there because he had the right position to yeah, get yeah, the kills, oh, and then Shin 100%. just peeks and absolutely wrecks everyone. And this guy as well, like, you have to think wow. about the team he was in last year, his own individual level last year. It wasn't even compared comparable to what we're seeing from him, even from kickoff, from Masters, and here today. And why, again, we were at a scenario where Giant X get to three rounds, and immediately, it's like KC just flip a switch, turn back on, and they're far in the lead once again. Now, this has been one of the major successes. That aggression coming out from Purpo spots nothing but gets them info. Again, though, that info's worked well when it's an A-site play or a slow B. This time, though, much pacier again. And the paranoia has delayed them entirely. Shin just about snuck away from that bullet, dodged it. As GX look to wrap back around, that spike still needs to be planted. They want to take advantage of the chaos. Switch, quick kills coming in. And Frash used up. It's actually caught them. Huge with red guard. <laughs> I don't know what's happening with that right there. But he's caught Redgar in the end. Bought some time, perhaps, for Tamazi to come up and find this quick kill, make it more awkward, but he's left in a 1v2. Tamazi to do it all. And the defuse down right underneath his nose. He's going to go for the spams instead, but they're off it. They're willing to run down this clock Whoa. a little bit, and the cage didn't quite reach where it needed to. Purpo on his third kill of the round and gets GX a fourth. Yeah, he's definitely looking a little bit better. I, I think with especially a lot of the retakes that Giant X are, are playing into, they're sending in a lot of utility to just give him space, get back into the site. What? I don't even know who got killed there. <laughs> but then, yeah, just moving as a unit and allowing him to just put that raw individual aim. And Fatinho as well, really putting up some numbers here. Now they got that showstopper back online once again. And Rolling Thunder's not far away. So things definitely starting to look a little bit better for Giant X, but there is still going to be a purchase coming in for the side of KC. Well, fighting to equalize this scoreline at the half. Giant X have quite a battle on their hands. Looking for a B main crunch with lots of utility oh, thrown through, again. but cancelled out. Well placed. Knife coming out of Magnum, but Shin's fallen to the spams. They're running through okay. this util, and they're losing their lives to it. A showstopper used confirms the round. Purpo even landing his third back to back. GX, five on the board. Rolling Thunder online, rifles in their hand. This could be a much better half than it was looking like it would be. Yeah, it's been a sort of back and forth in terms of streaks of rounds, but to level it up after what was a pretty rough start to this map would really not be a bad showing from Giant X whatsoever. I think as well, the fact that we are seeing Purpo come more and more into this game is going to be really important because he is the pinnacle. When it comes to that attack side, he's going to be the focal point of their entire move. Again, though, it seems like the same again. KC, they are not going to shy away from this B site feeling comfortable in their post plants once they can get there. That's what Giant X have been doing well, though. They've been stopping them getting there in the first place. Well, that's it. Interrupting, disrupting these pushes. Last round, it was inside B main. This time, it's going to be market they fight for. Magnum quickly claims control. The retake on the backside, though, it's spiked down now under their control. Giant X might have something to work with. They know the purpose here. 
They know the site is lost, at least they're spotting that as we speak. A costly bit of information. Good blast pack, but the player's too close. Cloud got his double. They've shut down Purpo, leaving it to the one versus one. The sneak around from the right, 45 HP. Spotted, trap destroyed, headshot angle. But Hoodie hits the shot. Two HP remaining, but it's enough just about. Yeah, I was seeing, uh, seeming like in some of the early stages, of this matchup that the Cypher might just be a little bit cursed for Giant X. And I won't lie, Red God's still not been having the best of days. I think maybe having a new player, a little bit more micromanagement than needs to be done. But the half looking much better. Six of the last eight rounds going the way of Giant X. And now, as said, heading Good into job. that attack Good side, job, boys. that's Good where job. Hoodie's going to be able to get on those lurks a little bit more. And as said, that's where Purpo and Fitinio is still going to be that double duo, those setups that are going to have to be put into place well for him to get those opening kills. The second half is sure to be exciting. The pressure on for the side of Giant X. They don't want to be kicking this off with a loss. Already making this map close against a team that did so well internationally and regionally last, uh, I don't want to call it stage, but in kickoff. Cover going out. But that's not an accolade that they're looking for. They want to beat them. They want to take that spot in Shanghai and it's going to be a long road for them. Even in this series, six to six, pistol round, carry some weight. They can farm up some rounds. It could be good for them, but Redgar off to a poor start. He's dropped yeah. off rip, but it looks like they want to fight for spawn here. Yeah, this might be the wrong call. There's a couple of players waiting. The flash should actually be able to catch. Martini dodges it, but still isn't able to take that fight. Magnum not quite quick enough on the trade. Narate also looking to push in. He did damage early in the round to Cloud, keeping them low, but this death ball, the swing's coming out. It's not pretty for Magnum, but eventually he gets the job done. Left onto Cloud, dinked at the beginning of the round. Left on 20 to try and find two. Spike planted, not in a bad position for him, but you can see Magnum already just pre-firing some of the shots. The smoke onto it is gonna make things all the more difficult. Needs his kill immediately, and even the tap to the face isn't quite gonna be enough. It will be KC to regain their lead, a second pistol as well in this map. Should give them good opportunity to convert it, but we already know that Giant X are pretty good with those comebacks so far in this map at least. Yeah, they definitely have been. I mean, a slower start is never ideal, but they can pick it up towards the end. That's all good. Just the pistol makes it that little bit more difficult. It swings the odds into Casey's favor. They've got the lead in the half, and they've got an injection of rounds. I don't expect to see a force buy coming out of Giant X. Probably just take it on the chin and move on to round number 15. And as we can see, indeed, it will be just classics. The one ghost on Hoodie. An opportunity to fight together. They're using a utility off rip, stuns, nades. Actually, no, the, the nade wasn't even thrown out from Purpo there. I thought it was. I guess KC just using a lot of that utility to push Giant X back. But they've pushed them into a wide open A site, yeah. barring the traps. This is the classic setup, though. KC absolutely love to play retake on this map. So they are more than happy to give up that space, allow for that plant to come through. The only real danger in this round is going to be Hoodie on the Lurks. It's being checked for, but he is so passive that he's not going to be found. The only thing will be if he can hit that timing just right. The thing is, the main problem, that weaponry disadvantage. They're close range, though. They got the numbers to work with. Cloud has somehow picked three with a classic in his hand. This is unbelievable. Uh, they shouldn't have had a chance in this round, and instead Cloud got four kills. Starting with that with a classic and finding three of them with it. I mean, I'm going to need a replay of that. <laughs> I so, have no idea how he I'm, managed I'm that. I'm fairly sure that they've lost every single pistol so far in this Look game. And every single time in the map, there has been a point. And most of the time, it was the bonus round, like where they were coming in with rifles. Oh. This time, he does it a little bit earlier, where he comes out with a multi-frag that they never really should be winning. Boo, 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 boo. <laughs> <laughs> He's got him back. He's got him back. Firing back. And 7-7. Seven to seven. We're tied up again. I said the pistol was a big factor. I said I didn't expect Giant X to force buy. Well, they didn't. Nah. They still won the round. Now we're neck and neck. And in fact, the ball's in their court. Weapons for the attackers and none for the defense. Where you go, Stinger? Oh, sorry. My bad. Yeah, watch that get four kills. It is Martin. When there's a will, there's a way. I don't know if the Mitch Man curse is that strong, but we'll have to wait and see. 
Are they going to check? They are. No way that Tamazi survives much longer in that one. Magnum already gone. The rest of them just looking to run around the corner. And while Martin is the only one left, it will be one kill at least. But for the first time, well, I guess in either map, Giant X are actually going to take themselves the lead. 8-7 up. Bear in mind as well, last time they did actually play this map within the series, and it was the map that Giant X won. And that was the thing that sort of surprised me in this veto. Obviously a map that KC had been very confident in, and maybe with the changes, scrim results, we don't know. But the fact is, right now they're down. Well, barely anyone died as well in that previous round. With the context of that and a full eco win in the round prior, the economy for GX now looks pretty solid, pretty secured for the coming yeah. rounds. A big challenge for KC on their map pick as their defense is now really under threat. This defense being challenged on the B side. Paranoia is used as they claim control of the site. It hasn't pushed anyone back though. Because Tamazi is playing the retake. Part of the plan from the get-go yeah. for Carmine Core. And if they do go for the B main post plan, you've got a showstopper on Martin. Hunter's Fury used proactively though. I like the idea. Purpose been able to catch one as well. They've lost Red Guard, but they're not allowing them to get into the retake. This adaptation from Giant X is wonderful. They know exactly what their opponents are going for. I said, we, we set up this map knowing the KC love to go for the retakes. If you think Pipson and Milan aren't also looking at those VODs and working out the way they want to play. And so far, Giant X have done fantastically well just to be disruptive. Get in their face. Put the Hunter's Fury through the second they're setting up. Throw in Purpo to take some fights aggressively and just not allow those positions to be taken. Solid round from Giant X. And while, okay, the Showstopper will still be there, a the couple of rifles will still be there, as there's nobody even remotely close to clearing out these players. The problem, though, for KC, the scoreline now starting to slip away from them. Well, this is it. Yeah, a position it didn't look like they were going to find themselves in. And GX certainly have something to work with. I like, like you're saying, I like the idea from them. We've seen KC, they're not really pushed out of their comfort zone in those first 20, 30 seconds. They give up control, they step back, and they know they've got the way back in. And the problem was they, they were expecting, like I said, GX to plant the spike, go back in main, play that post plant. Instead, they push forward. Yeah. They take those fights to them. It's a much, much better look. They're finding success. And in round number 17, double digits now possible for this attacking squad. Passive they are. It's the same thing from KC, Sending the same ahead. setup, I guess, because they didn't use... No, I mean, I mean Giant X. I think they were oh, expecting yeah. okay. aggressive elements in this round. So for the first 30 seconds, they just sit there. They go, okay, they've got double flashes. They're going to want to push us. They're going to want to send Martin in, maybe with that showstopper. So let's just wait and see. The thing is, though, the read out from KC is fantastic. Four players within this site this time. As said, most of the time they've been playing retake. The problem is they have given the game away. They did. They did. They did damage too. Purpo down to 40 HP. But all that utility coming through, the spams as well, it scared them. GX though might not be changing direction so much as changing their approach. Fighting for some mid control. Split through market possible here with still the B lurk. I'm, I'm expecting that's what they're aiming for. The smoke's on the left side of mid, not using it more passive like you'd expect to, to cover their 30 seconds cross left. through. I think that's just trying to keep players in position. Uh, to some extent, it's worked. As soon as they hear that util, the wrap is back around. The players move to the site. Magnum, good for one. Showstoppers caught another, and this has slowed down the push from GX, but still, the man advantage isn't that far gone, but 12 seconds is the main problem. The plant needs to come through, and it looks like it will, but the blitz right afterwards puts nice. them in the ground. Oh, really good round from KC. Again, I, I don't mind the initial setup that we saw from Giant X. They they were passive, they were patient, they were waiting for their opponents. But this time, KC were just happy to stack up a site, get the read right initially, and then just almost stick around ready to have all of that utility remaining for the end. And I, I think that was the main thing, is that Giant X, because of their slow pace because they weren't really pressuring them until right at the end. You still had a showstopper, you still had a paranoia, you still had pretty much every single piece of utility available to then delay to the very last seconds. And well, for Giant X, not a round you'd be hoping to lose. Luckily, because of the way the rounds have gone, they have a lot of credits and they have their ults building up as well. This is going to be a blitz. Or at least I thought it was from the defensive side. It's a late paranoia. They were waiting for the contact. 
Four players here, and this looks more like they're trying to push Giant X back than to actually catch them with, with a quick play. Drone goes up, three smoke, rolling thunder, time to run. Showstopper oh. searching for a target, but not found it. Martin dies in the end, and Thrash claims a target, but there's no way to capitalize on it. They've got to fall back. Giant X have earned that advantage. God, this is now problematic for Casey. A man down already, but I like the way that they're re-aggressing, trying to take back some control. It's being watched by Redgar, and there's a trip there as well. Giant X instead have just opted to slow right down. The thing is, with the re-aggression from this defense, they, they could catch them. Pop Flash looking to go over the top, trying to reclaim some space. They had the close angle cleared already by the Gecko Utility, and Magnum is now going to clear Redgar, who seemed to be lost. I think they they genuinely didn't notice the trap was broken behind and the chaos and the noise. I don't know the Flash would have helped that much, but... They were definitely unaware. KC, though, unaware of the player towards the backside. Cloud's got the perfect position to pounce. He's found his one. But he won't get much more than that. And no. KC quickly stormed the site. I was all in on Cloud's stocks there, but wow, they went plummeting. Yeah, I don't think it helped that his entire team died. <laughs> that was it. They buy one more second? Maybe. Maybe. Well, I think that's the moment where he's like, guys, I'm behind them. Just don't. I got one. Everyone's dead. Mm -hmm. Oh. But I, yeah, I, I genuinely think that. Yeah, Redgar, I don't know if he was setting up a smoke, but they, they, they made it very clear that they were coming from behind. Like, they broke the trip, they threw a flash over the top. Woo! So it, I, I guess that either it just wasn't calmed or it just... threw the knife too. Yeah. So from, it, from behind. It, it just seemed like, yeah, it just got a little bit lost. And that was what gave them the space to basically come back in on the retake. And to be fair, if anything, I, maybe I'm misreading it, but I, I'm fairly certain he was hit by that knife. So he could not have been setting up a smoke. <laughs> maybe is just lost in the sauce for a second. Uh, and I guess trying to coordinate the push, it got a little chaotic. These things happen. It's been tough. And at nine to nine for the side of Giant X, they've at least still got rifles. They'll have some ultis, but not actually any good ones. This rifle round is gonna have a, a lot on the line for them. The attack pause is called through. I think this is the worst time for both teams, really. But if you're Giant X, you're a map down, the momentum just switched hands to your opponents. I think now they're left to just sit in this situation where they're a couple rounds from losing their opening matchup. Yeah, this, this is not where you want to be if you're Giant X. Now, obviously, th this is not similar to kickoff in the, in the sense of the format. Like, we're not, we're not sitting there going, you lose two games, you're done for the season. It's yeah. like, to get into playoffs, you need to finish within that top three within your group. Now, obviously, you're in the group with five teams. That's a little bit more difficult to do. But at the same time, you are going to be still given an opportunity. And I think losing to KC, it wouldn't be the end of the world. I think even just being a little bit more competitive, we've got some signs of life. Patino on the breach looking good. Cloud still there. Purpo coming alive in this map at least. There's definitely some signs that Giant X, like say for example, they play against the likes of a, a BBO or Koi. Like sure. you probably put them in that advantage spot. Whereas KC, we expect them to be a, a, a master's team. Like that's what we're looking at now. They have proven themselves at the highest degree. The issue with this map, I think, though, that will be frustrating is they've had opportunities. They've had a lot of opportunities, in fact, and some of them just seem like, okay, some quieter performances, like Redgar especially, just hasn't really been there in either map. And I, I think that we're even seeing just blips and mistakes that are happening. And for the other side of things, like you've had a couple of switch ups, like Thomas, he has said, now moving over to that Sentinel role, and it looks good. Like, it doesn't look like he's out of pocket, uncomfortable at any point. So I think it's just proving again that this KC roster, even though they haven't had much time, they've had like a week, they've yeah. still been in the lab, they've still been working. And that's another aspect to it that we didn't even mention, because obviously I said KC being at an international event, having limited time to prep for their matches, let alone think longer term, further ahead, think about Clove coming soon as well. But the other aspect is Giant X, whatever they've been practicing, whatever they've been mulling over, and it wasn't really an aspect of, of Breeze, I suppose, with KC. They haven't had to show anything. Whereas KC have, like the weak preparation they have is trying to build on something that everyone else can look at or start from scratch, which yeah. again, just puts you at that, that major back foot. I think the thing that stands to them, despite, you know, obviously their prep, they were one of the teams that was, I think, scrimming the most when it came to Madrid, despite the schedule, they would still get back late at night and go right away into scrims. They've got the hard work and the dedication, but they just have this insane depth of young talent 
that no matter what happens, they can clutch out a situation. Uh, players like Narrate, like Shin last season as well, I would say we saw him do a lot, but we saw the impact of it, I suppose. <laughs> um, and, and, you know, this is a squad that even Magnum, he's had his, he's had his games. He's also had his bad games, but we don't. We don't need No, you do. Time. You do keep bringing it up <laughs> every just, time. It's just very and funny. I, I don't he think you've gone. Yeah, you haven't gone a single match since kills. that day where you haven't brought that up. I know. I know. It's because he's just like he's my second favorite Spartan. Uh, okay. Zero one five. Seven, okay. One seven. It's, uh, okay. it's close. I, it, I like. I, it. I like it where they take their helmets off. <laughs> let's 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 not get into that. Let's not get into the TV show. Whew. Well, I have some information for you. Uh, okay, got you. So I was just getting filled in on what we've been waiting for. And Casey had a little bit of a, a tech issue where they weren't able to speak to their coach, apparently. I think so, it was they weren't able to call a pause. So basically, pause we're going back to into the, the same place we were at. They've just nine, won nine. themselves the round, but they yeah. wanted to take a pause and the timer basically was just going to go out. into the yeah, round. Yeah, so yeah, 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 yeah. you have to restart the round to get yourself back to the same point. Otherwise, yeah. uh, it's yeah. <laughs> infinitely more straight complicated. In and uh, yeah, so basically we're going to go straight into what will be a pause uh, for KC, which it, it seems to be something they're doing quite a lot. When a lot of these rounds get a little bit more tight, they get a little bit more messy at times. They're, they're quite happy to go, okay, well, we, we've seen that, like, I, I think the, the thing I like with Eng is clearly a very proactive. He's, he's not yeah. reactive. He's, he's not looking at something and going, we just lost that round. I need to take a pause. He's going, we won that round, but I think this was a mistake that we want to fix before we lose a round. And that's something he does. He, we've already seen it multiple times in this match. I think to some extent as well, the fact that you don't get those reactive pauses, it, you know, to each team their own style. But I think there's an element of trust within the, the core that you've built there, within the protocols you've established, that if you do lose to something that's blatant, your IGL can pick that up. Yes. You know, that's something you don't need to expand a pause on. You can also listen in for a second and go, wait, they're not talking about that thing they need to. Pause, pause, pause. There's there's always upsides to it, downsides, but I think Aang is a, a coach that should most certainly be studied. This man has done so much with so many different rosters. And now here on KC, after a, a splendid regional run, a, a spectacular regional run, a splendid international one, they now look to start this one off with success. With a one uh, win up with a two to zero in terms of maps, it's all possible. Yeah, they'd have for four KC. points. <laughs> they'd be racking it up. No one else is even gonna be remotely close. They'll be the only team still with points. Yeah. But of course, Giant X still stand in their way. We're at a 9-9 scoreline. It definitely isn't done yet. And it looks like we're going straight back in to what will be this B site take once again. Already though, Set up immediately for a retake. Thomas he has just spammed through the smoke and managed to take two heads off while he's doing it. Taking over completely. The young man from Portugal could have had himself an ace. It's not going to be happening. Should have stolen it away, but dear Lord, that was an absurd round from the youngster. What the hell did he say in that pause, Tom? <laughs> how do you how do you set that one up? Yeah, Tomazi narrates almost overtaking you on the scoreboard. <laughs> <laughs> Wake up, boy! Look at again. this man through the smoke was ridiculous. Two players, granted, blinded, but swinging out and just popping their heads like birthday <laughs> candles. <Tomazzi! laughs> <laughs> let's go, let's go. Ten to nine for Casey coming out of a pause, swinging. But GX aren't on their last legs just yet. They've still got some credits left to expand, and they're going to take another shot at it. Round yeah, disadvantage, okay. but a man disadvantage now has been gifted to KC. The, the peak there. It, I, I guess there was. There must have been some sort of flash that was thrown out, but it clearly was dodged by Purpo. Able to find that opener, and it's not something I, I maybe a little bit overconfidence from KC uh, after the last round. I can't really blame them. I know exactly where. You Already. Are. Information going to be taken. You can see immediately Tomazzi's going to rotate in to try and take a little bit of extra space off the back of the TP as well. They're going to try and fake information that there's less players on A. I like the idea using the From the Shadows to try and bait things out a little bit, although it will have been heard they've got the right players in the right place at the right time.
all about how this blitz comes down after. And it looks like it won't come down at all. GX just back out. KC. What did they hear? What did they see? They're rotating off the A site completely. They're stacking up this B site. I, I mean, the read is once again absolutely perfect from a dead Magnum. And now this play through, they're running into Tamazi. They try to deal with him, but they don't know how many more players are waiting. The flash through even catches Hoodie. They know where he is. That flash gave it well away, and Hoodie, well, he'll try his best, at least finding the first. Swinging up close, he doesn't know there's a player in the corner, and I heard a few more bullets than I should have, but he got there in the end. <laughs> Why is that the one we see? <laughs> <laughs> 11 to 9. Again, it did, the round starts off well for the side of Giant X. They get the opener. They, they actually get the read initially correct, but the rotations from KC are just sublime. I, I don't know if Eng has just the gift of foresight, and that was what the pause was for. He's like, okay, in the next round, Thomas, you're going to get four kills. Round after that, uh, they're going to initially play towards the A side, rotate back to B. Because it just looked like they had the script. It looked like they were they could see a monitor somewhere in the arena and just knew exactly <laughs> where their opponents were going. Because it, it just followed them all the way around the map. Martin now invested into the operator as well. And it is another buy for Giant X, but this is slipping. It is, and they're down to their last legs in terms of credits. Ults, you know, they could come online towards the end. Maybe Purpo and Cloud were particularly looking at a good plant or orb claim for Fitinho. And he's been doing pretty well in terms of kills. Reflash out from KC, mid control taken, guaranteed by the fact that nobody was spotted by the Dizzy. They'll move towards oh, this B side on the side of GX, but look at that. Five agents have been suppressed, have been detected. And that op is going to be trained on the angle. The smoke up. Well, it'll allow them to still get them when they come through. Of course, the flashes you're expecting to see. Nate going to slice up this attack a little bit. Purple isolated, spam down to Mazzy. Takes him in the open. And the camera's getting all the information all the while. They have no idea that they're being spotted. Caught in 4K as KC pushed to 12. Guys, I remember last year looking at someone like Tomasi, this guy, the, 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 just a ridiculously talented duelist uh, that could throw out a neon and look fantastic. If you told me that going into next year that he'd be one of my favorite ciphers after only playing it for a couple of maps, I think I'd call you crazy. But he had everything this round. The, the utility was on point. Repositioning consistently, finding the kills as well. Currently sits top of the board, 23 and 14. Well, the pause button has been slammed once again. This time it's going to be Giant X, and uh, I can tell you for free, this is definitely a reactive pause. Five rounds in a row for the defense. No real blip even on the radar. Like These rounds have been clean at that. And now, well, Pipson, he's going to try and come up with something that can not only win the next round, but maybe the next two. Yeah, that's it. I mean, I think they have another pause to work with at least, so yeah, he can <laughs> have another chat. He can take a pause each round until they get to 11, and then... <laughs> oh, you're on your own, boys. You're on your own. It also lets Eng talk as well, though, which I, the I almost not want to take my own pauses. Just right, so Mazzy, I I'm thinking you just do that again, all right? <laughs> well, we discussed before, just run it back. Oh. And narrate if he dies, it's your turn. <laughs> and if everyone dies, Shin, you Shin. clutch. <laughs> but we won't see the it. other team, but you need to accept that. <laughs> well, one round needed three chances to close this out and put themselves off to a crazy start to the season. I mean, GX are a team that we consider, like, right now, I think they're the, the team that could be taking that fourth spot, right? Points dependent. I wouldn't be upset to see them push the international stage. Oh, hello. But I don't think they're uh. one of the best out there right now. The cream of the crop. That's KC. But without Shin, they might struggle in this round. Smoke's now down. This gets a little tougher. Narrate is incredibly go, yeah. yeah, I really thought he was about to get three kills there. Oh, Magnum. Has to be forced off by the drone. Has some counter utility. They definitely know he's there. They know that Narrate is around this position as well. Rotation coming in. This might be the moment to fall back, but actually, Hoodie moving forward. Again, the, the rotations are quick enough at this stage. Hunter's Fury through. It's going to be dodged, and in the meantime, while it's being utilized, pretty much everyone goes down, leaving this into just one player standing. Cloud, he's been their hero a couple of times. He's given them a round that maybe they shouldn't in the past, but 
to keep them in this series, to keep them in this map. He needs to pull off a miracle. 30 seconds to do it. 30 seconds left. Well, I think this one's sealed, signed, and perhaps delivered. Cloud, 20 seconds. They are waiting, biding their time, knowing he can't get that spike planted and kill us all in time. And with 12 left, it's a formality as to when and how he goes down. Not if. Of course, it's Tamazi to pick up another. A lights out series from him and from KC in general. 13 to 4 and 13 to 9. They're back. Yeah, before coming in today, Tomazi had played 19 games of Viper, five games of Omen, and a game of Fade. Today, he picked up the Cypher and has just gone 26 and 14 versus Giant X, a team that beat them on this map last time around. A lights out performance from him and the entirety of the squad. And off the back of a, a decent showing at Masters Madrid, it is safe to say there are no slackers on the side of KC. They are back and looking as fierce as ever. Yeah, listen, you can talk about prep time has showing what they've got on the international stage. They showed us what they've got on Breeze today. And there's no easy breezy map up against this squad. They are looking strong and determined to repeat last season's results. Kickoff went well, and they've kicked this one off the flying start. Yeah, I, I think as well for Giant X, there were definitely glimpses of what we can expect to see. Purple, especially in that second map, was looking pretty decent for Tino as well on the breach. Actually ended up top fragging, so it's not affecting his numbers too much. But I think it's definitely going to take a little bit of time before they get to the form that we want to see from them. And it's it's one of those games where I feel like you can definitely learn a lot from. You're going up against one of the best teams. Either way, it is the day of KC. And of course, we're going over to Sue, who's waiting with Magnum. Thank you very much, guys. That is right. I'm joined by Magnum, the IGL of KCOR. Now, uh, congratulations on your victory. Welcome back, by the way. We've been theorizing a little bit about what you guys learned from uh, Madrid. So I wanted to ask you, uh, what do you think you guys took away from that tournament? Um, so first of all, like, I think uh, the big thing is uh, we polished our preparation. I think we know how to prepare for matches. Uh, that is all about our game. Second, um, we want to win and what we have to do to win. And third, uh, map pool, yeah. like we have um, different, um, like we just have different map pool, different, uh, different compositions, as you can see, and uh, I'm feeling excited. Uh, let's talk about these differences, because you, you haven't had a lot of time. You guys were uh, uh, at a global event, you got to come back here. So how long have you had to actually prep for all of these new things? I think, uh, I'm not quite sure, but I would say like seven to 10 days. But uh, what I can say, we are struggling before internet in office. So we are playing with 2,000 things sometimes. So uh, we count it like we have to, like one to five rounds a prep with 2,000 ping, which is like a lot. But uh, yeah, we play a lot of scrims a day, and yeah, that's why, that's why we want to know. I mean, you guys won EMEA. You're the kings of EMEA. So why are you changing things? You even need to, you feel like? Uh, I mean, first of all, like uh, we already showed everything, and second, I think um, we are quite a young team and like a um, new team, so we didn't understand like what's our strengths. But I think now we polish the, our strengths. We know like we, what we want to play, uh, what agents, uh, blah blah blah, you know. And um, yeah, that, that's why. And especially like if you change comp, you have new ideas, and yeah, it's much harder to play against you. How much of this is coming from you, and how much is this, is you know the the brainchild of N and Zesh? I think it's a team decision, but most of it always is Ang and, and Mia. The end method, it's working, right? Is he working you guys hard? You're packing a lot? Yeah, we play like six scrims a day with a lot of review, and, uh, but it's, it's fun. Uh, how's everyone dealing with the potential role changes? Obviously, Tomazi on the Cypher, I feel like he plays everything at this point. Are you on the KO as well uh, on Sunset? Are you guys comfortable right now with your roles? Yeah, like uh, we usually like, um, we try like a bunch of different comps and then we just uh, like talk, which we like the most, and then uh, that's how we choose it. Yeah, yeah and uh, lastly, looking ahead to the rest of your split, you have uh, Navi coming up, Food, Koi, Heretics, and so on. Uh, is there a team that you feel like will be giving you uh, the biggest challenge out of all of those guys? I mean, what I can say, I don't. I don't know, like from these four teams, but I'm happy we don't have to play Team Vitality because, oh my god, like, I don't think we want single scream against them. Oh, and, yeah? and we are getting like full destroyed. They are playing real well. Um, but yeah, we'll see the next split or playoffs so, um, how we do. I hope you get to play them in playoffs. Uh, thank you very much, Mag Magnum, for joining me. Uh, once again, congratulations. Thank you for your time. But don't go anywhere, you guys, because after the break, we're going to be bringing you Team Liquid versus Koi. Woo! 
Let's put the pot up, boy. Get against us back! Get against us back, baby! The Eco Goblin. I know a place that will break you into a thousand pieces. Stay away from them. Stay away from Lorca, Paco, and Picasso. Don't ask about Lola. I, Caballo Grande. I, Lord Nieve. But in spite of everything, it occurs to you to visit Andalusia. Don't say I didn't warn you. Be careful of the Andalusian crush. Hey guys, it's Jimmy Lin, former professional Counter-Strike player and Valorant coach. Watch out for the stairs, clear this angle, you're going to be able to fight this. Red Bull gives you wings. Let's go. I got big dreams, I'ma do big things. Hey, you see me on the big screen, looking so clean. I don't move slow, I move fast right past. Anybody taking life for granted, yeah, that's too bad. I'd be grateful for everything that I have. You only got this life, you don't get it back. Make the most of it, become the best that I can. Everybody look at me, I got a plan. You gotta work hard, play hard, do it from the start. Cause how you do anything is everything is hard. Stay consistent and do it every day. Don't let fatigue get in your way. Cause 10% of something is better than nothing You better do something if you wanna be something I can feel my stomach rumbling, I'm hungry Big things coming, I ain't bluffing, yeah No, I don't wanna stay the same, yeah So I keep pushing through the pain, yeah That's the only way to make a change, yeah So I fight every day and train, yeah It'll all be worth it One day it'll all be worth it so I keep pushing through the pain, yeah That's the only way to make a change, yeah I've had enough I'm making my own luck Adrenaline, my drug I'm sick of feeling stuck I got this, I got this Will not quit to the top, I promise Cause I've had enough I'm on the climb to the crown in my prime right now Hear me loud, I've been spitting for a while now I'll buy myself independent DIY now Don't need no help, I've been beating out labels And money and budgets, it's funny I do all the work, yeah, keep it 100 I fight for my dreams, I would die for these things I believe in myself, I refuse to be weak I like to build things 
Empires out of buildings. I wanna leave a legacy of helping others finally feel things. Of motivating and killing. Depression, exhaustion, we need some healing. I work through the pain. I like seeing gains. I keep my head down, buried, walk through the flames. Yeah, I do this every day, even when I feel drained. A true man pushes through, you don't hear complaints. No, I don't wanna stay the same, yeah. So I keep pushing through the pain, yeah. That's the only way to make a change, yeah. So I fight every day. Welcome back once again, everyone, to the opening day of stage one here in the Riot Games Arena. There is a new rivalry in town, and I'm not sure if you guys are aware of it, but it's called Koi versus Team Liquid. And I'm saying this because Kakuka and yeah. Bone Cold is because they've played against each other so many times already this year, and they got to play each other again, Kakuka, today. It's kind of crazy, right? Because I feel like also the expectations of both of these teams were different, right? Uh, we love the, the, the uh, effect of the payback, especially adapting to a, a new opponent uh, in such a short period of, of time because of how kickoff was. But uh, this one, I think that is way more uh, balanced, way more... Uh, even? Yeah, think? way more even. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Way more even this time around. Oh, yeah, for sure. Is this like the third or fourth time they're going to be playing this against is the, each other? It's 1-1 one, one right now, so this is the third time. Oh, so the maybe third even... time's the charm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Charm for who? I, uh, for this match, I'm just hoping for Liquid to kind of show me the way that liquid plays because i feel like the last bit they were kind of they were kind of flat to be honest like they they it, it wasn't really that impressive i i just really want to see nats popping off on the lurks being just the yumpy's playground i really just want to see them pop off to be honest i think i, I want the uh, the other way around i think that we have met a liquid before right uh but with this apex core also joining in i want to see a new identity but i agree i want to identify where their strengths rely and how they can again, make this team worthy of, of winning, of moving forward, right? Not just, I don't want to see just, you know, Nats going on the Larks and everything working on Yumpy giving us a, a, a 1v3 and this mm. kind of things that, that Yumpy does. I want to see an identity coming in from Liquid. I mean, this is the thing, Koi eliminated Liquid. I don't think mm. anybody had that on their predictions, bingo, however you want to call it. And uh, in terms of Liquid's identity, what is it? What is actually their identity? Yeah, it's it's just complicated because you don't want to be uh, Apex number two, right? You don't want the answer to take, uh, you know, control of, of everything. They find they need to find a way to merge uh, together, but also they need to be innovative enough so we are aware that they're also advancing and moving with the game. They're not just a 2022 liquid. Yeah, yeah, that's very well said. Like we don't want to, you know, like see, you know, like oh, you know, like just the old liquid. We want to see something new from them. Yeah, something new. Maybe we'll see it today. Uh, in terms of new, though, they do have a new IGL, of course, Enzo coming mm. into this. And it feels almost like weird because Shadow was his ex-teammate, Magnum was his ex-teammate. They both went on to <laughs> IGL in VCT after being his ex-teammate. Yeah. Magnum is looking great out there. You know, he qualified uh, for Madrid, looked great today uh, as well. Shadow also, again, looks pretty like a nice addition uh, to Koi. So what is going on with Enzo here? Uh, what do you guys think Enzo is bringing to this liquid? I think it's complicated because kickoff was like a one-time thing. I need to see them more comfortable. That is for me like my ask from Liquid in this time around because on the other side, I see, I see a shadow that was ready in this year, even if he were to stay on Apex, to get this, to take this IGO role and make it his own. And to me, his performance, he is making Koi in some instances look very good. It's be besides, you know, going the the individual performance, sometimes you see Koi Razi, you're like, that is a very good idea. Yeah, I mean, Bone Cold, as an IGL yourself, yeah. what do you make of these two? I mean, at least for Enzo, like, I can see him having, like, very good fundamentals that he brings to the team. I want to see, you know, like, the fundamentals and the basics for the team to be honed up, you know, like, to a very well degree. And then, you know, like, start seeing, you know, like, all the rest of the individuals start playing off of that. What about Shadow? From Shadow? Shadow, I'm actually, like, I'm not so sure because I haven't really been watching him play. But from Shadow and like from the rest of the squad, I know they have like very young Polish players. So I am just very interested to see, you know, like how can Shadow, you know, like perform and how he has been able to hand the responsibility to the rest of the players. In the exactly, because it's not the same, right? Joining Liquid, do you think you'd be able to teach anything to Nats and Yankee? Uh 
Yes. Like, what, are you, like, what, <laughs> but what I mean is, like, what are you going to do with them? Are you going to be like, oh, you're going to swap around the, the way that you play, the way that you understand the game? No, that there is some knowledge you have to. Uh, it's more of adapting as a group effort on the side of Shadow. I do agree. It, it's more of like, yeah, last year was a bit of a fluke. What can we do to make this year better? To think more long term. Uh, and it's him picking up the IGO role for the first time, having to teach people. Um, and, and having to make the project work, of course, it also lays down into like the stuff and how they make everything work. But on the ground basis, this should be easier for Liquid, just looking at it as, mm -hmm. as, as a global thing, than for Koi. And sitting here today, I tell you, I don't think that's that's the way it's going. Yeah, I do wonder though, maybe being Enzo's ex-teammate has a certain degree of an advantage. You totally. know how he calls, you know how he reacts to things. So maybe that's why a Shadow has managed to come out on top at least one time uh, out of the two times they played against each other. Uh, so far, but let's talk about the uh, two former Gambit teammates. Any opportunity, Any opportunity? <laughs> to bring up Gambit, I'm going to do it. Uh, but of course, uh, Shados versus Nats. You know, Nats phone call being this OG lurking Sentinel player, and then Shados kind of growing into that role. What do you make of uh, this head to head? Oh, it's got. It's gonna be nice. I just. I. I really want to see you know like Nats you know like being back because uh, there are so many moments that I remember Nats just dropping like a, like a 21 three on me or something <laughs> similar. But I just. I just really want to see you know like you know like them just clashing heads in server. I mean, on the on the other side, I I do agree. Bunko, I want to see Nats being comfortable. I think that that is something that we did not see this year. Sometimes he was out of uh, in the wrong timings with the lurks. You now there's things that are a bit uncharacteristic for him, right? We need to see that clicking in, and if that doesn't work, he needs to evolve. The same way that, for example, when we're seeing Cena playing right now, right? And he's playing all these different agents, and we want Cena either you play the jet or, or or this has to like, and not everything has to go crazy for Nats. I think that the evolution has to be in the requirement for an evolution. Has has to be there as well. Yes, you lurk, but everybody knows that. But the thing is, uh, to counter this, but when mm. he does do it right, and when the team's give, given the space, given the support, it is so hard to win against that. They just need to find the consistency for it. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, and wh where does that lie, you think? Who, who does that lie? Comfort. To? Comfort Com reps, fundamentals, and, and being uh, being very aware of the rest of your teammates, right? And I think that takes that just takes time. Yeah, 100%. I feel like a lot of the times when like a player is feeling good about the and playing good, it, it really reflects from your teammates because your teammates are the ones you know like allowing you know like to play like this and they react off of you so yeah I want to cope a little bit about this because even if that a game plan doesn't work even if they're struggling maybe uh, for some form of identity they're looking for they go Kiko Kiko is Aww. looking really really good I, I love that you mentioned that I think that Kiko is going to be another one of the star duelists uh, it feels like we've been talking about Casey and heretics for a very very yeah. long time right uh, but it, actually one of the reasons why they were able to win that first encounter I guess against Koi was Kiko dropping how much what, 39 kills yeah and, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, on that first icebox so there's not a lot that you can do against that right I think that he is one of the parts that can be you can look away a little bit because he will give you that kind of consistency he doesn't look like he's a bit uncomfortable but again Nats for example arriving late on the on the looks it just speaks out to a global and bigger macro issue. What about on the side of Koi? Because uh, mm. uh, in comparison to expectations, yeah. Koi, they look better than they did last year. They're improving. I love the fact to, to, to for example, see Starkso. I think that he's very comfortable. I think that we see that we see him play on the fade. I think that they've explored the game in a different uh, way as most of the teams. We, we see the fade, we've seen Sun Harbor. I think that they brought their idea of what they want the game to be for them and what works for them. But again, I want to see it in the long term. Either way, having Starkso feel uncomfortable and you being able to tell on the server, you should I know am so yeah, glad you mentioned Starkso. You oh. know him, Bunko? You there, met him? I, yeah. there, I mean, like, I saw some tweets and I was talking to Starks earlier this year and he seems super, super motivated this year. So I really want to see him, you know, like just bright like a star like he did, you know, like back with our team. I really want to see him, you know, like just laugh, have fun. Hopefully, you know, like give us like, you know, like a, some moves, you know, some like. Moves? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, the moves. We, we spoke to him a little bit about that and I was like, you're going to get the moves out and he didn't seem as keen. So why do you think that is? Oh, there. It's a fu there is a funny backstory where you know like he got kind of told it, <laughs> told off because oh, he was I dancing. Remember. Yeah. In Wait, Masters. by whom? Uh, Who told him off? Oh, it was uh, one one of the owners in a sense. He was uh, he, he because uh, yeah, it, it was you against remember the Thieves. context on how it the was, whole dancing started? Yeah, it, let because, the man dance. No, it was because of we played against Hornet Thieves. He was dancing, you know, like when we were winning, and then we lost. 
And then, you know, like the orders were. They, they, they were concerned that it would like get into his head and he would be like focused. And also like, uh, uh, you know, to keep the right uh, tension on your body, you have to be seated, you know, and not. His coach is Barbar. Barbar is like <laughs> smashing desks, smashing tables, probably smashed a monitor as so well. Maybe we need to tell Barbar that he's the one who has to tell you go dance. Let him dance, let him dance. I feel like that's what we're missing right now on stage there. Like you said, you know, Starks was a player that we knew that always kind of kept the energy up. And we mm. saw what happened with Centaurs when Zelsus was keeping the energy up in that best of five. So, uh, Bunko, do you think maybe that is something that could push them to the next level if they do have that kind of uh, personality to lift them up a little bit? This is something I was even, you know, thinking about in Madrid when I was watching Sentinels play. You see Celsius being like so happy. Like, I didn't think that much of like Celsius, but when you see him, you know, like <laughs> every single round, he's just yelling, screaming at his teammates, yelling at the other team, just being so positive. It was just like, you know, like, I, you know, like if I, if I were to come back, I want Celsius in my team. <laughs> Yeah! Oh, wow. Oh, wow. I, think, I mean, I think I think anyone would want Celsius in their team. Like having him on your side, as you're saying, it's so important to have someone that is always going to have uh, your back on the mental side, especially with how long that final is. I think that Celsius would always be a you know a good addition. He's not EMEA yeah. though, so we don't for care. Now, we don't now. care. We don't care about Celsius. what he's for doing. Now we have, for now we want Stark so. For now we yeah, want Stark, Stark so. Yeah, is it's the OG Zelsus, you know. He was doing it at Champs. He was he winning Champs. It. Literally, he invented it. Uh, but let's have a little check-in here while we are seeing game one already. I want to do uh, a throwback a little bit to Bone Cold or Bone Hot because okay. uh, obviously Giants played, KC played. We got Liquid and Koi coming up as well. Where are we placing these teams? Let's start with the first match. So uh, now we've seen Giant X and we've seen KC. Are they bone cold or bone hot? Hmm. For Casey, I mean, they're still like, they're just looking, you know, like they're just looking very solid. I don't know mm. if there's, you know, like that much to add in there. They're just, they're just good. Uh, for Giants, I would still put them in the same position because I think that today's result was a bit expected. To me, what happened on Breeze, I didn't really like it. I, I think it was a bold pick. It didn't work. Uh, maybe too bold in that sense. Um, who else? Who, I think that Liquid and Goy are both on the same position for me in the in the lukewarm. Yeah, the lukewarm. I mean, you put Giant X quite high up there, uh, Bone Cold. I feel like that's less of a Bone Cold. That's like a bone kind of getting warm. Kind of getting warm. Uh, to be fairly honest, I just forgot where you put it, so... <laughs> it's okay, it's just a little bit lower, but yeah. yeah oh, you're fine. so real for that, you're so real for that. But uh, yeah, for, yeah. Li for Liquid and then both uh, both Koi in the middle, in the medium section. I, I, would, I would put Liquid a little bit more on the cooler side, is that, yeah, on the cooler side, just because I did have, I, I did expect a lot from them from them uh, during kickoff, and I didn't see it. So coming in, I want to give them the chance of like you know coming in hotter and actually be the surprise. Redeeming, you themselves. know, someone has to be the surprise. We had such a big surprise with KZ and Heretics mm. at the beginning of the year. Who's going to be next? What do you think, Bone Cold? It's hard to say. I was just like figuring out the tablet, and we don't have Koi here. I don't know where to put them in that case. We don't have oh, it. Koi doesn't exist on this list. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Okay, well, oh, we'll, we have, we'll get uh, it for next time. So confetti. you can. We have confetti, yeah. Are we confetti and, for Koi? Uh, yeah, and I think we have some fire. Oops, oh, sorry. <laughs> oh no! You <laughs> said giant eggs on oh. fire. <laughs> what have you done, Kukuka? What have you done? It's okay. They're gone. Uh, are you agreeing with Kukuka though that Liquid seems to be a little bit lower than Koi in terms of the expectation here? Yeah. I'd say so. I feel like Liquid still has like a little bit more room to improve, but I feel like you know, like the expectations right now, I'd say yeah, they're they're a bit lower. Hear me out. It, it, team Liquid, right, is the team that won EMEA last year. We only had one split, and they were the winners. They were on top of that Fnatic that terrorized the rest of the world last year, right? Um, we know that uh, uh, three out of five players are different this year, but it's not like they're new players, they're not the rookies. This should be a comfort pick in your pickups, and it's not. For now, uh, as of today, it is not. That is what we want to see, the liquid that, that, that changes that perspective. Honestly, even that sounds like crazy to me that we're talking about uh, Team Liquid having lower expectations than <laughs> Koi, who I think they won one game last year, two games, I can't remember how, how many it was. Uh, but what what could they possibly do, Bone Cold, to change your mind? What is it that you are going to see from Liquor today that's going to make you feel like, oh, damn, they're, they're, they're taking it seriously? I mean, I've, I've always been... 
like I've always had this idea when I see a team play, I want to see them playing like very fluid. And when you have like these simple ideas that you have honed to the perfection, that's what make like it allows you, you know, like then to do, you know, like anything basically you want. It's very easy, you know, like go from very simple and then hey, let's go and do this and then go back, you know, like this a simple place. So depth. Depth, but I just want to see the fundamentals being there. And then I want to see, you know, like them playing off of each other. What about you, Kukuga? I think I'm more on the on the same, but I, I go back to the identity to me, you know? I want to see if I'm going to do it again. If we think of Gambit... <laughs> uh, there is not a day, there's not a day that goes by in my life that I don't think about Gambit, yeah. so yes. Um, so I agree with that, you're so real for that. But yeah. um, you can see exactly how they play. You can see how the protocols are like so set, that how everything's like based on the defense and how the rotations are and how uh, they they read as well. It's very similar to what we're seeing now in KC. You have this uh, these youngsters, right? Uh, and you teach them the most fundamentals in depth. They can hit the shots. They will always hit the shots. They just showed it uh, against uh, Giant X. But for Team Liquid, as of today, you will hear the names, you will see them on the screen, and then you will look at the game and you'll be like, what in the hell is going on here? But you don't know what they're playing to, you know? Also, they've taken away your uh, bone oh. hot or bone cold. They've taken it off of Kinda you. Kind of rude. <laughs> oh, okay. uh, I'm looking at Twitch chat as well in just a moment on who you guys are voting for here, whether you think Koi are going to take this game or Liquid are going to take this game. And as what I'm looking at right now, it is overwhelmingly Team Liquid. Is this your doing, Sliggy? Are you, uh, are you, are you rigging the votes? We have the some votes? slugs. We have yeah. some slugs, The definitely. slug club are, are, are in full force here. Uh, I think for me, honestly, I just want to see result. I think once the result comes in, uh, you 2-0 you Koi or 2 one koi you get a bit of confidence and you can just snowball from there because these are some some of these names on liquid they're veterans they're not kind of the, the rookies we've never seen before they've been to global events they probably yeah. had an even tougher challenge uh, than this before so that's a winner yeah i just want to see them get it doesn't matter how they win to just get a win under their belt and see bone cold uh, how they can use that to propel themselves forward yeah they have proven players on both teams i i'm just hoping you know like both of them have gotten you know like their things set and ready for this split I think that for me, I don't want... Um, it's not that much about who wins. I want to see some dominance and I want to see some growth from what we saw in kickoff. As I said, uh, the best teams in the world came here uh, to EMEA and they have been, they've been given the chance to crack against them, to develop new things, also to watch Madrid and, say, and see how things play out, not only uh, regionally, but also internationally. Yeah, well, it is enough from us here. This is the third time we're going to see Team Liquid take Koi, so let's bring out the teams. They missed out on Masters Madrid, but they have had time to fix everything that went wrong. They have had time to come out and give us a better showing. Koi have already improved from what we've seen last year. The new players are settling in well, but the question is, how high is that ceiling? Can they repeat what happened and take down Team Liquid once again? And of course, on the other side, this is a roster you guys know well and you love players that we've seen time and time again succeed on this stage again not the result they would have wanted back at kickoff but this is about redemption this is about them coming out and seeing if they can return to that former form of glory we're gonna have the coaches on stage as well Emil and Barba of course guys two of the most experienced coaches we yep. have ever had in this region as well both under a lot of pressure and we see a lot of smiles we see them having fun definitely looking forward to show what they have prepped for this stage. Remember, this is only the beginning. There was no elimination here. You have to play a lot of matches. It's good to see that everybody's coming in, as I said, with a smile, with, with good vibes. We have Steel in the bluff, so he knows how important the vibes are. Yeah, we got Starkso on stage as well. Bone Call, it's been a while. I've, I've, I was actually just smiling, seeing uh, Patricia there happy, so I, I can't wait for this. The wait for the start, uh, game to start. Well, let's see which maps we're going to be going to. The last two times they played against each other, Icebox, Sunset split, Icebox, Bind split. We're going to get split again. Uh, are we going to get Icebox again? Uh, as well, it seems like both of them are pretty comfortable uh, leaning Ooh. towards those two picks. Wow, Ascent, oh, sorry, Team Liquid is actually going to be uh, picking oh, Ascent as a map 
Is that a map, dude? Uh, yeah, but this uh, is old liquid. They love. They used to love this map. Yeah, exactly. But then, what kind of liquid is the the one that we're going to get? Are we going to see that new identity? Is it going to be a repetition of what we've seen in the past? And they've managed to put these three players to fill in just those slots. Uh, looking into the first one, looking into that split. Even though Koi got those uh, one, two, three, wins, three, three, everything was very close. There was a lot of clutches. It was just a messy, messy map. Yeah, it's going to be nice now seeing, you know, like, especially like split, as, split and ascent. I really like these maps because I feel like they're going to be showing us, you know, like it's very good for the fundamentals of the team. So it's going to be interesting to see how the teams actually, you know, like start. I mean, you heard it from Magnum. Uh, they felt like they had to change things because they already shown everything. They had it. To, they had to evolve to the next level, and that's coming from the best team in EMEA. So as we take a look at this agent select, I wonder if these two teams have adopted that uh, thinking or not. Yeah, exactly. And moving, as you said, onto that agent select team Liquid. I don't see any no, changes. No, changes. no, no changes. Uh, I, I want to bring back the, the Starks are playing on the fade. I think it gives you a different edge, especially when you're playing against a double controller. I really, really like it. Going back into the IGL top, Enzo with that sky, we know how the nerf has affected the agent. He needs to be very mindful of how he's going to be gathering that information. Yeah, I feel like on Liquid side, you know, like the sky will come in very, very clutch, you know, like on these situations because you don't really have nothing, nothing more than the Cypher and the Viper taking space. But other than that, you have to rely on the sky. So Enzo will be in very big position here, you know, like to see how the split will start. Yeah, of course, the third time they're going to face each other on this map as well. Uh, they're going to show some depth, I feel like. Oh, yeah, exactly. And we need to see some comfort. We see that the compositions are not very crazy. I don't think that split is a map that opens uh, that wide of uh, possibilities. But um, especially like having the fade and the breach on the side of Koi, it gives them so much edge for uh, for the attacking side, which they're going to be starting on. Uh, adding that to Grabinho on the Omen, the executes can be so explosive that it's going to rely a lot on Tunaps and Yampi. Oh, I can't wait to see. And I can't wait to introduce you guys to your casters for this match, uh, freshly from Madrid and also from NA. It is Pansy and Steel. Thank you so much, Sue and the desk. Yeah, I do have the distinct pleasure of uh, being joined by Steel. How you doing, bud? I'm doing great, thank you. Yeah? You happy to be here? I'm so happy to be here. Thank you for having me again. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, we had to bring you back. You know, NA, too much talent. So we had to steal you over. So um, let's, let's kind of talk about what's in front of us, right? We have a, a, a bit of a mid-table matchup, uh, if I'm being kind, I guess, considering those last results. They weren't pretty for either side. But let's start at the top. Matt Vito, anything standing out to you there? Because we've seen this matchup, obviously, in kickoff. So where does that now land us here? Yeah, when we saw them at kickoff, we saw them a couple times. And what I saw from Liquid a lot was them trying to really just dig into their individual skill. Okay. And we saw that on Icebox a lot. We saw a lot of lurking happening. So when they, I see them picking Ascent, I'm thinking, OK, they're picking this, not because they want to do these five-man hits, but maybe they've been working on that in the last okay. month. Hopefully. But it's a map where they can really control the middle area, especially on the attack side, and try to get all these lurk timings off with Nats, with Yumpy, and that's what I'm looking at primarily That's, hoping here. For, that's right? what I'm hoping for, and I'm hoping that we see something more than what we saw at the kickoff from these teams. And I think that kind of then leads into my next kind of question for you, really, is with the little bit of downtime they've had now, where do you adjust? Because both these teams can't be happy with their results, if I'm honest. It wasn't probably where they wanted to be. Where do you start? What do you look at here? What are your tangibles to try and work forward? Yeah, I think definitely for Liquid, it's their strengths are their individual skill, it's their aggression and their confidence. But it's like a double-edged sword because at the same token, they overheat all the yes. time yes. and they're griefing these rounds. So they need to work on their coordination and their overall game plan. But we're going to start it off right here on Split. Yeah, it's, I mean, it, it is all up in the air, right? It's just like, what do we see from these two? How much has been I've adjusted? It's a real touching of base between you. both of them. Because as I said, I think there were some high hopes for these squads and we saw glimmers of it, but it certainly didn't amount to the results they would have been after. So they've had a little bit of downtime during Madrid, got to sit back at home and watch, you know, a player's nightmare. And now we have to see what they've got here for us. Nat's already going to be checked on. The Paranoia going to slow the roll and give them a way out. But looks like Koya pretty hell-bent on trying to get towards having control in this 3-2 split. I like how Team Liquid abandoned that B Heaven setup. They didn't have the numbers to deal with it, and they re-aggress towards the B main area here. As the map goes quiet, Koya actually just pumped a little bit, saw what was going on, didn't break the Cypher cam yet, though. 
Shadow was surely minimap moment there because he was absolutely befuddled. And this late stage aggression, as you noted, that little B main kind of re-aggress, that space taking, that reaction to losing heaven control opens up so much of an avenue. And look at the position that Koi have to work with. They need to fight back for some space, be it CT, be it main. They need a little something. They don't have heaven, so they've opted for CT. Looking like this is the challenge they're after, but it's already being considered. You can see the positioning coming out from Yampi. Perfect consideration and a great bit of work from Yampi there. This is stunning stock, so a great player himself, but way too many numbers. Josh, that was a beautiful round from TL. That was actually a beautiful round. There's actually so many things that they did well there, and this is kind of like one of the things that, at least Koi, when they reflect on whatever happens this game, this is like a round that they want to look at for their own defense sides, because Team Liquid did everything well there. They had the setup on B Heaven. They realized, hey, we're getting pressured here hard. What happens? They push through A main. Kiku goes all the way through sewers, you know, helping out the team with a little bit of map control and info. <laughs> and then what happens was the B Heaven players, they disengage from B Heaven, they go back into sight, and then they regress on B main. As soon as they make contact at sewers, they're pushing through B main and taking that contact as well. So really good proactivity there. Then once they get the man advantage, they kind of slow down. They wait. They wait for Koi to make the next mistake. And they do. Right there. All right, obviously Star Koi gonna have to really get their heads in the game here. It looks like Liquid have turned up to play a really good look in the first round, and being rewarded for that behavior will set you in motion. Early flash will connect. Eyes are down. So, not really gonna know how many, but certainly bodies are on this side of the map. And wait and see if there is that proactive approach. Obviously, a fine margin. Don't wanna go too overboard, but that's a lot of information for Enzo there. Yeah, it's great info, and Koi can't really do anything too aggressively here, but I think they don't. That's not their plan right now. Their plan right now is to kind of like work the econ a little bit, maybe get an opening pick here, and then see what they can go from there. They're not really heavily invested in this. They got three classics. They're, they're just biding their time and seeing how many mistakes Liquid can make. And as we pointed out, they have a tendency to overheat. They certainly do. Let's see if that's been worked on. Is that composure now key along Team Liquid? MP maintaining control, but a quick slip through the vents. This then kind of pours in. Kiko, see what he can do here. Should be able to hold off quite well. Yep, does do good damage and dips away. Going to make them work for their dinner. And there's no easy kills coming in here for Koi. 30 seconds. Yeah, and what's left. happening, though, is that we're seeing Liquid right now. They have to back up, and they're giving so much space and respect. They have to give this space and respect. But what that means is over on A side, it's just Nats there between them and the, the site. If they're able to get into Nats, kill him, and get the spike planted, that's a really good eco round. 10 seconds. Can they cause any sort of chaos? Maybe a plant? Plant is going to go in, one and one kill to boot. That's about it. I mean, it's not ideal. Nats handled the pressure well. Diffuse going to come in. I mean, but as I said, for Koi, they weren't expecting wonders. They weren't expecting miracles. It was more just get a grip of the map, see what they can work out, see what they can pressure, and if they could do some economic damage towards Team Liquid. Yeah, we're forcing out a couple of repurchases of armor. We took out Nats. We got the spike plant. We got the orb from A main as well. So all things considered, things are going decently well for an eco round. You can't really ask for too much there. And right now, they're just building towards their economy and their ultimate economy. And this is going to be one of the bigger rounds of the half because we're getting really close to some ultimates, namely the Fades ulti. And if Koi gets that early into the half and are able to swing some rounds because of it, I think that's going to be really scary for Liquid here because Split, you need as many defense rounds as possible. Absolutely. And again, I'm, I'm kind of eyes on Liquid here as well, just to see if they have something in mind on this kind of you know, bonus round that they're left on. A little bit of a repurchase here and there, but Nats didn't particularly invest heavily. So again, trying to keep that money building in the best way possible. I'm really liking what Liquid did here at the start. They put the pressure over towards B main early. There. They forced Koi away, and now they're regressed into a mid fight. There are all four people, there are four people here playing retake A, going into this mid aggression here. A little bit ill-timed. A little, little off-kilter. Camo, lucky to be alive, but still standing. This kind of plays in Nats. This is a lot on his shoulders again. He, he, he only has a ghost, so this isn't one of the rounds you're Take expecting to pop off, but can he buy a couple of seconds? Cage trigger. Can Koi keep this clean? All rifles, you want to see those carried forward. Already sight, going to be cleared, so they know that they can they ferry across the spike. That should be going down any second. Looks like that's the case. Any sort of naughtiness from Liquid is what we're looking for now. Not a great deal to play with. Very tricky to pressure this back in. Still a flash in the dog on Enzo. A little bit of kit, not a great deal. There. 
Okay, I like here. what Liquid's doing. Yeah. They're they're not rushing into anything. They're clearing everything. They clear the vents. They're looking for any lurkers. They're going to clear the ramp together. They know that this round might very well be lost. What they're doing is they're seeing if Koi makes any mistakes. They're going to take their time. If they have an opportunity, they're going to go for it. But at the worst case, it's a bonus round. They don't care. They're just going to... If they make all of Koi die to the spike here, that's a win. Yeah, you're absolutely right. You can already see them trying to escape through CT. Enzo going to grab another. That's Grino down. And this is actually getting a little bit costly. And again, these are rifles they were losing. Luckily, Shados is a safe pair of hands, but that's just two standing. Make it just one. He was right there. He, he was right there. He, he could have gone away, but he ran back into it. Ah, that's that's a costly first buy for Moby Star Koi. That's that's gonna sting a little bit. They can they can afford it again, but they lose that nice buffer they could have built. Yeah, I mean, getting the rounds good. Getting a buffer is nicer. We're about to start seeing ultis unlock, especially if we start seeing them going for either of the orbs. So we might see like an A main or a B main control at the start of the round, get that orb. They'll get that ulti online with a kill or with a spike plant. So that's going to be something that I'm looking forward to here to see how they kind of do this push pull. And they're starting split. They're getting the Viper set up on A, that aggressive lurk. They're going to find out where Nats has been playing. But what I like about Liquid is they've done a different setup every round. And they haven't been doing something like super aggressive every round. They've been, they've been changing it up enough, though, that they can kind of have this right first stage, this first phase of what's going to happen. Then when Koi does something, OK, we're going to do this other thing. So right now, we're seeing this push into B main. They're going to have all the info here that, hey, Nothing's going on over here. Here's the timing on the Omen. They're going to be posted up. And yeah. by the time that Garbino peeks out again. But how much information do they get from that? Again, it is a play for control. They do get to kind of put the banner towards B main, make them work if they want to try and retake that space. But you can already see the lean. They're starting to go over towards events. This has been a pressure point. This is not subtle. And two players will be in response. Mystic being one, that's the other. I already see the drift coming through from Yampi as well, considering is it times now put a lot more stock into this, and it looks like that may be the case. Again, caution being aired by Koi. Nats play. Oh my god. What just happened? Camo's gonna find two, and that is a fumble and a half. And it's rare to see that from Nats. Really unexpected. Enzo is almost played out of this round. It's gonna require a 1v3. Incredibly difficult. Plant being put down now. Grabino just lost somewhere in the map, basically. He can't pin these players down. It's time to look for a save here. What the hell just happened? You know, this is a great example of a round where you do so many things right, and it still doesn't work out. You still lose the round. So what did we see that was right from Team Liquid? Well, they got the aggression onto B main. They took it on the timing. Once Koi started putting pressure on mid, they got the info on the Omen. They had a really good setup towards A ramp, where basically all this aggression towards B and B heaven mm. is going to funnel all of the movie stars uh, Koi players through the vents into A heaven, and that's where Cypher and Omen are playing together. They're not playing one site, one heaven. They're not you know, split up or anything like that. They're not trying to hold the site even. They're just trying to lock down one specific area, and that's a heaven. Yeah. And if Nats gets that kill, it's like we're, we're having a completely different conversation. So I think the setup in itself was good, and I, I think we're seeing a better revamped liquid right now. It does now. look like it, right? Yeah. But it's, it, it almost stings a little because you're still staring at a 2-2 scoreline. Yeah. Because this, this one moment, he, I, I don't know if he thought he had he, the no, kill. No, he definitely one, thought he had like, the kill. <laughs> again, a. but it's so rare to see that from Nats as well, right? Like, he's normally your kind of, like, rock-solid player, makes few mistakes, and seeing that happen early is a little unfortunate. Hopefully they don't lose faith in the idea because the concept is good. It was just, I said, that one mistake can cost you here. And Koi are going to love that. That's a chance to rebuild. Get the buffer back. They are now so close to some of those key ultimates coming online as well. That's massive for them. Another new setup here for the defense side of Team wow. Liquid. But with just the one Phantom, they're, they're really trying to leverage that right now. So they're playing a 2-1-2 setup here. And as soon as they get info on the extremities, they're instantly moving to middle. They know that that next action is going to be at middle, and they want to be there, ready to fight with the Flash, with the Phantom, with maybe even popping the Raze Rocket here. Good bait out from Koi, though. Yeah, Koi managing to evade past the paranoia being posted. Enzo did take a swing, so they should be able to start identifying where that one rifle is. Not fully aware Koi of the rest, obviously, you see what they've gone for, but I mean, the money tells you quite a lot. At this point, they're already starting to peel yeah. away. Koi having to respect this. They're, again, they did lose B main control early. That adjusted setup could be quite telling here. Don't know about the timing Camera on this one. Out. Camera does get removed, which does give Nats at least an idea, but they've bought a lot of time. They're down to about 40 seconds now for Koi. Looking for that re-hit. They still have a lot of utility to play with. And now middle control.
This is a bit tough. They took a read. They did a gamble stack on A. And that's a good call. Like, making a call, just picking 50-50, you might catch them. They might go to into you. And that's exactly what you want. But the rifle's not with them right now. The rifle was trying to, trying to solo the B site. So here comes the A hit. Do they get any benefits? Camo already going to clear Mystic. There are still two players here. Another spotted and another taken down. The gamble stack not really working out. As they did lose Enzo in the meantime. So that's a rifle gone and cleared cleanly. Koi. Navigating this space very well. Yeah, and I think hats off to Koi on that round for having the understanding of the awareness that they need to do a pump set at middle. They didn't go straight into a trap. They didn't go and just say like, okay, the first time we use an ability, we're going up here. They did a breach flash into vents. They threw up a fade eye. They used a, a prowler even, and they didn't go with that. They were just waiting to see what the reaction was because Team Liquid, they don't have, if they're on Ego, they don't have a lot nice. of abilities, right? They don't have the, yep. the money for the abilities. Keeps. So they basically, Sucks, once they see anything happen, they have to, they have to act on that. So they get triggered, and there's nothing. Interesting coach cam there. Not sure what that's about. TP toyed with, and stocks are rewarded out of nowhere. That's devastating. Why peek that early into your Viper ulti? Once you pop that, you just wait behind the wall, have someone protect you to make sure that it gets up all the way, and you just have to dodge the first 30 bullets of the spam. You know that's going to come. Every Viper player knows this. So a little bit of an overheat moment there by Yampi giving that up, but another reaction from Team Liquid. They lose a player, they lose mid, they're going to take something else. They're going to take B main here, and now they don't even Boy care. Go up B heaven if you want, Koi. Go up, because you're going to get to the site. Now we're going to pinch you on a, you know, three-prong attack on the retake. I'm going to leave the operator on the other side, hoping that's enough. Again, we know that the route that Koi likes to take is through that vent, slicing our middle. Garino already noting the players over towards B main. There's no subtlety towards this. But if anything, it just encourages Koi to head this way, putting a lot of pressure. Kiko's hands, how much he's going to be able to achieve here. Shados' timing could be devastating. Stunning shot on the first. Nats does get to keep his life, but still. Oh, the ult as well on top. Nats survive, left. already being pinched here. Player left, right, and center. He goes down again. This is the pressure, though. Mystic still amongst them. In a lot of danger here. Has to swing, and Koi so heads up in their clear. And that's going to be another save here. There's no chance they're going to bring that operator in for this one. And I've got to give credit again. Koi looking like they're very aware of what Liquid wants to do. They've identified that very early on now. Yeah, they look like they have a lot of layers in their attack, but I, I think that's nothing new from them. Mm. Like, we saw this all, all throughout kickoff, that they had really good initial game plans, yeah. and they really knew how to play into their agent pool. They knew their win conditions. They knew how to play the maps to a certain degree. But where they falter is kind of in the mid rounds if they lose a player early and then also going into the second half on defense. So I don't want to like hold my breath right now and be like, oh my God, is this like a new revamp yeah, team yeah. or not? Because like this is what we come to expect of them on their attacks. But I do like the layers that they have to their attack. They're taking the map in stages. They're doing some misdirection, some pumps. Um, so they're pumping towards A, but then they're ending towards B. They're keeping a lot of map control and they understand now that Liquid's trying to be aggressive and get in their faces. And right here we saw them punish it with this nice regroup. What I didn't like what I saw from Liquid mm. there is that Mystic came all the way from A all the way to B, okay. but he just kind of like started standing around, like walking around with no real purpose or direction there. I think if he was able to get closer to B main earlier, maybe he could have used like, uh, his Omen Flash to get into market to help keep Nats, Nats alive yeah. there. Yep. Yeah. Um, They're back. They're back again. But I'm, I'm looking at the alts as well now. This is going to start adding another layer to this that Koi gets to depend on, right? They've got some very key ultimates. Yampi last round invested his, and it really didn't go to the, you know, the way he would have wanted that. But again, we're looking at the Virtus Bulldogs. Still a couple of rifles coming out. They've got enough to fashion a buy here. Not missing too much kit and looking to play, maybe playing Kiko on this. Don't block the dog. Gonna have the info and has the angle. That's big. Nice pick there at the start. Shadow going down might make this a little trickier to take those sights. Yeah, and I really don't like actually how Koi's been holding onto all these alts for so long. I feel like they've had them for a few rounds now, and now they've just stacked up three, and now they don't even get to use one of them. So not a great usage of the ultimates, and 
credit to Team Liquid. That was a really good uh, play. The Sky getting wide, then popping the boom bot, and then trying to bait out with the dog, uh, the, the peaks into the opera. And that happened. They got their man advantage. They backed off of the setup. But now here comes the B site hit. Yeah, Camo going to take down Enzo. This now has to depend on the likes of Kiko to do some damage here. But already you can see the threat that he's under. And Camo's going to take down Kiko. This is now a problem. Player to the good, site somewhat under control. Alt's now being layered into this. This is going to take a great deal of work for Liquid to try and dismantle. That's through heaven. I don't see where they find this access point. They don't have the B main control. They don't have a lurk in this one. It's going to need an individual to try and stand up to task. Yes, Camo a little low, but that's about it. That's starting to show position here, trying to clear. Oof, close, but no cigar on this. Looks like the they're about to save, maybe? I mean, they've got to call it soon, right? Yeah, it, yeah they're out. That's it. Mystic. Going for a repeak on that. A little dangerous and a little risky I with the tried. operator. Prize possession at this point. But again, another save for Liquid here. They just haven't been able to deal with that frontline coy. It's starting to really get into the swing of things. Yeah, I mean, it looks so good for Team Liquid at the start of the round there, too. They got that opening pick. I was, you know, in the middle of saying, like, oh, look, the way they did yep. this with the sky baiting for the opera, they gave the pick, they got out, they were able to reset. Everything looked so good to them. And then here them. comes the fade ulti into the site, the full hit from Koi. Oh, and what happens? Fine. Team Liquid lose two right there on the entry, and they don't even get another kill. So it was like, what are we doing? Like, we have the man advantage. We know, like, all these ultis are coming. Why are we still kind of in the site in this type of situation where we could get punished for this? Okay. <laughs> okay. Do you not love the Barbar cam? I, I, pardon me? Do you not like Barbar's cam? No, I know. I love the camera, but I don't. Okay. I'm not sure about the uh, the noises that were coming out of the okay, well, mouth. Well, well, I, hey, it's working. Five to two. All right, that's that's how you beat Liquid. Yeah, well, I mean, that's that's part of <laughs> that's part of how you beat Liquid. It's not it's nothing new here. It's it's. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. This, this is just a kind of look back almost on that last season. A lot of the key things still looking good for Koi. Yes. Now, unfortunately, in my mind, Team Liquid did look good initially. They came in with some nice ideas, a nice, you know, a couple of competent ways to make it work. There were some unfortunate rounds, to be fair. But again, there were also player mistakes that opened up that opportunity. Nats right. going down at ramp, right? Repeat that round, he may get that kill every single time afterwards. But it is what it is. It's how it works. Yampi getting caught in the ult as well in middle. Some of these key yes. rounds slipping away has now pumped the brakes. Liquid gonna call the timeout. I don't know what the adjustment is though. What do you say in this instance? If I'm the coach there or the IGL, I'm probably saying like, guys, we have like the right idea. It's our execution of the ideas that are ha that are being a problem right now. So, you know, we got the opening pick on uh, on this other round and then we give it up afterwards because we're getting site exact on and we're trying to hold the site. We don't need to hold the site. Let's do, like stick to the game plan. Yampi, yeah. why are we peeking out with our ulti there when we know they're gonna spam as soon as we pop the ulti? Just wait a few seconds. Yeah. Like all of the ideas, everything is going well, just stick to the plan and we'll be okay. Well, let's see if that resides. And it looks like, yeah, a quick evacuation of the site. If they are feeling these full execs are coming, and I mean, you can already look That's at the site itself. There's so much pressure here. Camo could be clearing all the way up towards heaven. Seeker's gonna be coming through. This should force Camo away. Spike gonna give away the game, but it does eventually fall back. It should be the springboard towards the site. Koi has the breach ulti, though, for this post plan. And that's going to be really scary for Liquid. They know that as soon as they start trying to do something, it's going to come out. They can't all get caught by it. Looking at where Shadow's placing, it looks towards heaven. First bit of contact comes in, but Koi clearing house, still leaving a couple of players here to capitalize on the ult. By the time, yes, Mystic wins out, but they're already down to two. One being the operator looks like another round the Liquid are going to have to fall away from. Koi, these site takes are great. To be fair, they're great. They're, they're looking well-rounded, but there's nothing beyond expectation. They are playing a good game, but Liquid need to get a grip on this now because the game's about to start falling away. Nice shot, but it doesn't really matter. Rifle gone. And at this point, there's financial reasons to chase. Yikes. That's not good. That's not good at all. And. You know, just looking at Team Liquid here, it, it's slipping away from them a yes. little bit. Like, round by round, it's slipping. And I I have to go back to the point that it's not too, like, far gone. But what we see from Koi was pretty brilliant, actually. We saw a pace change. Usually, they've been kind of, like, slowly working towards yeah. an extremity, maybe setting up the Viper, Shados, to cross a ramp, maybe the Fade Prowler to help them set guys. them up. Let's and as go. soon as they do that, they go into middle. But they don't do anything right away with middle. They usually go back and... and it, Reclear the extremity first. Yep. So Liquid's just taking a gamble that they're not going to do anything quick. And then what Koi does is they just walk up B main. They run into the site for free because Team Liquid's playing the retake. They're not expecting that. Yeah, this 
This is going to be now an uphill struggle. Of course, Liquid having to respect the financial position they're in, opting for just the sheriffs and some... Right there. I mean, oh, I say some sheriffs. I think it's just one at this point, and, and that's about it. So, Liquid need to figure this out fast, otherwise Koi going to just start walking away with this game. Credit to Koi for playing well, but as I said, those opportunities slipping between the fingertips here for Liquid. I wonder, with that info that there's a player in vent, are they going to pump again like they did in the previous round and just throw a flash, throw throw anything to find out, there. hey, are st Team Liquid still here? If they are, maybe we see the Sky Flash and the Raisin Egg coming out right away, and then we could just like run to the other site. And right now, we saw that disengage from Koi. They kind of gave up middle. They let Team Liquid take a peek, see nothing. Now Team Liquid's moving to the next spot. Honestly, so many good things from Koi right now. Yeah, this is this is actually very impressive to witness. Feeling the pace of the game perfectly. Kind of got Liquid wrapped around their little finger. And they're going to hear this. That is audible. They're going to note the rotation towards that A left. site. They've, they've made a misread. I mean, if you're Liquid, you do have to take a gamble. There yeah, is part right of that. There. But again, you got to give credit here to Koi. This wasn't just a, a random bit of luck. They're double pump in middle. That kind of, as you said, that quiet disengage, falling away, letting them re-clear, seeing nothing, and then going for the gamble stack on A. Five and to be fair, in one of the previous rounds, Koi did go for that A here as well. So it, it may be an educated guess, but credit to Koi in this for reading it and really playing this to the best of their capability. And really, at this point, what, what are you meant to do? It's like that martial arts stuff where you kind of like use your opponent's momentum against them, so you like <laughs> flip them on their backs, whatever. That's what Koi is doing to Liquid right now. They yeah. they understand how Liquid's playing their defense right now with all the proactivity and kind of like re-clearing areas and pushing for info. And right now, what they're doing is, hey, you're gonna do this. I understand that, so I'm gonna let you clear it. Think that yep. it's clear. You're gonna over rotate, over react to the other site, and then we're gonna be able to like walk into a free site. Yeah. And even if this gets messy again, keep in mind the finances behind Koi are very robust. Yes, Liquid will take it, but remaining. it's not really yeah, going to matter in this point. Koi, comfortable. Seven rounds to the name after what looked like a great start from Liquid. A lot of key things we were taking. We were going, okay, this is good. Late round re-clearing aggression, taking map control. All of the stuff you tick the box for. And then we go to round three. Yeah. And it's, it's not recovered since. I don't really know what Liquid can do at this point. It comes down to the players now, as you said kind of executing the plan, keeping that in mind. This is a huge chance for them. They have, uh, I mean, one ults there, and it's not particularly fantastic. Mystic, the only one with it online at this point. Same to be said on the other side, but still, nothing key to change the outcome. It doesn't matter, because last time they had ultis, Yampi instantly died after popping true, his ult true. chain, and Kiko popped his Rage <laughs> Rocket and just used it as a zoning ulti until he got grenaded down at the sidewalk. So it doesn't really matter that much. Sorry, I'm hearing I'm your depression boy. starting. <laughs> but oh I mean, we, we need to see better ulti economy from, yeah. from I would say, both teams. I saw more value from Koi, especially with that fade ulti into mm. B site on that one round, uh, the Rage Rocket entry as well. I think there's been good moments there, but Team Liquid's not had good value out of their ults. Okay. Nats last time didn't have a great start into this. Going to need him to do a little better here. Normally noted for it. Enzo already falling. Isolates. It leaves Nats on Island. Does have support from CT and a great shot. Going to alleviate some of that pressure coming through, but now Nats goes re-exploring. This time he's got it. Clears out camo and now controls the space. Spike now left in a bit of a predicament as well. But again, look at this positioning from Koi. They're in CT. This could be a re-clear. It's, it's almost a switch of sides at this point. Maybe, you know, no paranoia to play. We're maybe waiting on the smoke to come back around here and just pausing for a second. TP. Yeah, I think it was going to grab the uh, spike with that. I don't think that was a good enough trade. Now down to a 2v2. They've got to know that Nats was still around by sight. That's not a surprise. I don't know if they've had contact on Yampi yet. Probably. But what can Shadow and Shados do? Nats goes walking, gets a timing just right. Spike does go back to hand, but with 15 seconds, it's limited options here for Shadow and Yampi. Was catching the cross and he catches the player. Liquid levying the score a little bit here, bringing back to touch. That was a nice sight hold from them. Yeah, that was actually pretty cool. I, I thought the push by Nats there was super sketchy. I was actually getting a little bit nervous. It almost looked for a second like he flicked off that kill and it's like, oh, I have this. And then, oh, wait, no, it was like the, the I was big, worried for the it to clear, again. right? Yeah, yeah. But I, I think that push into screens there by Liquid, it was actually smart. And the reason why is because they identified that Omen had his ulti up. So what was going to happen if they just sat around A site is Koi could have gone to B, had the Omen do his ultimate, pick up the spike, and then plant on B yep. for a free site. So Liquid's like, oh, we can't let this happen. So we're going to like get out of the site. We're going to take some space. We're going to try to fight them. We know they're in spawn. Let's go take this fight, because if we don't, we've lost. Maybe that's enough to bring a little fire back to Liquid here. Enzo, looking to potentially play in Kiko again. 
Saw that worked quite well on the B site before. Just opting for the angle for now. Not going to explore too far, but he's got plenty of targets. Yeah, he knows that the Viper usually starts here, and the Viper usually gets set up. But he doesn't bite too much. Not this time. Camo, got to be careful. Down to 30. Speaking of ults, there we go. That's not bad, Spike but Grabina already okay. there. Takes down Kiko and opens up an opportunity until Yampi shuts it. Three back to back, bringing it into a favorable situation for Liquid. Heroics from him. And it's all Grabino. And a 1v2. He's got time. But he's got a lot of targets to clear. Two of them towards heaven. It's worked for Mystic. But credit that round to Yambi. I mean, he found three there to turn that back around. Yeah, that's uh, an angle that you love to have the Phantom on. But when we were sitting there sit looking at the 2-6 to six score line, I was thinking to myself, Liquid need to get at least four rounds here to be comfortable going into the second half. They have four with the potential to get five right now. So without trying to jinx anything, you know, we might, have a, we might have a game on our hands here, but we're so close to so many different ultis here. We're, we're getting like two off of the Fade ulti, we're getting uh, one off the Rocket for Camo, and then on the, on the flip side of it, we're a couple off of, um, well, we're one off Yumpy's ult. See if he can get any value with that this time. So cursed. Kiko, still going to get away without revealing the Operator, but I mean, it's still relatively telling. Again, trying to patrol towards middle, keep some of this control. I know. Koi have been identifying this as a place that they like to pressure. This has been a pressure point. You can see the Shadow teeing up the utility. Prowler handled. Do they commit to this? You've got the extremities being held still on either side of the map. So looking like they do want to put pressure towards mid. This should be... Drop it. Kiko's moment. And a missed shot. Camo gonna find it, and that's a problem now. Mid looking far more vulnerable. There. Plenty more options. Had to use a little bit of utility to clear through, but they're still going to be happy enough. And this is a problem. Yampi! Oh. No way! Mystic went down and Yampi survived. And maybe the survivor's guilt was enough. Eventually, Shadow's going to find him, but it's Nats and Enzo with a late look through middle and Shados. All too aware of that. Leaving Nats, who's normally on that A site, behind the curve. You don't need to have that much awareness to uh, oh, deal God with someone dude. shooting like that, though. Cruelty, Josh. 30 seconds left. Again, sights there's Nats can quietly come over here, but he's, he's, he's found. It was a bit of a feeble attempt at the end there. I mean, it, it felt like it was all based around that operator finding value. As soon as it doesn't, it crumbled. Yeah, I think they had a lot of good things going there. Getting yep. the, just mixing up the difference between going with the Sky's info, with the Flash, with the Dog, with the, the Peep, and then sometimes the Sky's on the opposite side of where the Opera is, so that you don't know if, is the Sky setting up the Op yep. in, by getting direct info or indirect info? Oh, the Sky sees people outside A, nice, okay, guys, you can get the deep line at B. Okay, you're going to move up with the Dog and peek behind it. So I think that Liquid had some pretty good ideas there, but it just fell short on too many different occasions. Missed Op shot on that last round, for example. A couple, uh, you know, a few rounds before yeah. that, they, they got executed on at the B site and they weren't able to get off the site. They did so many things well, but it's always the coordination, the execution where they fall short. And now this is the telling point. This is the test. Is four enough? Again, you've got to almost argue the pistol is paramount to their success too. It'd be so hard to be so uphill and suck. So trying to be a little audacious at the beginning. Swings out and finds the pointy end of the stick. And again, Koi just being aggressive in this. I mean, they do have rounds to play with and they have cleared one. But again, you look on the other side of the map, the spike should be going down. We are in a 3v3 here. Enzo's position. Feast or Famine, does he get what he wants from this? Do they even clear it? They're considering it, they absolutely do, but Enzo succeeds. Big work from Enzo there. And that's gonna give Team Liquid a chance in this. And I think one thing that we're gonna see from this map is also how Liquid's gonna probably go into their scent. Split and Ascent can play a very similar style okay. in some weird, obscure way on their attack side, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah, so yeah. we're gonna see that though. We're we, we saw heavy emphasis towards A, mm -hmm. and then what that actually does is it sets up the two-man B walk with the spike, and then the, you know, the, the players are able to kind of like trickle around and be like, there's like three or four different lurkers every round for this team. So I think that's what we're going to see them kind of emphasize a lot on this map and ascend on their attacks. And Koi not really slowing down on the aggression, putting high priority towards B main control. Going to get the ult orb, but going to lose out on one on the way. Again, they are working with classics, and that's about it. So... Not really looking for too much here. Already probably got what they wanted, at least with the old orb. Can they do some more damage, though? Potentially force a little bit more of a repurchase for Liquid. Plenty of players on the right side for now, at least, but I wonder if Liquid continue on this pathing. 
I like how Liquid right now is... They didn't do a good job of this on defense, mm. was getting an advantage and then keeping that advantage. And I think right now, that's what they're trying to focus on and, and let Koi kind of make the next mistake. And this is something that Koi did really well against Liquid in the first half. And it's another thing that, you know, is Koi gonna bite? Are they gonna over-rotate? Are they gonna peek for info and then run into Team Liquid right now? And it looks like that's actually happening. Yeah, being rewarded for their patience here. They're gonna find Starks in the middle. Now, there, there is a lot of players on this side, but again, weapon should outdo it, and it does. Team Liquid, very well approached, very well rounded. This looks good. This could be a game on our hands now, right? Like, we're getting to the point where the scoreline doesn't look as egregious. You start forgetting some of the issues from that first half. You think, oh, six to eight, we've got a game on. But again, this does come back to, does Koi then have those adjustments we were looking through, I guess, from regular season, or at least kick off not regular season. Have they done the work we were looking for here? Does Liquid have the capability to keep doing this? Again, this is similar to the start of the first half too. So can't read too much into it yet. But this is the bonus round. I mean, maybe could be telling going forward. Yeah, I mean, the thing with what we saw at kickoff between these two teams against each other was that the matches always went the distance. But the problem with Liquid was they weren't all showing up. It was only like one person showing up. The rounds where everyone showed up, they played well. And right now, we're seeing a lot of Liquid showing up. It's not just one player here or there. It's like everyone's kind of showing up. You know, a couple of bad missed shots from, you know, Nats on that one round. That was a pretty pivotal round that probably cost a couple of rounds. But it's like, they're all kind of, they're not really overheating except for that Yampi one round, for example. Uh, not the ideal start for Kiko there. Looking to pressure towards Heaven early, but they have managed to slip the net a touch. Yampi, gonna position deeper towards a cubby on the back of B, but Again, let's see if Koi are even considering this. The paranoia just around the corner is actually going to clip towards Nats, but it plays in Yampi. A little bit of a surprise there, creeping up with the wall. Yampi again looking to re-aggress. Nice timing from Mystic to swing. That's lovely coordination between the two, but it's still Shadow and Starzo. There is still pressure in this, and the two rifles up for grabs. They've got a couple of upgrades here as well. Mystic makes the most of his. This is ideal. This is a fantastic round. As Darkzo, his, his options are done here. I don't think you get to play back into this. No, when you're against a bonus round like this, and you're in a one versus three, you have to save that. You're out. You got to, because like you, we're getting really close to an Enzo ulti, for example. But the thing that I really liked here is, and it's something that we should point out about, you know, if you just look at something by the numbers and just look mm. only at the stats, right there, it's like Kiko went, he went out mid, he died, but he got a lot of info, created a lot of space, and that True. let his teammates walk out onto B site. Nats got all the way to the back, or uh, Yumpy got Yumpy, all the way yeah, to the yeah. back of the site there. And then what happened is they dropped the wall and they're able to have this crossfire and Koi's getting pinched from two different angles. They let the B walk out happen and it was all on the backs of like Kiko's sacrifice basically. He didn't get to get any kills or rewards or you know praise for that. So I'm gonna do that right now for him. What a nice you, guy. You sac it was an impact of death. That's what that I That sounds like the most steel thing ever. Like it's an impact even in my, my death, I death. promise you it's really valuable. <laughs> yeah. I love the way this is just what you've told yourself throughout the years. <laughs> <laughs> but there is validity to it. Again, I, I, you've got to look at the value they just won, won from that round. It's huge, right? This then probably ties up the scoreline. Probably, you know, stranger things have happened, but they have no ults to depend upon for Koi. So they are going to be coming in with Sheriffs and that one remaining rifle that Starkso managed to get away with. But beyond that, this should now be, I don't want to say a walk in the park, but this is Tell Liquid probably closing the gap. I'm a little worried about this though, but how much does Starkso get? He is chomping at the bit here, and the reveal is dangerous. Starkso, can he live? Can he survive? He's still here. He's got to back away from this. Already finding value is great. You don't need to overdo this one. Nat's looking to try and even the odds, but this is so dangerous from both sides. Yeah, and we're going to see this actual mid activation happening coming through the vents. They're going to be able to get the crossfire and the backstep onto a heaven here. Oh, Yampi. Yeah, beautiful work. The timing was excellent. You saw the pause over towards yeah, main, waiting Yampi. for them to clear through from heaven. It's a great recovery from Liquid after there was genuine threat and danger. For the last player remaining, Gravino, not going to have any play this round. Very well maintained by Liquid there. You could see the idea from Koi, but again, that pressure in heaven clearing back through, not falling too foul to Starkso's, I guess, attempt towards main. Yeah, and I think one of the things that, well, I, I had a few things written down for Team Liquid here. And part of it was like, what their strengths were was their individual skill, their aggression, their confidence. Their weaknesses was overheating and coordination. And especially it's the coordination on their attack side. Because they rely on the individual skill so much, and because they rely on setting up lurkers, um, kind of just getting people inserted into really deep okay. spots, it's really important that they have 
good coordination. So it's not just enough that you have someone inserted, it's that you have to kind of go at the right time. So it's like, it's your time, it's like a red light, green light, where you have a green light, but your teammate has a red light. And their traditional problem, going back to kick uh, kickoff, yeah. was that, you know, too many people would, would be going you know, when they have a red light and not enough people were going when they had a green light. And it caused like this mismatch of, okay, Yampi's all the way up there, but you know, these guys are all the way back there. What's going on? But right now it's looking really good that, you know, as, as soon as they get a little bit of pressure at A main, they're like, oh wait, they're fighting us right now. They're backed off. Oh, you should have some space at middle, go up middle. Okay, the middle guys are up, they're in A heaven, they're fighting. Okay, now we reactivate. And I think this is kind of like the change that we expected to see or hope, hope to see. To see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, we hope to see it. I mean, we expected to see it before kickoff sure. started. Sure. But, you know, <laughs> you kind of have to take what you get. Yeah. And right now, you know, does it look like they used the last month to kind of hone in on this, get to the VOD review, look at kind of what was going wrong and kick mm. off. Hey, guys, like we, we're on the right path. But right now what's happening is our coordination and our timings are whack. Yeah. We're going, you know, let's let's fix this. Let's make sure that once we've done our job, we chill, we wait for the next signal to go, and then we go on that signal. We can't just like start going before that signal. And I, I think we're seeing that paying off right now. Obviously, you know, 8-8 eight, eight isn't the scoreline that you want to be sitting here talking about oh. when, we're, when we're praising them. But considering they had such a, you know, deficit in the first half, two to eight, or whatever the scoreline was, that was... They're doing pretty good. They are. I mean, I, I think this is marked improvement in areas that were worrying. Again, yep. if, if we'd come into this game and we're an 8-8, eight, eight, and let's say, I don't know, uh, Nats and Kiko are having a nuts performance. They were just kind of not necessarily hard carrying, but you know that like they're having big impact. It kind of then um, hides all the crimes and the sins of the actual roster that it, maybe they hadn't adjusted throughout the little bit of downtime between kickoff and now, but it's not the case. We're seeing everyone on Liquid doing pretty well for themselves. We're seeing them looking like they've adjusted some of those issues. So this is all kind of looking like it's teeing up to they could have fixed some of the problems. I do want to flip the, I guess, the look then towards Koi because first half looked kind of like we, not expected, but again, hope to see a similar look where they still looked as confident, comfortable, individually impactful. A lot of things that Koi looked great at during kickoff, but now it's like, okay, do they have that adjustment on the second half here? Do they have that growth area as well? Because we've seen Liquid kind of tick in the box. They've closed the gap here. They've looked good doing it. Now we have to ask the question towards Koi. Obviously, we are in a tech pause here. This isn't a tactical one. Um, I think the producer did tell me what it was. Didn't listen. Sorry, Alberto. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> are they investigating? That's why. Someone is out there with their little investigator hat on, figuring out what the problem is. But still, it's 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 are those key markers there for Koi as well to show that improvement? Because it is a rare treat to get downtime during. You know, if you're a team, if you're finishing towards mid to top pack, it's a busy season. And especially if you're in that top pack, when do you ever get time to readjust and kind of come back out with a new look? But these guys did have downtime. They didn't go to Madrid. They didn't qualify that far. So they've had time to hopefully identify those issues. So the question is. How are we going to see that with Koi now, right? Because they had that great first half. They'll be happy enough with that. But that was never their issue, right, from regular kickoff. Yeah, so I mean, you know, just to tie up the liquid thing, it's like mm -hmm. they really focused on playing into their strengths and making sure that their strengths are, are sorted. But w when we look at Koi right now, yeah. we know that their strength was their attack side and their weakness was the mid rounds and their defense. And the, the reason why defense is so hard is because you can't have all five players on the same page right. going towards like one coordinated effort. Sure. Hey, we're going to take middle. Once we have middle, you guys are going to do that. And once yep. you do that, we're going to do this. Very and then we're going to end here. Right? It's, yeah, very, yeah. it's very easy. Like the flow chart and everything's all laid out. Everyone knows what to do. Do you make flow charts? I, I don't make flow charts, okay, but like I, I mean, it's like a more of like a mental, you know, <laughs> know whatever. <laughs> so, so when you go into the defense side here, yeah. you have to have this individual decision making. You don't have that same flow chart where you have like really clear cut protocols yes. and if then statements. People need to make their own uh, internally. Just decide like, hey, if this is gonna happen, mm -hmm. I'm gonna do that. And you can't have one person kind of babysit and handhold the whole way and just kind like of micro. You, yeah, 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 you can't do this. It's, it's start. It's not StarCraft where you. you you know, you get to <laughs> control, <laughs> control these unit groups yeah, yeah, and whatever. Yeah, yeah. Like, you're not a commander. So you're there, you're doing your own thing, and you're part of the map. And you're like, oh, they're doing this stuff. Like, I can suggest something across the map to you. Like, hey, they're doing this. These are your three options. Pick one and do something. And if the players that are on the other side of the map don't make a good plan or don't make the plan in time or sure. don't execute it on a timely fashion, then that's when things fall apart. And 
you know, if you're Koi and you are the coach or the IGL and you're on this off season and you're looking at what do we need to focus on? Well, our attack game plans are solid right now. Happy we don't that. really need to focus too much on that. Nope. Let's focus on our defense a little bit. Let's okay. focus inwards and figure out what are we doing or what are we not doing that's causing us to have such a, a discrepancy between our attack and defense. But it does feel almost harder because you are banking on that kind of puzzle solving skill as an individual on the defending side of those players, right? Like, as you said, on the attack, you either get the IGL, it's a very clear-cut plan, you can kind of work through it. You don't get to determine that pace or what's ever thrown at you on the defensive side. So this will be quite a test of the individuals and their capability to question, to find out, to find those answers, to get those solutions that they're looking for here. And again, it was just a coy timeout at the end, if you were wondering. So hopefully, with a check-in from Barbar, maybe they can come up with a concept that works for him here. But I'm kind of curious at this point, right? This is Koi's time to step up and show if they've made those adjustments that maybe we liked with Liquid, but can Koi do something similar where they kind of, I guess, relieve us of any of those worries from that kickoff side, which as I, I think we're, we're being very honest about this, but neither of these teams would have been happy with their kickoff results. I think that's a very obvious sentiment, but still, coming back into this Liquid, be taken towards middle to begin with. I think we're starting to see the um the issue with Koi's defense here, Cover with our composition, they don't have a sentinel here to get yep. the passive info to kind of like lean on, on certain places so they can gamble fight and, and get Forever. real value with this breach done. So right now it's a hit and it's a miss. They don't have a turret to get triggered. They don't have a camera. They don't have trip wires. They don't have alarm yep. bots. They, without that, they have to spread out. We see, you know, over on A, the Fade now has to use a Prowler to get info. Sees nothing immediately. Maybe she can get on a deeper line. But then Omen's sitting here holding B all by himself as well. So all the focus is on middle right now. But again, it's just like they're way too spread apart. They're way too split off. They don't have any map control. But it's it doesn't matter. 30 There's 30 seconds, seconds left. left. Here comes the big hit. We do see the Fade getting the deep line off of that mid fight. So maybe it's going to be a hit onto the B site and they're going to have enough people here. We're going to have to see. Rubino, this is a lot of pressure in your hands. You've got to find a little bit of value, and he does. Kiko goes down, and he holds the line. Now they can start flooding back in from heaven. 13 seconds. Liquid leaving this so late in the day. But Mystic on the bailout. Nats on the follow-up. They need a plant, though, and they need it now. They've got to secure this. They've got to get it down. Spike's down, but so are the rest of the side. Nats the only one standing in a 1v1. All going to come through, looking like Quake. But already Starks are going to reveal his position. Going to drop on down, and now there's problems. Oh, Nats! You are filthy! How does he get away with that? Oh! That was nasty. That was dirty. I like it, though. <laughs> <laughs> I missed you, Josh. You know, Mike doesn't do this to me. He's, you know, he's so clear cut. But he's a good boy. You've come in and just gone, I like it dirty. <laughs> nice one. Well, one well. in, <laughs> <one> in Germany. <laughs> So, uh, the, time later. I love how, like, so many people would start freaking out with, like, 12 seconds yes! left on the clock, and you're like, oh my god, there's 12 seconds left. Yes. It only takes four seconds to plant the spike, or, or whatever, you know, yep. roughly. So, you don't have to stress out in those situations, and part of the reason why those situations work is that Oi's is gonna be in positions that they can't really get great fights, they're gonna be swarmed and overwhelmed, and they're gonna be out of abilities. So, Team Liquid, one of the things I really like doing is kind of like these practice drills where it's like, okay, this this practice game, we're not going to do anything but hitting in the last 20 seconds just so we can get comfortable with being on low time and being able to still get into the site, get the spike planted, and, and do all this stuff without freaking out, without overextending, without just like peeing our pants, basically. Yeah. Are you telling yeah. me that scrim bucks aren't as important as everyone makes out? That's crazy. You should That's be playing crazy. to get better, not playing to win That's scrims, yes. That's crazy you said that. Reddit in shambles. Maybe the analyst does too, not ours. And Ace. Kate, At this Kate point, Trigger. let's see if any more naughtiness can come out of Koi. I mean, they've done a little bit of damage early on. They had to do something. You're working with bits and pieces. And actually, Gravino's Why found Nats? a bit of a problem here. Gets to TP back away, and he's got lovely little upgrade too. Shados now in a key position. Look at this. Oh, Playing in so perfectly. They made a mountain out of a molehill, and Mystic and Enzo are in tatters. Enzo looking to try and recover. He does well to find two, but this now is down a Mystic. He's got to do so much. He gets a spell on the breach, gets a spike. Hello, what is going on here? This is rotten to witness, and Stark's only got a frenzy, but 11 seconds ain't a great deal to play with, but you've told me it only takes four to plant, so it's not a problem. Mystic, now, what do you do with this? You've got to commit to this one. And he does, oh, dearie me. That is heart-wrenching for Liquid, but you'll take that every day of the week if you're coy, but 
mistakes Joshua made there. That, that's like a prime example of Liquid not kind of having that coordination. What happens? They go one for one of B main. Not the end of the world. Sure. They know Koi's fighting for B main. What does that mean? It means mid's probably open. So what happens? Liquid moves up mid. Three of them. They're backstabbing B site. Yes, Omen ulties from A over into the back of the B site. But what happens next is Nats, the solo person B main, walks into them when he knows his teammates up B heaven. He doesn't have to go anywhere. All he has to do is wait there and wait to see if they push him. If they push him, cool, he kills them. If they don't push him, cool, his teammates come from the back and then he can pinch with them in like five, 10 seconds from them. But then he goes out too early, he overheats. And this is the prime liquid issue that they yep. had all of kickoff. And that's what you hope to see them fix. So why is it so uncoordinated and disjointed and ah. yeah that that's gonna be you you know the coaches are kicking themselves too Keeps you know they're sat there they've seen train. that and they're just devastated again it happens but you don't want it around like that and wow how did that not find a player i mean look at the damage but it doesn't really matter at this point Sky he's gonna come out yep. yeah so enzo being alive even on six hp is so valuable and that's his back to breathing starks are trying to catch anyone on the cross doesn't quite get what he wants here you asked me why I don't want to coach, and it's like this that previous it. round. <laughs> that, that, that's why. That's exactly why. Yeah. I mean, it's hard enough as an IGL yeah, when that don't. happens. It's like, <laughs> oh man. Don't do this to me. But at this point, I mean, what do Liquid have here? They've got Heaven Control, they've got a little bit of a step towards A, but there is still three players here. This is a lot to handle. Mid is out of the question, it looks like, at least for now. Maybe they want to test this, but that Viper's Pit is going to be holding. This is hard left. to clear. Looks like they're going to go back towards this A hit. But the problem is, look at Camus' position. I kind of like this. Going late lurking, but again, Nats yep. gets rewarded. That's better. That's what he wanted probably in the previous round, but this patience pays, and now they're rewarded towards heaven. There's one player on the site. How much damage can one man do? These late round hits now yep. starting to become a factor. Shadow trying to buy the time, but gets cleared. They should be fine on the plant. There shouldn't be anything to threaten this. The pit drops in middle. Everything looking good here for Liquid now. They've stabilized. And stabilization is... Uh, it's like one of those things where it's, it sounds super obvious and easy to pull off, but it's one of those things where when you're in the moment and all this chaos is happening, it's so hard for people to realize like, hey, we can just like, even though we're kind of like out in the open, we can just chill for a second and let things simmer and then maybe something happens in our way. And I think one of the things that was really cool here from what Liquid did this round was they put the pressure on the Viper from vents and from the bottom of the middle at the same time. They were like spraying to the smoke. And because of that, it kind of made Koi think like, oh, hey, like the Viper's getting pressured. Maybe it's a, they're going to go towards B. It, yep. it gave a lot of space towards A. A lot of abilities were used. And then, yeah, Team Liquid was able to move up into the site again. There's like eight seconds left as they sprayed through the smoke. They got the kill on the site. They're able to get the plant with like one second left. But that's all you need. All you need is one second. So if you're going to bait out all this utility, which you have to do, yes. there's nades, there's mollies, there's smokes, there's stuns, there's aftershocks, flashes, everything. So why not like bait it out? It's going to take a while. Yeah, it's. I, I get nervous when that 18th round just gives me like flashbacks. That it's all going to go wrong after that, that they're just going to start, you know, that doubt comes in. But this is a really big course correction. Probably puts them right back to believing in the plan for Liquid. Mm -hmm. For Koi, I'm curious, right? They've only had one round on this half so far. The scoreline is very forgiving because of that first half, but this is a pressure moment for them now. Their, their funds are going to be running a little lower. No big ults nearby apart from Starxos. I mean, that could be critical, but again, they've got a lot of work to do in front of them here. We've seen other teams use the Viper ulti really kind of like creatively. Mm. They'll get into an area, they'll pop it in like, a, you know, to cut off middle or a rotation point or something like that. We've seen Yampi sitting on his ulti for a few rounds, not using it really anywhere, anytime. Yeah, they've been planning with like two seconds left. So like, when are you going to use it in a post plant? Like all the kills have already been decided by then. But to not kind of have like any creative way of using it as a fake or Careful using here. it to create uh, a, an opening or be able to secure all of middle so you could do this like, kind of like ping pong back and forth thing. We're not seeing any of that, but we're gonna see a full A hit, but um, a decent read from Koi? Potentially, potentially. The Sarkso get to live. No, Oof. no is the question. It was a very quick execution. Now Evans being flooded, good Why? damage, but no kill. Again, Nat's getting maybe a little ahead of himself there. Maybe didn't need to take that fight individually. A deeper Hit from Yampi, please. please. He, he waited for it to come up before he peeked. Okay. There we go. We're, we're, <laughs> we, we're, we we're changing, we're learning, we're growing. Mystic waiting as well. There is a very clear choke point. Now they're going to force the hand to make them go through heaven. And look at the space being taken behind them. I like this. Mystic right and Yampi considering it. 
Spray comes in, but it's not going to come next. So now they've got to try and take that space back from heaven. They're going to fly towards the side. Actually, Callow doing really well. Clears through. Ult comes in. May not be pretty, but it gets the job done. Shadow and Shados not in a position to do wonders. Yampi go and walk about. Expecting the unexpected. Shados down on 10 HP. Miracles aren't happening, and Team Liquid is up to 11 now. I think really good ulti usage here from Team Liquid in this round. You know, just as I'm talking about how they haven't been using it and haven't been doing a good job, they have to kind of just be like, you know what, let's just do it properly this one time to make him sound silly. <laughs> hey, but it worked. It got, it, it got them where they needed to be. This is this absolutely. is what you were looking for, if anything. And this is another example, though, where we see Nats. It's like, when I ex make that exclamation in the middle of the round, like, why? It's, it's like, I'll tell you why. Go they go into the site, right? Yep. Kiko does a double satchel in. He kills yep. the fade on the site. Oh my god. Here it is. Bada bing, bada boom. Okay, they have the site free. They're gonna flood in and get the spike plant. So where is Team Koi located on the map? They're probably in heaven or probably, probably rotating to heaven. Yes. So why do you need to go? You have the man advantage, you have the spike planted, and your teammates are all they haven't stabilized. Bring that word back up from the, yeah. you know a round ago. So let your team stabilize, get into like different positions, ready for the post plan. And then when like the opponents are coming in for the retake, that's when you can jam them. But like they're still clearing out all the, they're, they're clearing out like heaven. They're clearing yeah. out ramps still, and you're peeking into them. You're giving them what they want to be able to have an opportunity to stabilize in heaven, and then say, okay, like we're going for this now retake can, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I. I... <laughs> And the thing is that does he doesn't they don't get punished to the same extent this round, right? Like Liquid got away with it. There, there wasn't a huge issue, but you could see that if other teams are watching this and they're seeing opportunities, if Nats is still overheating, if there are gaps still to this, there are opportunities. This is the first glimpse that these players are gonna get of the teams after kickoff break, that you know, during Madrid. So again, for Liquid, this is probably gonna be a VOD check-in and a kind of question mark put towards this, because again, Nats on his lurks was iconic. But finding that right timing, finding that timing within the rest of the team is essential. Now, 11 rounds. That's ooh, almost rewarded early on there, Stark. So gotta be very cautious here. Yeah, we see the fade ult is online for him. He's down to 20 health. He almost died there. Like, why are you even trying to tr play one versus five on the site? You're, you're going to lose it. And then you don't even have the fade ulti for the retake. So good decision here. He, he peels out. He's going to go and switch weapons and, you know, get a little bogged in law going in, kind of. <laughs> That's a, that's a throwback to about four people, remember? <laughs> yeah. Thank you for that one. No, I think everyone remembers. No one forgets that. Do you think so? That iconic. Well... <laughs> it's, like a, it's like a help sewer moment there, kind of. <laughs> the two Starks can get value for this ult, though, right? Like, hindered at the start. Is anyone there to capitalize on this, though? I mean, a little bit of information, but closing that gap, what are you going to do with it? Where's, where is the value of this? Like, it's, it's... There's three people on the site, though. <laughs> Guys, they're on the side that they've planted at. <laughs> Enzo, uh, yeah, there, there has been no ability to close down on this ult. Enzo is going to be under a lot of pressure, but it plays in Mystic. Does very well here. Bails out Enzo to get away and then re-aggress. Goes back for more and can't make the most of it. Shadow levies this down to a 2v3, favorable to Koi. The HP is low. It's on Nats now, and that's good. He needs more, though. Knows the stars up there. He's got such a good read on it. Trying to toy with him, but now time is a problem. Six bullets to play with. Oh my word! And he's done it. He forced Shadow off the spike, and that's just needs to play this properly. And oh my wait! Did he go too early? No, he didn't. And that's plays it to the second. That got a little close for comfort in the Red Bull clutch, but he does it to get him to 12. You know, Nats give it and Nats take it. <laughs> because we the see Nats these overheats on these other rounds, yep. but then but then They'll that's the that. second huge round that he's yep. basically won in a, I think he had a one versus two before that. I think or so. Yeah, I so think it's so. just like, he, if he's going to pull out these big rounds like this and these clutches, he's he's allowed, okay, you can he's have... He's still fabric. Yeah. Let, let him have it. Let, let him have yeah. it. You can do a one or two overheats because I know that you're going to get like, you know, you're going to make up for it twofold. Oh, this got so dicey. <laughs> Oh, but yeah, that is 12. And again, pause <laughs> for thought here. Poor old Barbar. Bless Wait, him. Did I think, did I hear what I think I heard? Nah, it, it looked a little like it. But 12 to 9, again, if we're taking pause here, if we're taking stock, Koi only managing one round really on this half. This has not been a pretty half for them. Plagued with issues and Liquid looking good on the attack. Coming back into Gage this, the buy is there, but. Rubino already taken a boatload of damage, and I don't. I uh, maybe just a spam through middle off. connecting, but they're trying to be proactive. And again, it's on Nats here. Told you, feast or famine. What can he do this time? Still gonna find one. Still takes down one, and he's gonna get. I don't know how much he saw there. Probably enough, but 
Again, they've already got side control. That should be telling in itself. And this is, again, coming back to the limitations of Koya's defense. Because of their composition, you know, they let Liquid walk into B site for free. And now they're all the way deep in spawn, and they're jamming this. They're jamming the retake. There's no chance for Koi. Yeah, offset in that timing. Yampi pressuring back through was just gorgeous. Where are you off to? It's, it's last round. Spike's Where are you off to? Funny. There's nowhere to run. You got to face it. 13 to 9. Team Liquid. You know what? First half may have given you worry, but that second, Josh, was excellent. And it's actually interesting to see that Liquid wasn't just doing their lurky thing where they're inserting lurks and doing like two or three people lurking. They were grouping up and doing these full five-man hits in the last few rounds. Not even just the last few rounds, like the whole half where they were just going in the last second. Yeah, this is going to be hopefully a very good series going forward. Plenty more to come. That's only map one. I know a place that will break you into a thousand pieces. Stay away from them. Stay away from Lorca, Paco, and Picasso. Don't ask about Lola. I, Caballo Grande. I, Lord Nieve. But in spite of everything, it occurs to you to visit Andalusia. Don't say I didn't warn you. Be careful of the Andalusian crush. Hey guys, it's Jimmy Lin, former professional Counter-Strike player and Valorant coach. Watch out for the stairs, clear this angle, you're going to be able to fight this. Red Bull gives you wings. be the witness at the time turn a repeat to a 3p yeah. yeah got the franchise on me you more like you yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah 21st century you all the way bc yeah old boys been washed up i'm not stuck in tt hey came out the womb like this hit the pedal in room right quick gotta get it we going up way up my land on the moon who step in the room like this we breaking the rules right quick they killing the mood and up in a few my land in a tomb
What a fantastic start that was from Team Liquid. They're on the board, are leading 1-0 in this best of three against Koi. I'm your host, Yingzi, and I'm back here once again with Kakuka and Bonko. We had a lot of questions about Liquid. Bonko, do you feel like they answered uh, those questions? They make you feel less concerned? Yeah, I feel like even though their defense was a little sloppy, for sure, I feel like on attack, I feel like they showed a lot of like patience when it came to their place. Yeah, exactly. And uh, also identifying the mistakes or the gaps more like uh, on Koi's uh, um, composition and also the way that they were interpreting the map. I think that it gave them an edge. They only dropped one single round on the attack. I think it was brilliant to see Team Liquid play like this. Yeah, this is the Liquid that we wanted to see, yes. right? The Liquid yeah. with that synergy uh, mm. and so on. Kukuko, I know you wanted to show yes. a particular round that might illustrate that. Uh, yeah, exactly. Well, it's not this one. This is actually about Koi, right? And how they were managing to uh, stack up so many rounds on their attack. Actually, if we think about the, the map that is coming now, seeing this, it speaks a lot to what Koi needs to do on Ascent to turn things around. They were very patient. They knew exactly how to react to everything, how to freeze uh, time after time, especially uh, when Tin Liquid was going to go back in the aggression, being very aware of the ultimates and the pressure that they were putting on to mid. This is the kind of Koi that we need to see moving on to Ascent. Yeah, for sure. I feel like for Ascent, it's going to be like for both teams, who will be showing up on the defense side. I feel like on, on this map, at least on Split, I feel like both of the teams had great ideas, but I feel like, you know, like both teams just kind of let them, you know, like slip away. On attack side, I had like, there's... I feel like both teams on attack, they're very, like, very good on that side. Defense, yeah. I'm just a little worried. Yeah, exactly. I think that it speaks to how the game is evolving and what is based off, especially uh, here in this year. And this is actually the run that I wanted to show. Bear in mind, this is the first buy for Koi, right? They get that first pick onto Kiko, onto Min. But the response is instant from Team Liquid. They use the wall that they have from Yampi to take onto this positions very, very quietly. We see Gabinia, like, uh, refreshing those smokes and also Camo going on the way to help. Obviously, with this short range, they don't have a lot to do. The movement is beautiful. How Yumpy responds, how Nats also, and how the rest of the floating goes onto this side. It speaks of how well prepared they were for this situation. We have weapons that will work better in that short range. Let's try and make that work to our advantage. This is what gives the team identity. Having a plan for every single round without the need of a lot of pauses for it. Yeah, the attacks, uh, you both said it looked great for both teams, actually. Mm. But uh, one man, uh, Nats, if we take a look at him right now in the AIM Labs warm up before we head to Ascent, he was online, he was getting Getting those clutches, one of the reasons why they were able to uh, bone cold to win so many rounds on their attack. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Like I feel like I I really loved. I I kind of want to even go back to you know like the previous play. I feel like the uh, the players that are also like you know like coming back from you know like main to side to help the players was fantastic. But for Nats, I feel like he was he was having like so much impact on those you know like one v like one v like X situations. You could even see on one of the last rounds with the beautiful one v three. Yeah, exactly. I think that he was there to show up uh, when he's in that in that lurker role. But I think that he was a lot more measured in that sense. To me, we saw Nats that was comfortable mm -hmm. on the attack. Now the defense is still the big question and, and how to adapt to it. But again, I feel like Koi's composition was very suited to be very explosive on the attack and. That that is kind of expected, right? That you cannot counter that. But to me, seeing Nats like this, getting both the openings, but also winning the clutches is the best shape you can get of Nats. Yeah, and Ascent is going to be interesting. Both teams, they the haven't played it yet, mm -hmm. uh, this year at all. And for Koi, uh, the Warriors on the defense, they won zero out of nine retakes on split. Yeah. Zero, not just literally zero. Uh, and you cannot do that on Ascent. Oh yeah, totally. And uh, again, going back to how the game is played this year, as picking Ascent and knowing that you're going, no, that you're most likely going to start on the attack is not a detriment anymore. Because if you think of the set rounds and how the teams are interpreting the game and how important those very flashy um, executes um, uh, work around the map, I think that it gives some edge onto Team Liquid. They were playing so well with time on split, having you know a mix of running the clock down or very, having very flashy executes. I think it gives them an edge on an ascent. Oh, 100%. You could see on split, the patience was beautiful in, on some of the rounds by Liquid side. I feel like, you know, like they didn't, there was times where they 
they did not hesitate at all to just go in. But you can also see, you know, like them just, you know, like holding. And again, I go to like Nats, who's just holding down his A men until the time runs red. And this is the thing, like I said, we haven't seen their ascent yet. Are they going to be cooking? Uh, you know, are we going to see something different? And we will keep going. Yoru, let's go. I mean, I, I was literally one of my highlights for this map was Yo, Kik is going to be back on the jet. We loved it when it was on Ice Hopes when he read that record and he felt so, so comfortable. But here is another layer and another reason why Team Liquid might think they have an edge on this. Also, Nats on the Cypher, we, we might also have the question, is he going to go back on that kill? Maybe he wasn't very comfortable. But Nats on the Cypher, especially with the performance that he just had on Split, is going to be brutal. Now, is, is Kika going to step up uh, to the Euro place that we've been witnessing for the rest of the year? Yeah, it's going to be nice to see. For me, I've never got to actually play the meta where, you know, like Viper and Yoru were so prominent. So it's going to be so nice to see, you know, like what Liquid has been cooking up here. I mean, is this uh, where you're maybe feeling a 2-0? How did Koi come back into this? Oh, I feel like Koi just... Even Koi had like like very nice ideas, like their attacking side was very good. Uh, so I feel like they just have to, you know, like show up, you know, like reset from the first map and, you know, like start with the lead. I feel yeah, like that's and, the and way. Starkso has to come back online. He was not feeling it on split. We'll no. see if he can indeed. And I'm going to hand this over to your casters once again. Pansy and Steel, what do you make of this? Thank you so much. Yeah, a lot to be looked at here. I mean, composition-wise, a couple of changes coming through. How do you feel about the Yoru coming out here, Josh? Does it fill you with confidence and joy, or do you not really care that much? Yeah, it's going to be interesting because we usually see Kiko on the jet on situations like this. So, you know, seeing them playing Ascent, playing Yoru on it, it's going to be interesting to say the least. Sure. You know, we do get to see them starting on attack, so maybe that plays into it a little bit because what do you need on Ascent? You need to be able to break through the choke points. Yeah. So with Jet, you have to throw a, a smoke and then dash into the smoke and then get mm -hmm. past that choke point. Yoru could do it in kind of like unique ways because he could just TP, it's like a long range sure. open TP to get across certain places. Yeah. So we're going to see that being leveraged a lot. We're going to see kind of like what their prep was going into this. But as we saw in this last map, and I was kind of like alluding to it a little bit, was they're not doing this, you know, have multiple lurkers every round. So Yoru makes sense because they could be more explosive with this comp getting into a site. They have more flashes going on here. Uh, they're running with the, the Sova and the, the Viper. So this is going to be very interesting to see what they do here because it's not really a traditional comp. We're seeing from the other side, obviously. We're seeing yeah. Koi is running a more traditional comp. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see what happens with all of, this, all, all of that stuff and how the Sova dart sets up the Yoru. And, yep. I, I'm looking forward to it, right? It's like it's going to be interesting. Yeah. It, it feels like if you roll your mind back, Liquid are always quite creative too. They were very early adopters of, of certain looks, certain compositions. Blame it on Sliggy, blame it on Bacon. It doesn't really matter. It's one of their faults. But they normally do come in with some nice cooked up ideas. Now, hopefully, we get to see it kind of fleshed out, right? That it isn't just like a bit of a quirk that looks mm -hmm. a little bit one-dimensional. I want to see depth to it. So there is that, and how it fares up against a more traditional composition, right? Like that's going to be a nice little kind of pound for pound. How does it work? If you are wondering. Headset at you for one of the coaches. It's a actually preemptive tech pause. We don't even get the floor glowing red. So, you know, my my uh, allotted amount of tech pauses, I've hit both of them now. That is in my contract. So well done. that's done. That's done. But yeah, no, it, it's, it's again, I, I think this is a nice testing point to see where Liquid are, what they're looking like, how this composition suits them. And for Koi, they got to shake off that last map. That is a horrific way to full stop it, right? That half losing, not even the scoreline, but barely picking up a round, only picking up one round, having to come in now, freshen up, change that mentality, get focused back into the game. As we are now seconds away, thank you for your patience. Team Liquid and Koi, map two here. And Liquid looking a little creative. Let's see if it works for them. Yeah, already looking like it was looking well, it looked like Koi were praying on this mid-pinch, but yeah, again, knife should be highly indicative of what's coming their way. So either it's a fast flank or you get towards short. It's going to be a big fight. Oh my god, they're about to come around the corner. Aldrone sees it, but who's getting to draw blood? It's going to be Shadow, at least answering back to Yampi's first. How many sheriffs did these guys This get? is ridiculous. It's just a, a brawl, isn't it? Got Trying it. to get amongst them here, but Koi going to try and flip back towards site. They do at least get a couple of players ahead of this. This is terrible. What? Starkso? Come on, what is going on? <laughs> what just happened? What just happened? Koi just 
just just brawled out the rest of them. Got clean fights across it. Well, at least at the end it was a clean fight. I I want to watch a replay on that. That was baffling. Listen, as a killjoy <laughs> right. sheriff, the uh, enjoyer on piss rounds. Usually, I get it on attack. I don't. I don't do that on the defense that often. But yeah, that was a uh, what? That was pretty interesting. One of the things I was gonna point out was that <sighs> you know, Team Liquid, they have a, a lot of reps playing against probably a standard comp like what Koi is running right now. So they're gonna have like ideas and and defenses against this, but. For Koi playing against the roster that Liquid yeah. or the the composition that Liquid has, they're probably going to be put in a lot of uncomfortable situations. So being able to be aggressive like that and and being able to stuff them at middle there and have this mid round fight and just be so confident. Yeah, I mean, Stocks have just walked to smoke and found like three of them drifting to size. Ah, brilliant. I've, it's I've also done poor, well. sc poor scaling as well, though. Yeah. Who's who's going to the door and closing it? Huh? Yeah. Yeah. No, I, look, I'm, I'm on your side. All right, I'm on okay, your my side. Thank you. Camo, gonna make light work of Mystic. And again, Spike's over here. This isn't a round that I'm expecting too much from. As it stands, I can see who's gonna build up towards that ult as well, Camo. On one side, Kiko gonna claim it on the other. So obviously, looking to build that up nice and early. Nats, doing his opposite number, at least on the utility. Not however with weaponry, and he gets to keep his life. No harm, no foul. Team Liquid making no real impact here. Yeah, I'm, I'm surprised that they tried kind of walking out. It was a four versus five. All you can really do there is group up and do something together. I mean, trying to like walk out one by one with classics, you're not going to get any real value. But one of the things I want to point out is this wall right now that they're doing on uh, A is basically left. getting them a little bit of control over A main. Mm -hmm. it, it allows you to cross. So a lot of the time, we're going to see a one way right up here on the wall from the defenders mm -hmm. as they're cleaning up this round because, you know, against classics, what can you do? So it's going to deny that one-way smoke. It's going to allow you to cross to the cubby. It's going to allow you to get the orb control. And it's also going to give you a little bit of a pocket that you can cross also. So not just crossing at A main into the cubby there, but they can also cross to wine with that wall up, blocking off heaven and sight info. So that's going to put a lot of pressure on A main, and it's going to help with the scaling out of the site. So as we talked about with the, you need the gen to get out of the choke point, you put this wall up, they, they're, they're blind. They need to put either trips or cameras or get a soba dart there as Team Liquid moves out of the choke point. Otherwise, Team Liquid's going to be able to flood out for free. A little bit of an adjustment this round. As we do come into... A little bit of a... Well, I mean, looking at the weaponry. It's like Guardian on Enzo, the only real odd man out. But other than that, all good. And this mid-presence from Kiko, I'm kind of curious how this one works. Why have they smoked Cat and walled it? I don't really know. <laughs> Sorry, that's I don't rhetorical, really know. obviously. No, I don't. You know, Josh, <laughs> we'll have a chat with them afterwards. Okay. You know, yeah, pull them we aside. Like, Guys, yeah. what's, what's this about? Yinsu, get on it. There you go. Called into action. Hope you had nothing else planned, Yinsu. But a, a little bit of a look towards middle, right? A little bit of a test up there. You've got a Kiko going to be trying. It took a little bit of the space and then backed from this. So I'm kind of curious what the end goal is now. They're not really drawing out a great deal of util. That gives away very little either. Looking like they're going to eventually... I mean, where are they pivoting to? I think they're trying to rock the boat a little bit. So they're going to give a little bit of like pressure towards A, then a little bit of pressure towards B, then back to A, then back to B. It looks like they want to end A. Otherwise, we would have seen the Omen in B main. And the, but okay, I, I say that, but we saw this yeah. on split as well. The Viper's going to go back to B main, and then it's going to be a B split after they put all this pressure towards A. Yours is going to TP back to his team, maybe, or he's just going to create a lot of pressure here with the flashes, and then the split's going to come through market. And it's just one player. Oh, Rubino. Actually got caught through the Less wall there. One. Yeah, this is now an issue. Starkso is going to have to do wonders, but time. 14 seconds. Where, where are they off to? They, huh? they're, they're, they're pivoting back towards A. 10 seconds. seconds left. they got to move. He's going to TP across. Oh, my God. Huh? Oh, my God. What is going on? <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't. I can't be having rounds like this. It's not good for me. My mental health on the line, but Team Liquid looking fine with five alive. It's down to the three on the other side who've just been drawn across the map in most curious of ways. Shados and Shadow, probably baffled as to what just happened. I mean, if Liquid are doing these late round hits, fair enough, but that felt a little too close. A little too close. Yeah, don't get me wrong, yeah, Kiko cleared it, you know, to an extent. Felt comfortable enough to call them back over, but that was risky as hell. Shadow. Last player standing. Ow, an attempt was made. Not going to really find much value for it. Shadow's going to get out of there. Rifle in hand, but... Josh, how do you feel about that round? Well, it seems to me that Liquid's like, oh, you know what? Yeah. Nobby won a major. 
and then they right. <laughs> tried to load up a demo from Navi, but they yeah. found the one from like 2015. Like, yeah, yeah. And then they're trying to like emulate that right now. So, you know, a lot of very slow rounds, a lot of like kind of misdirection, but it was not yeah. even misdirection. It's just like, oh, we got a whiff of this. We're going to just end the round with literally five seconds left because that's all we can do. And uh, I mean, right now it's working a little bit. Question I mean, it was mark? working on split. It got them the round. And right? that did have to bail them out of a couple of yeah. those like 1v2, 1v3s. <laughs> but I mean, I, as I was saying last game, like, okay, you can't be nervous. I was nervous there. I, I was, I, I yeah, was like, come on. are they even going to get to the site in time? I was, I was a little bit worried. There, there was a moment of doubt. But hey, it's the first round for Liquid. Koi, pretty frustrated with that. It felt like they did everything at least to the second and then missed out on that A site, which they had stacked. Keep in mind, it was only Starkso on towards B. So we go back in. And it does feel like I am casting Na'Vi, but potentially with someone like Edward on the roster. So <laughs> yeah. it's a bit of a throwback even for me. Big fan of that roster though. Good old times. As it stands. Is he gonna clear wine with this? I Ooh, hope so. Nope. Jesus. Again, this is so precarious. Stark so he's, he's stalled them out, but he's now gonna get pressured. Jampi just dives on him, but the trade's there. Mystic gonna keep things favorable. Wine didn't get cleared, but it gets cleared out by the weapon, leaving camo irrelevant to the round. This it's it's explosive from Liquid, but it is working. Yeah, it's explosive in, at the right moment. And I I have to point out that they've been really working on their coordination and losing yeah. that op here for camo is not what you want to see happen here. Like everything was chalked and then it's like, oh, the one silver line and the saving grace is that we get to keep the op in the next. No, just kidding. No, you don't. That goes there. Again, this pressure on towards tree, right? Just like, it yeah. looked like Starkso did so well to stall then, right? The nade came out, like slowed them down, underhand flash, but Liquid are happy just roll into it. Yeah, I think doing those types of plays by pushing into Garden there and not just going straight into a straight line like yeah, a, yeah. a bot just running into the site like, oh, I got to go this way. And just being able to realize and assess the situation. Hey, the, the KO's here. He's throwing a nade like this. I could go in and, and try to like duel this guy, create a lot of pressure. Get As long as they're not on the site and my teammates can get the site and plant the spike, that's all that I really need to do. So let me go and take this duel because it's 50-50. That's worth it. Okay, this is now getting a little scarier for Koi. Starting to see that potential of Liquid coming through here, be it on a knife's edge or not. But again, this round isn't isn't going to be fun for Koi unless they get a couple of nice connections here. Sheriffs are out. Mid is starting to be controlled here, but you can really see how close by Starkso is getting. Going to have Shadow nearby too, because he's trying to play him into this, see what he can achieve. <laughs> Gave it a glance. Doesn't fall for it. Already Nats has slipped ahead of this. Let's go Cabrino on the other side. Nice shot there towards Yampi. That's big. Individual moment there. Going to cost them Yampi. No if trade for Enzo. This and he gets his hat off. Gets all the info. They can go wherever. They probably go A here because they're right behind. You'd imagine, right? They've got they've got such a nice pinch towards the site. They know both players are going to be tucked on the site itself. Maybe one hell, one heaven. Let's see what they can do. Can they clear it cleanly? Kiko already going to take a look and spot so no one is actively playing into this. Rubino, belting shot again. The boy is trying to put in some serious work. And Shados, the only one standing. Enzo down low. And a 1v3. I mean, he's not sitting perfectly himself. Down at 56 HP. And already the drift back from Kiko's great. Going to make this harder to clear. Shados. Yeah, he's not getting any play on this one, trying to bait out, but they have a player towards heaven. No one's falling for it. Nico with great work there, but again, Liquid very, very oh, happy pivoting across this map. It's it's a little scary to witness at times because we're seeing individuals kind of creeping forward. Yambi getting caught there on his own again against the Sheriff, but Nats on the bailout in mid. And if I'm Shadow, I'm actually big sad here because he got his Sobalti and then he had to be on a Sheriff eco round and now that he has a gun round again, what's gonna happen is, well, there's a Yoru with a Yoru ulti, so he doesn't even get to really use it because if he uses it at the wrong time, maybe Yoru pops out of his ulti with a shorty, you know, in the back pocket. So it's gonna be really interesting to see how they set up the, the Sobalti here on this round. I think they should leverage it 100%, whether it be on a retake, whether it be on some sort of trap play. They know that there's a lot of pressure towards a main, especially with the wall that they've been placing. Yes. So maybe they try to do some sort of play to really just stuff that. And you can get really good Soba ulti lines from Garden or, or Heaven all the way through yep. a main. So if they read that, hey, Tim, Team Liquid's going to go for this aggressive a main control, they're going to get the orb, they're going to put a lot of pressure here, and then they're probably going to split the map by 
working through mid. Let's see if we can set the Silva up to get a really good beam line from it. And you can do it from different places. I love doing the... Uh, let's what? let's forego the strat name, but getting into B main huh. and doing it from behind. Let's say that. Josh? Yes. Josh, I know we're in Germany, we're in Berlin, <laughs> but you need to relax. All right, relax. Hey, I didn't make it up, okay? Really? I did not make it up. Oh, who did? What, the strat or... Uh, the, the name of said strat. Oh, no, I made, I made the oh, name okay, of the so, said strat. Right, so it is your fault. Brilliant, yeah. that's great. Thank you for that one. Okay. But I didn't... <laughs> uh -huh. Look, when it comes to the Germans and their... Hold up, hold up. Oh, we'll come wow. back to that. What? In God's name is that from that? Camo has oh, done it back to them, though. What's just gone down? And you know the clip now includes you saying the Germans, so I hope you're happy about that one. Camo! I was looking at this screen. I'm like, wait, what? It's, it's live. live. Yeah, unlucky. Mystic now, this is all topsy-turvy. Would he still expect Camo here? Oh, this is bizarre. Spike left on its own, does it drift on back to clear on through? He does, Mystic, heads up work there, clearing Camo. Noting that he didn't fall back his way. And now it's on Shados, 1v2. Oh man, this is, this is tough. Enzo still with a lot of kit here too. Oh, just about caught him on the heels, but couldn't quite do the damage he wanted. But Shados unrelenting, right? He's gonna keep going forward here. The barrel spotted, but he didn't note it. Mystic does well, but what a brilliant start from both sides. They're happy to take those, I mean, I say happy to take those fights. Nats just hit a, a worldy shot. Like those three were just silly. Yeah, I was looking at this one. Yeah, so, don't do I, that. yeah, don't do that, that was my mistake. It was. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I got to see it on the replay at go. least. There you are. It was a big round by Nat. Yeah. I mean, he's been having a lot of impact with those. He has. Every, for every one, uh, one round that he kind of greased away, he'll win two in this place. Yeah. Well, we're going <laughs> to see four ulti stacked up on Koi right now, including that Sova ulti. It's, it's just so sad when you have these ults that they're so expensive now, too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, you're, you're, you just spend so long racking them up all the ulti orbs, and then you finally get it, and you don't get to use it for three rounds. You might only get to use it once per half. Yeah, you can, you can, I mean, Camo's been able to invest his, but that's, you know, as I said, beyond that, you're right, Shadow not being given that opportunity, the timing, exceptional, and Camo picking back up where he left off two for himself this round, is Natso still alive, and he's heating up here, Yampi as well. Are they gonna get any more fair fights here? Camo doesn't want to give him a fair fight, but he's gonna give him a little bit of a threatening posture. What? Again! Taking these fights. Nats makes them favorable somehow on Stark, so position's gonna be noted. What are you meant to do with this? Right side, but is it the right time? What can one man do? Yeah, absolutely. Pivot away. Yampi not taking any, any risks in this. Leaves Nats on guard duty. Gets basically the freest plant of his life. It's interesting, though, that they, Team Liquid went through mid there. They saw the left. jet smoke on the dart. They knew the knives were popped. They still went into it. They lost three. But Nats just bailing them out again. And he keeps doing it. Nats feeling it out now. Really answering back because, again, Camo did well. He did some good damage, right? Took the fight there. But the fact that Nats just swings it and wins it is a nasty little play up. We yeah, haven't seen the, the, the Yoru ulti yet, but we're, we do see the Yoru ult and the Silva ulti both online. I wonder to see if we're going to see a combination where the Silva ulti is on top of the Yoru and just tries to get the free kills with that, and then using that as space to either hit a site or use that to walk into the opposite site like we've seen a couple times. But that is what my eyes are on for this round. Here comes the Yoru ulti. And yeah, it's just the Euro going in, and the Sova's right there, and they're going to walk into the other side. Yeah, this this is Finds drawing all of it. No, not yet. Oh, and no. they actually won't, but site control gained. What do you do with it, though? Exactly. It's, it's, they could have four people on B. They don't know. And they're still going to walk in on this. They're not stopping anytime soon. That. I mean, oh. he's feeling out the game. He's, yeah. he's walking in first. He is entry fragging here, basically. Stark, so... I mean, that's got to be gutting. But again, they still have Kiko over here. So is this going to be that like late double pump? Going to try and use the value of this positioning now? Shados clearly didn't see a jump up. Clearly didn't see the player. 
Yeah. Now he is going to, but I mean, by now, they've already lost the site itself. Yeah, just being able to get into the site here and getting the spike planted in the 4 on 4 is going to be really good because Yumpy has his Viper ulti, so they're going to use that as the win condition. The Sov ulti from Shadow is online, though, and here oh, it is. That's huge. The blast in the back. He only got damage. He did not get a kill with it, and they're not going to be able to use that on the retake now. But the cross, the, the, the cross still isn't left. fully safe. Yes, they can dart, smoke it dart, off. Yeah. Can they do some serious damage on this one? Waiting for maybe that spike to go down. You can see the spam Stop potential. Down. Enzo, the timing on this one. Paranoia Auto sent. Closed. Kiko still trying to keep him at bay. 15 seconds. The Paranoia posted. They're trying to maybe hit that cross now. Good tag. No frag. 10 seconds. Ten They're seconds running left. low on time. Using this basically to facilitate the cross. Kiko going to try and keep them safe for the plant. Mystic on the follow-up. And now Camo's gone down. It's just on Grabino. Again, nice edge round here. Very late. Lots of ults used just for the cross, but it works out. Liquid land. And with six rounds to their name, they'll be feeling good about this. I I need to look at that back because I'm pretty sure Shadow had drone and dart there. He used his ulti before anything happened. And then instead of like, I, I don't know what they thought was in sight. Like th there must've been a missed comm there or something because what we saw was the dart coming in on the site and the omen flash towards site slash hell area. But three of Team Liquid was still in A main. I feel like they could have used a drone there, found yeah. out, oh wait, they're not out yet, then when Liquid has to finally push because the Viper Wolf's gonna be low on mana, they, they, you know, that's when the dart comes behind, they get to get the free kills and the spams. Something went really wrong in that yeah. round for Koi. Yeah, it feels like when you, you have to kind of watch back, like almost remove from it to see everything that happened, but at two to six, the one thing that I'm noting is that Koi need to strike back and they need to start going soon. Not getting a grip on Liquid's approach here, particularly in like some late clear towards middle, but not much value from this. And you can already see that re-clear, right? Koi looking to try maybe backfill the space a touch. It'd be baller if Yampi walks into A site and pops his ulti towards tree or something. I don't think it's going to happen, but that would be I baller. Mean, it's Yampi. It is Yampi. It is Yampi, and he's done something quite similar, but they've lost out in middle, right? So a little bit of an exchange of goods. So it does give them some sort of passage towards the A-side, but not particularly safe, right? Look how close Koi are to this. Surrounding this ult on so many fronts. Nice flash, Starkso turns it, comes back out, can't do much more. Good trade for Camo and Shadow. Still keeping them in this, a Mystic not gonna make it matter. Can't do much more with a Judge, but again, so many curiosities in these rounds, Josh. Yeah, very interesting to see the padding there. I thought Liquid actually had a pretty decent um, idea there with the flash coming through and they're going to scale out with the flash. I thought that, oh, this is looking good. They have like an idea of how to get out of this Viper ulti, but I feel like something went wrong there with the pathing or something. They, you know, the Yoru ran through like he was his clone, but you know, they're not like clearing the left or the right. You're just running through into like the most open area where you're exposed to the most angles and you're hard clearing just like right in front of you. Why not go through the hard right or the hard left of it as well and yeah. clear like the close angles where spam those like common Spam's spots. Out, that, right? Yeah. Like, Obviously, you don't want to get like counter spammed or anything like that, but I feel like there's like a, a good way and a bad way to do it, and I feel like they could have been a little bit more efficient of how they scaled out of that ulti. Yeah, Camo. Again, potentially under pressure in middle. Doesn't get played in quite yet. I'm looking at the difference in liquid here. Pace looks a little different. The timing towards taking on middle. Camo's got to be cautious. Doesn't get punished. You can see Nat's considering closing in, but it's actually stuck so to find Yampi. Over towards a reads the time well. Yampi not getting away with that individual lurk in. Red and booked. Rubino now fancies his chances at it, but his Nat's on the punish. Can he get the trade? He can. Trade it back. Team Liquid gonna keep themselves at least within touching distance in a 3-3. Three three. Camo still trying to find an access point to this round. Didn't find it in middle, looking to find it through short, and he gets overwhelmed. Now there's problems. Do they try and springboard from the back? They do, but it's gonna be Mystic on the case and good damage towards Shados. Gonna dip away. But by now, they've got the spike down on the site. It's going to be a tough retake. Oh. Spike planted. Near impossible. 11 HP for Shados. And he knows that Mystic was by tiles. So he could be top mid, he could be outside B. And we're going for the instant hunt right now, too. Looks like Mystic's just going to miss him here on this timing. Shados might be able to escape with his gun. Yeah, it'd be but. hard to close down on at this point. wonder if they can close that gap or if they do chase it that far. I mean, Mystic can't. So it's he wants to. really weird, though. Yampi walks out A super I, early. He yep. kind of like trolls that a little bit. Like, yep. oh, hey, we're winning on attack of Ascent 6-3. to three. 
his walls up for mid so that they could do a lot of like rocking the boat and faking out the sights. He walks out A, instantly dies. Koi has a man advantage. Instantly, three of them try one by one running off Cat and taking fights. As I don't oh think God. they need to do that in this, that, that situation. The Viper Wall's at mid. They've yeah. killed the A Lurker. And unless they're like grouping two people, Mark and three people, Cat, and they're gonna fight together at the same time with the Tower Flash, all this stuff, yeah, yeah, I yeah. feel like it's not worth it. A little unnecessary, potentially. Yeah. Uh, at this point, I do wonder if there's gonna be a, maybe a timeout coming in. Doesn't seem to be the case here. Just gonna be closing out the half, probably, at this point. Three to seven, Liquid. <laughs> gonna be happy enough with this one. And, and you can start seeing the strain on Koi. Not looking as happy about this one. Financially not sitting pretty either. Losing out on that rifle will cost them. Alt now gonna be coming in for Kiko too. That's gonna be in the back pocket whenever they fancy it. Fake teleport. Looking to toy with them in middle. And again, taking this mid control a little earlier in the round, give them so many more options. And Cypher's now been putting his trips in middle <laughs> because the shocks are coming out for it. So they've had to play into middle a lot. Here comes the Euro info. Here comes the Omen flash. But that's just to get a lot of pressure so that the mid walk can come. Oh, but Camo, that timing was so good for him. Punishing Mystic on the back of that. Catch him as he sent out that paranoia. But they, I guess they've been rewarded with the A site, but again, at a player disadvantage. And this situation was bizarre before, remember? They went for that strange approach to be <laughs> that very late pivot towards A to try and utilize the space that Kiko got. And now my kind of question marks are going to sit with Nats because they're basically taking the site with three, right? Rather than the four that they have, they're going to opting for just three of them to take this. And they lost the Omen Smoke, so they're scared to cross. They use the Viper Orb to get across the, the door here. They're not closing it yet because oh. I think they're creating space, an opportunity for Nats to be able to backstab through Garden. But now that Nats is dead, he's going to definitely... Wait, is this too early? Doesn't this take like 20 seconds or something? I don't know. Forgive me for not watching Jonas's videos. My bad. Yeah, that's on me. Again, does seem a little preemptive, but... Knowing that Nats just died at B from Sidewalk or B main or wherever that was, and that Nats saw them at spawn, I feel like they were so far away that he could have waited another 5-10 seconds before he did that, but maybe it's perfect timing. Here are the... Oh my god, the... Almost, almost! Enzo making something of it. It's down a Yampi, though, in a 1v3. This is difficult. He's got the plant to play for. Ah, he spammed out. They're all too aware. Gonna share the wealth here, get Shadow back on that ult as well. Very well handled, and a couple of things going wrong there for Liquid. Not getting that backstab they wanted, idea. even with all the space they garnered. They just didn't have what they needed there. Yeah, being able to stabilize on those post plants and just make sure you're on the same page. Are you playing in or are you playing out? Because, yeah. you know, if Mystic's alive for the... Sorry, if um, Grabino's alive for the defense, he's going to have his smoke up. He's going to smoke off main. So if you're yeah. Viper, you're retreating back into main because you have a Molly or something to play the spike with, then you, your teammates are basically two people in the site holding against five. It's either play all in or all out. You can't just do this like half-half thing. Sit in between, yeah. yeah. Because then it, they they destroy everyone in sight. Now they have a three on one, smoke on the spike or whatever, make you peek, and then, you know, what are you going to do about it? Yeah, you're not going to win. Especially not without lineups. No. No, I was kind of hoping to see something, but yeah, you're absolutely right. Well, we saw something. We did. Was <laughs> it, it good? It wasn't yeah. good, though. <laughs> but it was and something. It, and it looks like a pace change, a gear shift from Liquid. They're actually committing far heavier towards taking this market control. Oh, wow. Mystic with a belter. Camo's gone down. And Camo, oh my, what are these peaks from Liquid? Just shouldering so many of these angles and winning the fight. Exactly and now it's going to isolate the players. Shadow does get a little bit of a look in, actually, from CT. Surprised he got away with that. And now it maybe plays out Shade off slightly. Yes, it does. This is massive from him. Making something out of the round that looked somewhat lost. Shade off. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was going to ask if they're going to save with a Silver ulti, but yikes. Oh, oh no. Nats chasing down where that was coming from, finding. And look at Starkso, 1 HP in a dream. Did I tell you about Starkso's 1 HP clutch? Um, you heard that story? You can tell me again. Yeah, yeah. So basically, Enzo was on 52 HP. Yampi was sitting pretty, but the craziest thing happens. Wait, wait. I want, you know, it was the flash that really set in motion, the knife. And um, <clears throat> I don't think it's this round. You know, maybe it was one of the others when he was on 1 HP. Maybe it was from 2025 yeah, yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right. Yeah, I missed that one. Yeah, yeah. I got the years mixed up. It happens. Uh, Liquid back up now. The, the scoreline, I mean, Koi did recover a little bit, right? Like, Quite got themselves four rounds here. A little bit of a buffer, but is that enough? 
I mean, if the, we're being realistic, let's they've you know. traditionally been pretty, I mean, terrible on their defense. So, you know, looking at it, it's probably not the worst thing. I think yeah. ascent attack side is definitely pretty hard because getting out those chokes is very difficult. And shadow, but what we see fuming. from them is that they do. Ooh, uh, yeah, shadow shadow fuming. Fuming. True. 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 Actually, true. Yeah, I We've, would be tilted. <laughs> I'm not happy. Koi does look like they have good game plans on their attack. So you okay. can't count them out just no, yet. No. And as we said before about Team Liquid, like right yeah. now they're probably feeling themselves really good. And if they are feeling Started good, they might be a little, a little bit, bit overheated. Yeah, they might okay. be a little overconfident and start doing too many mistakes. Granted, they've been hitting their shots. So we'll see. Oh, camo. Right off the rip, gonna take all that space. Yampi did get noted, as you can note here on the screen, suppressed. So they've got to be aware he's around somewhere, but clearly had no idea he was this close. And Yampi gets away with Daylight Robbery Liquid, tearing him apart, man. Grabino, you gotta go way above expectation here. And there's a three man squad swinging you on Cat. I don't think you're gonna get much more. Grabino. Cover Anything to do here. Smoke there. Tries to swing it. Not gonna happen. Yampy. How have you done that? How think, have you done that? I think now it's chalk for Koi because yeah, wraps. when when Liquid's playing like this, where they're all so comfortable and confident that they're yeah. able to do this, but not only go for the plays, because we always see them going for the plays, sure. it's just that it doesn't always work yeah. out for them. But now that they're hitting their shots and it's working out for them, they're catching the great timings, they're yep. hitting their shots, everything Woo! works. This is like what you do. Like when you're playing this style, this is how you play the game. Like you need to make sure you're hitting your shots. And if, it, if it's working, it works really well. And that's the Liquid we're seeing right now, which is a stark contrast yeah. from what we saw in kickoff, yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, you can see it on the coaches there, right? Like, yeah. the, the, the face of, like, panic but joy. S but like, surprise at the same <laughs> yeah, time. Yeah, literally, like, oh my god, it's working. <laughs> like, we can do this? <laughs> Guys, we can, we can win? It's looking like the case. Mystic, gonna be forced away. Gets to re-peak, though, and actually gotta be cautious here. Yeah, forced off this one. Grabino already gonna find Yampi. It's Kiko to answer back. Oh, what a shot. Lovely. Oh, dearie me. It's just shooting fish in a barrel, isn't it? Clean enough, Liquid gonna be happy with that. Four still standing. And making light work of Koi. Now, again, for Koi, you were kind of hoping for maybe a confidence builder out of that, something, a, you know, a silver lining, some sort of reward. They're coming into what is gonna be probably one of the best opportunities to get around here, and they really need to strike back properly. It's gonna be a, a tough one because we saw how good Liquid was with their bonus rounds on uh, the first map. So, you know, yes. making a very expensive co for Koi, this even if Koi ends up winning this round, nice like, spot. they'd still be down by five rounds, yeah. and they wouldn't have a lot of economy. So, not only do they need to win this, they need to win it convincingly. Love the airy spam with a dart, and probably the Yoru flash combo. Yep. Take flight. Better with an Odin, but, you know. Hey, can't win them all, right? You can't. Beggars cannot be choosers. I believe that is the phrase. Yes. Uh, <laughs> So, a, a nice early attempt. Again, Liquid will have, you know, little pocket plays for ideas like this. And this is the round to bring it out in. You, you know, you're not going to be keeping these weapons much longer, right? It's a bonus for a reason to try and come up with something, a concept up against the rifles. Already doing a good bit of chip damage towards camo. So, it looks like Koi going to be readdressing towards this A site. Very familiar defense from Team Liquid that we saw on Split where they know that they can't hold everything, so they're trying to hold B really strong, and they're trying to hold for the, the cat run-up. So if it's an A split, they just 2v whatever, however many people are coming up cat, three people usually. And if it's A site, they play off the trips. And they're just going to have to play the full retake, but it doesn't matter. They did this on split too. Yeah. It came down to one player alive for Koi, left. and then Team Liquid was able to run away with the half after that. Spam. Again, close, but not quite doing exactly what Endo would have wanted, but they can clear the door pretty quick. You see Koi do get the plant down, five still standing. Three yeah. on the site, two towards main. Omen's Mystic has a smoke, <laughs> has his paranoia. Zarkso gonna at least delay that for now. Not gonna be cleared either, this is good time purchase. Wait and see this go through. There it is, flash high. Gonna start drifting down from this one, Mystic. We trying to smoke off main, and here we go. Nat dives in. How's he gone two from this? Sarkso looking to be overwhelmed. He does in the end. It's Enzo there. Shados called Last upon. How much can one man do? Stunning from Shados. Well, it came down to Oof. one again for Koi. So hey, very they, expensive they live. round. They live. It's fine. You know, round on the board. Here you go, was, round by round. That was really well played by Team Liquid, though. Yes, when, it was. What I saw there happened was 
I think Nats popped his camera and tagged the player close by door. So he's taking the dart out of his um, stomach as yeah. the door's getting broken. So he, oh. I think he might have like, canceled it. And then on that timing, Nats jumps out with his shorty to clear anybody in the close quarter at lane. He's able to switch to his rifle and kill the guy that's taking the dart out still. So I, I, I don't know what that reaction is from the coaches. It's like, that was, all things considered, a pretty decent round. Yeah, you can't be mad about that one. But again, right off the rip, right off the start, Nats with the read. Takes away camo, removes the frontline man. The paranoia going to come through. Does he uh, get drown? seen by the Aldrin? I think he did. Underhand flash, but look at the bodies here. Yeah, yeah absolutely spammed out. But it's Mystic again to make the most of it. Does so well. They just choke them out of this round. Shados can't do it again. Too many bodies in the way this time around, and Liquid make it up to 11. Very good defenses here for Team Liquid. They know exactly what they need to do. They know they're getting their opening picks. They're staying alive afterwards. They're waiting for reinforcements to arrive. They're not overheating by re-peaking or getting too aggressive after they're getting the initial picks. So a lot of things, check in, check in the tick boxes of the fundamentals. They're flooding out together on the same timing as the Stobis fighting from lane. So many things that are going well, and it's all about the coordination issue that they had in kickoff. They have eliminated it. Well, I don't want to say eliminated, but they've definitely solved it for this matchup at the very least. We'll see if that yes. uh, creeps up again in the future matches. I mean, it, it this this really is just a temperature check though, isn't it, right? Like yeah. the first game coming back in for the regular season, this was always going to be, okay, have they fixed the bigger issues from kickoff? Now, you, you might get an answer in this game, maybe because Koi haven't fixed some of their issues. It's very hard to take, you know, from a very small sample size of two maps, essentially, it looks like at this pace, if it has been the bigger fix, right? A different team could com completely make Liquid look like they haven't adjusted to everything. Right. But to eye test alone, it is a tick in the box, right? It's a lot of those things you were looking for coming into this that you preemptively said, if they fix X, Y, and Z, it looks like they've done their work during the time off. Now, whether or not that gives them complete freedom for the rest of the season, who knows, right? There, there could be like a hard stop as well that comes up next week, the week up, who knows when it actually eventually hits. But yes, they've done enough here. It looks like they've done enough to kind of step up from where they were. Now, again, these two had met a couple of times, I think, relatively recently. First time, I think, Liquid won, and then when it mattered, Koi won, right? It was You're that right. repeat matchup. So again, it, it could play out to the same sort of effect, who knows? But at eye test alone, Koi Got still need a lot more, it looks like. Koi do need a lot more. Liquid is definitely on the right path. And if I'm Liquid's coach, I'm probably making them watch this and say, look at this, now watch from kickoff. Yeah. And what do you see the difference is? Yeah. And just, just ingrain it, like burn this into your your mind. You close your eyes and you see this. You need to see what the difference is. You need to see how much better you guys play when you do it like this. Yeah, again, examples of it now, but this is scary for Nats. Nah, trying to get involved. Old teammate Shodos finally puts him down and making them brawl their way out on this one. Again, at least the plant is going to be here, but you're going to see the ult coming in from Kiko. But again, they're confident, right? And that's the scariest form of Liquid. But they're feeling themselves. Plenty of information now. What can Kiko do about this one? Trying to toy with him a little bit here. Shadow's going on to find Mystic, so maybe not going to find the impact he wants. Let's get himself out of here. Bro? What is he up to? Little <laughs> oh, bro? Nope. Standing. Nope. I had high hopes for that, Josh. I had real high hopes, and they are in the ground. That was uh, yep. <laughs> that yep. was very interesting. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm, I wonder why he didn't come out of that first uh, w when he did the flash into B main. I yeah. wonder why he didn't come out of his ulti there and he went for the TP into D main and then didn't instantly flash peek. I feel like there was a little bit of a hesitation there, and I think if he had instantly just, just chosen, to yeah, yeah, just commit to the strike. Because you guys have been playing so well. You've been hitting your shots and you've been so just like in their faces, stuffing them. Why would you kind of just like do this like Try and woo, lackadaisical it. thing? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Just just go for it. You've been winning these duels. Yeah, I... I, I Any of rounds. <laughs> you, you do have 11. And, and you were down a man. Yeah, like, it's... I, look, player mistakes can happen, all right? You know? Not flawless. I'm going to watch every body yours back, all right? I'm getting clips. I never make mistakes. Never? Here. No, it's always my teammates. <laughs> <laughs> You've heard it here first. Uh, this round, though, more than anything, probably just a chat and a check-in. We've got classics, and that's about it, and a gamble stack. So don't be too worried about this one. For Koi, though, a great chance to hopefully get those alts coming up. You've got Grabino one away, not exactly a priority, but Shadow, one off for his. Camo, very close by. So a couple they can maybe out. start looking towards getting on. Beyond that, Koi needs to just keep this clean. Caution no mistakes here. here. Just keep this simple... Keep it clean. 
They're keeping it open-ended right now. They're gonna see what they get. The smoke up on Garden. The drone through sees nothing. They broke the camera at A main. Everything Team Liquid is expecting for an A hit. Yeah, it's looking but like... But Liquid... Yeah, yeah. They're, they're, they're parting this way. Li it should be fine. Liquid's like, okay, no, there's no way. They broke the camera. They're doing all this pressure towards A. Like, they're, they're going to do this as... And they're going to see that we know that they're going towards A side, so they're going to come back to B. So let's hold this B stack. I mean, they even popped the ult with this, too. You know, when you're down this many rounds, I think it's good. It's worth it. If you're going to get this round 100%, go for it. Because... Okay. If if you don't use it, what are you gonna like? You can't save things for the perfect opportunity. Like the perfect opportunity might not ever come. What happens if it's like okay, Koi walks into this round, it's seven to eleven, I mean, but then they be, use it at the wrong point. It and may they, not be or perfect, but there's gonna be a better opportunity than when you half cleared the site already. Felt no pressure. I mean, obviously hindsight is twenty twenty. You know, we get to see the full map. They don't. I'm just curious if maybe there could have been a slightly better time for it. But you know, we'll see. We'll we'll see if that comes through, right? Like as I said, yeah. At this point. Should be a formality. We can just go down to the spike, really. See if they can take some, maybe a little bit of something away. <laughs> Actually, that got a little more costly than expected. Shados goes down as well. I don't know what the finance is going to be like. Koi today, should be able to get a purchase. There are other ways to be useful. A so, worried. I remember a while ago, people were talking about, you know, Sage Res. Is it worth it to Sage Res for mm. economy? And I feel like there's so many things that you do in this game. Like, you have an Omen ulti. There's limited things that you could do with it to actually make it worthwhile. Mm. But one of the things you could do is you can run, pick up an AWP off the ground or, or a rifle, and then Omen ulti across the map to, to, to save it. Yeah. This is essentially kind of what they use the KO ulti for. It's not necessarily to like close around. It's to close yeah. around with as many people as possible. So making sure that they have economy to win, like all, you know, they can only lose two more rounds before yeah. the game's over. So realistically, they need to make sure that these rounds are super clean. And I think that is why they went for the KO ulti, not yeah. necessarily get into the site, but just to keep their economy up. Make yeah. sure that like that one ulti is worth three plus guns. And it did work out. Now, Kiko. Oh. Did he get away? I think he might have done, because they're not particularly looking at him like he's there. How much time's left on his... I do uh, Yeah, Enough. zero idea. Camo just drifting in, none the wiser to Kiko's position, just dipping through that wall at the perfect time to evade the owl drone. And again, B doesn't look like it's particularly open here. You still have that Viper's Pit sitting in place. Kiko counts to three and pulls the trigger, doesn't find any reward for it, but it's a drift towards A, and there's still so many bodies here. Oh. Amazing. Oh, it's unpleasant to witness. <laughs> Just no finesse to it, but it works. Enzo gets to keep his life, keep them two players to the good, essentially. 30 seconds left. And now oh, they're starting to stall go. out a little bit here. They, they've, they've got so much more to work through, and they haven't even really started to clear towards the sites. This is just for middle. Middle and cat, that's it. If, if they... They have to go for this, though. They have enough money to buy next. And if they save here, it just doesn't really make any sense because, oh, man. Because, like, it, it's you safe. lose one more round and then the game's over Ten anyways. Like, left. why not oh. at least, like, try to go for it because you can still buy next? I, I... Disagreeing. Just disagreeing on I this one. I don't know. I mean, maybe they, maybe I'm like miscalculating the money, but like. I mean, you got what? 5.3 on Shadow, 4.6 on Stark Zone. Match point. I do want to see what Camo and Shados get towards financially, but. Uh, I mean, one off jet knives. Could have spread it out, yeah. I mean. They, I don't know. I, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is, this is, that's horrific though to have to save on that point, right? That's yeah. how you, that, like, momentum wise, mentality wise, that's gonna sting. Koi now need to run it back flawlessly just to get OT. Can't even win out, and now it's, it's all on taking it to 12. And already Mystic's got a whole lot of information pushing up all the way through A main. They've got a good read on this now. It could still be middle, it could still be cap, but they know that A main is not on the menu right now. So it keeps them firm in their belief here. Camo, gonna get all red again. Camo's in a whole lot of danger, and Kiko actually gets caught. Drifting through on CT, Shados watching. Camo gonna go down, Natsism dead to right. Can he get to dodge? Does he get to keep his life here? Shadow gonna post this. Doesn't, I mean, he tags Nats, but that's not it. And now Yampi on the punish, Yampi again on the follow-up. 
and it's just crystal clear. Koi capitulate in the final moments and Liquid make it look easy in the end. Yeah, Liquid looking completely re revitalized from kickoff. They are playing into their strengths super well right now. They aren't doing the same overheating issue that they were doing before. They're playing with so much more uh, coordination yes. and composure. We're seeing the rounds dial down to the last five seconds before they start playing the spike and they're still, you know, rock solid, not freaking out. So a lot of good things that we've seen. And, you know, as we talked about, you know, during kickoff, Team Liquid had the most potential to swing from one of the bottom four teams up to like one of the top four teams. And we might be seeing kind of like the start of that, maybe? Yeah. I mean, look, it's enough indicators, right? Like, you, you've got to take it at eye test alone. We don't know the depth. We don't know how long this will go for. But by all rights, Liquid looked good today. I think Map 2 got a little shaky. It did seem a little bit uh, a little bit out of sorts, I guess. You know, But again, that composition's still new. Look and see how it works with them. Nat's having a belting performance did certainly help in Map 2. But again, looking like a tick in the box for Liquid. I think most people and most of the fans will be happy to see there has been growth and work put in from kickoff to now. Utilizing the time exceptionally well. Looking like they found a couple of those flaws and polished them out there. On the other side for Koi, work's not done yet. Some of those issues still re-emerging. <laughs> And uh, yeah, look, it's 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 got to feel good for Liquid to come out and kind of show off and kind of feel good about what they've just achieved, right? It's the, the proof is in the pudding at the end of the day. And they've, they've had a fantastic showing here. Have to see how they fare going forward, though. Does it keep up? Do they get red? Do people work it out? Oh, we've got uh, Stevie on camera. If you've never met Stevie before, that was Stevie. We love Stevie. He's one of our favorite people. But uh, speaking of favorite people, uh, if you do want to hear more from the likes of Nats or Enzo, we'll be going right down to post plant with Yinzu and Kakuka. Thank you very much, Pansy and Stu. Are we favorite people? Did we make the list? I'm about to cry. Yeah, we made the list. Uh, I'm back with Kakuka. As Pansy said, we will be joined in just a moment by Nat and uh, Enzo. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're not sitting that far apart uh, for no reason. But yeah, they're going to be joining us in just a little bit. But before that, uh, Kakuka, mm. you know, you were very, very, very uh, on it with what yes. you wanted to see from Liquid. Mm -hmm. Did you see that today? Are you happy? Uh, yeah, exactly. I think that there are still some holes in the defense but from the attack side. As I said, every single plan, I feel like you know every run what they want and how they want to do it. I feel like if we take a look at these numbers and we see mm -hmm. that Nats is feeling comfortable, it's not only that he's getting the kills, when you see him in game, he knows exactly where to, he wants to be and what he wants to achieve with that. Same way, I was really looking forward into this map in particular to maybe see Giko back on the jet. Yeah. He's actually in the Yoru and he uh, today we saw Giants playing the Yoru on Breeze and I was a little bit on the... Well, you know, by how Fiti played. But I saw intention after every single thing that Liquid was doing. And that makes me very happy. Are Liquid back? Yes, totally. They're back? Yeah, 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 totally. It's not the fact that they just won today. There were some mistakes, yes, but I feel like they 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 came back from all of them and they were able to perform even in those clutch situations. So even I think that this is the beginning of them being back. Uh, are we moving them on the thermometer, you know? Are they oh, yeah, no sure. longer bone lukewarm? They're bone hot? Yeah, 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 for sure. Uh, I think that a, a good team is not made only with good plans. I think that there's some opportunism in there. It's not only the fact that you can take advantage of your opponent's mistakes, it's also that you can force those mistakes onto them. And the way that they were playing, the way that they were moving and retaking spaces and putting pressure, I think that shows that it's a very well-structured liquid. And I'm going to be honest, I did not expect it for today, so I'm very happy that I saw it. Yeah, I'm very happy as well. But what about the other side? Uh, what did you make of Koi in the end? Um, I'm still thinking about what I saw on Split, and I was looking at the camera shots, especially for Stark, so we were talking about the vibes, you know, yeah, how, yeah, how yeah. important it is to keep the energy up. Uh, and I saw him being a little bit devastated about the, the whole situation. Uh, you know how teams and, and players always say, oh, we, we just have to play our game. <laughs> Liquid today. Wait, who says that? <laughs> we just have to go out there and yeah, play our game. Play our Liquid game. today managed to play their game. And the response from Koi was like, 
I saw a couple of adjustments. I think that especially on Ascend, there's a round where they're in the uh, in the defense, and after um, uh, them losing one of their members, they actually go and push, and they have a quick reaction. But it was isolated moments, right? It, a team's greatness is based on managing to do that time after time. Is what is going to take you far. So um, I'm, I'd love to see the work that Liquid has put into this weeks. Um, I w I, now that we're going to have them here, I would love to ask them if they have been practicing against the teams that came to Madrid and what they learned. Yeah, from yeah. Sports. Give us a scrim box. Leak yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Leak it. Leak it. They're, not, they're gone. Yeah, <laughs> they're going to be joining us in just a moment. But I feel like it, it, felt, it felt like Liquid just played well. They played really well today mm. as opposed to Koi uh, playing badly, Quiet. you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not really giving me the same feeling as last year because every game it felt like just, oh, Koi, we just want you to do better, but I feel like they can do better. I, yes. I think maybe just a bad day in the office. Yeah, um, exactly. And um, uh, it's 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 not only sometimes we see Barbara going crazy on the coach camp, right? Nobody is a stranger to that. But today, uh, to me, was on the players. Like they were they were um, mad that things were not working and it's the fact that they don't have those responses but again i think that the responsibilities for both of the teams are different in team liquid you have enzo playing with experienced players and even if kiko is like the rookie he's not really a rookie right um you could say the same for koi right but you have shadow and and he's an inexperienced igl coming with all of these things of, of, of players that are just not on the same level for example and that's for young people. It doesn't feel that doom and gloom, though. Like I said, it's not giving kind of like, oh, how are they going to bounce oh, back? Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, I think yeah. that today it was just a, a, a bad showing from Koi. Like, I know they can they can do better. And if we literally just think about and um, go back to um, a split and how they were playing at the beginning of that map, there is definitely things they can do. Yeah, hey guys, and welcome. speaking of uh, doing better, here they come. Welcome, Nat, and welcome Enzo to Post Plant. You get to can we the offer you anything to drink? You guys yeah, you want a Red Bull? Don't make me Thank do this you. again. We, I dropped it we before. We run on water. Okay. We oh, run on water. Uh, that's the key. It's very, very nice to have you guys here, especially under the circumstances of what happened at uh, kickoff. I actually just wanted to ask you guys, great win today, uh, but from your perspective, what went wrong at kickoff? Why couldn't you do what you did today a couple of, uh, a month ago at this point? Question to you. Oh, yo. Uh, I wouldn't know where to start exactly because it's not one thing that went wrong. It's multiple things, but overall it's... Um, uh, we, we tried with a specific system in our team. We tried to make it a specific way and a specific way to practice. And we tried it all the way. And at kickoff, we could see the results and it did not work. So after kickoff, we changed a few things. Uh, we made things more intense in practice, more strict in many ways. Uh, I changed a few things in my IGLing also. We changed uh, things regarding like to the not the composition, yeah, the compositions of course, but the communication in the team also. And on a day-to-day -day, uh, practice, we saw the progress from, like it's been maybe three weeks that we have been practicing and we could see the progress every day. So we can see the change and yeah, I think that's that's it. I mean, can, yeah. can, can you share a little bit about uh, the IGLing point? What was it that you changed in terms of your IGLing? Ah, yes, you want to say? Me? Yeah. Why? My IGLing. I, he does IGL you, so I, I guess, yeah. No, no, yeah. but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh. um, I think I am known for being a very loose IGL in the sense that I give a lot of freedom to uh, everyone on the map and to make it short, the, um, to make it really short, the, the change is that everyone still has freedom but more responsibilities than before but I am much more strict in the way I do things and much more clear and assertive. I will just say what to do and we do. Basically that's the main change. I mean, definitely, it, it worked today. Uh, Nats, do you want to do you want to say something? You're approaching the, the the mic regarding his IGL, just. Yeah, I just agree with him. Oh, you agree with him? Yeah. Okay, so today you were actually feeling it. You know, we saw the the Nats that we learned to love and appreciate. What changed from from just your perspective from kickoff to today, just in you? What changed? Mm -hmm. Or do you feel like it's it's the same? What what do you think? What's the work that you had to do? Uh, to overcome what happened in kickoff? Uh, I just put some of uh, my stuff in his IGLing and now we find a way to make it beautiful. I think that the thing has changed. The recipe, yeah. We are going to talk about that in just a moment. But first, uh, Asen, you talked about the comp change. It feels like in EMEA, at least, people have on the whole, with the exception of Casey, have kept it pretty vanilla. Sometimes we see the Cypher, sometimes we see the Killjoy. Uh, Casey, you know, they were doing the Rainer, whatever racing uh, that they were doing. Uh, but it looks like you found a little bit of a sweet spot, right? You're not overcooking, but you're also changing it up from uh, the Metacom. So what was the reason for this? Are you guys happy with this as well? Why are you laughing? 
<laughs> I feel like <laughs> he's just, keeping are, information from are, us. Are you gonna say the reason? Go say the reason. No, you say. No, you. I mean, from your side, it's more interesting. You think? You can boast there, it. Honestly, there's no reason. We played Metacomp. Uh, we have realized that the teams that were successful were cooking their own recipe, their own food. I am French, I cook food also, oh. like sometimes good food, okay. And I just cooked that composition on a scent on my own. Uh, I woke up with that idea one day and I think that composition was never played before. And I was like, this fits our team because of that, that and that. The agents, the play style, everything. And we haven't shown much actually today about mm. it. So well, that's I, just like I, pure cooking. I need to hear what, what you think now, and that's For him, it was the cooking. What about you? I mean, he is always cooking. Viper is just interesting on this map. I just uh, send, the, you know, he is cooking, but I'm... I remember now. Should I say? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I remember what. Okay, okay, no, okay. I understand what he means on stream. Yeah, we were playing uh, Ascent. I said to him, Viper is incredible on this map. He picked Viper, and after he came with that idea. Oh, in ranked. Yeah. You did the to be fair, ranked you, idea. you are my my comfy stream in the morning. I have to say that I spent a lot of hours watching your We were streaming together in the morning, and and then he said, "Yeah, go play Viper." So I played Viper, and he played Astra, and we just did crazy things, and it was so fun. So then a I was like, <laughs> "What can we do?" That's a rank straw. Okay, that's very, very, very interesting. And speaking of interesting, uh, Nat, we have a little a clip to show you guys as well. I think this is a little bit of banter between you and Mystic. I have, sometimes you're so good, it's unbelievable. You know, it, it's, it's, it's the people that go gym, you know, it's like... It's a mystic t talking to you about going to the gym and you didn't look very impressed. <laughs> oh, it's just... Uh, it's just we have a joke. Uh, some people are going gym and uh, in this day they're playing very good and some people who is not going gym, we're trolling them. Oh, who won gym today? Today? Yeah. No one, no? No one. Oh, but then it doesn't stay. <laughs> no yeah, one. but you still play good, so it's not the gym thing, I feel yeah. like. Imagine when he goes gym. Oh. oh. He's a massive panda destroying everyone. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like you don't even need to. Your form was amazing. Like Kakuka said uh, earlier, you look great today, and the clutches as well. If we show you uh, a couple of these clips, if you want to have a look at this screen or this screen. Uh, Nat, it felt like you just couldn't lose a clutch. Uh, every single one that you were in this round, talk me through what was going through your mind. Uh, I mean, I, I should have won that 1v1 against Rich. And uh, I mean, when, uh, the moment when he caged me, it was uh, only one decision from me because I couldn't do anything else, but uh, I also didn't want to white because I'm 1 HP, so I decided to a little bit jiggle with him, and uh, my first bullet went into the headshot, and in the end we just shooting, so... Another day in the office, but um, overall, you know, it's not only the clutches that we saw, uh, we saw you way more comfortable, and I'm not calling you out, but I feel like in during kickoff, uh, some of your lurks were like out of in the wrong timing. You were getting in uh, late. Um, how did it feel today on the server to see the nuts that we saw like a year ago? I felt pretty well. Hopefully, we will see more of that lurks in the future games, and uh, people has to be ready for that. I think uh, just going off of what Bear is asking you, do you think it's fair for people to say that your kind of OG Masters Berlin Nat Cypher lurking style no longer works? Like people want you to evolve, people want you to do something different. Uh, is that fair? And do you feel like maybe there's still legs to that? Something should be changed in a little bit different way, but uh, most of the stuff will still work, but in a little bit different timings, a little bit cooking, it's all about some of the little, little, little stuff. And it has to be linked with the IGL at all times, otherwise yeah. it doesn't work, which is why we work a lot together in many aspects of the game all the time. That's yeah. uh, sweet. I wanted to ask you guys, we were talking about this before you guys uh, were here. Uh, of course, we had uh, some of the best teams in the world coming in for Madrid and coming here to EMEA. Uh, did you guys, did you guys uh, get to scream a lot against them? And, and if so, who did you think was very strong or who did you learn the most from? It's okay, they're gone now, so you can... <laughs> no, uh, we practiced against a lot of teams from Madrid. Um, we practiced a lot of Sentinels, a lot of Genji. From uh, even before Madrid, I, I said that Genji will win uh, the whole thing because of how, like, what happened on their vote, because I watched a lot of vote from different countries. And uh, Genji did really good. And cracking against them was such, like, it was so good. They have a really good micro, they shoot really well, they move well together. And cracking against Sentinels was also super good because of uh, their play style, 
especially their playstyle on defense. So yeah, we, we did learn a lot from these teams and we did practice them as much as we could. I mean, I definitely showed in the yeah. game that you played today. Uh, you, just now you mentioned that you, got, you guys have been working a lot together. You know, it sounds like a priority maybe to uh, get the timings right, cook a little bit to see how far this kind of Nat star uh, can go. Is that what you're aiming for? Because it feels like on previous teams, that was a huge win condition when Nats is able to get those lurks off. Or is there something else in the identity of Liquid right now that you feel like it, it is Liquid? So the identity is not going to be only nuts. Uh, we want to get, I want to get value from everyone in the team. I want everyone to be super comfortable in the team. It could be because of the agents, because of the playstyle, because of everything. And to do that, you need clarity. So I'm always going to try and bring clarity to what everything we do. But uh, Geo, Kiko, is a massive aspect of uh, how we play. Uh, is very important. Uh, James sometimes is going to be more or less aggressive depending on what we do and like everyone has everyone knows what to do and every, i want everyone to have a lot of value and also have fun of course because if you don't like what's the point you know so yeah that's that's what we do but ayaz is obviously a, a big piece of the puzzle yes yeah and where do you uh, like see yourselves like in the ranking of the entirety of uh, emea right now with the form that you're describing with uh, at your best how would you rank yourself you don't want to answer, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I just want to take it day by day and make progress every day because we are really far away from our peak. We just won today, but it was only one game and we have so many games to play now. So I just want to stay humble about it. Uh, we have a huge potential in the team, but we can also fail. Like everyone can fail. I want to learn from, we are ready to win, ready to lose basically in the team, We're ready for everything. I would say uh, like a good top three for the moment, but we are aiming for better. Uh, top three, top four at the very moment, but we want to make progress every day and reach that top one. I mean, with, with an extension of that, if you take a look at this graphic, you know, we're going to know, uh, you already know your schedule, you know what teams you're going to be playing against. Uh, is there a, a particular team you feel like could potentially give you the biggest challenge, like the hardest time? I think every team. I mean, uh, the, the most important point for us is that we need to improve game by game. We need to improve our mistakes. I think every team is uh, very good. Facing against every team shows the different mistakes because of the different play style. And we just need to focus on ourselves, how, we, how we can improve. And as he said, that's the biggest point. Uh, how are you uh, feeling about your next game? Because you play in two days. Uh, you, you don't have a whole week uh, to prep for that. So what's the prep been like and what do you make of that match? Well, we just focus on us, to be honest. Uh, we are ready for the game. It's in two days. So uh, this evening we're going to rest a bit and tomorrow we cook again and we go and fight uh, against footballists. So, yeah. I think it's good that uh, you're kind of lucky in a way to, to just get this out of the way, like playing the, the two matches in, in one week, in week yeah. one. Yeah. Um, you're talking about living everything day by day, improving and, and, uh, and all of this. How are you going to manage to keep the stamina up as the season goes by, right? Because um, I think that this is a big learning point. I think that Nats, you're perfect to, to answer this question because of how long and, and packed uh, the entirety of the season was last year. I feel like some, pe some, te some teams like peaked at one point and just started to go down. How are you guys going to manage to keep that in a very nice flow so there's it doesn't come to a point where you're just exhausted and cannot keep dealing with the rest of the year? Oh, I mean, I'm enjoying. <laughs> yeah, enjoy every day, uh, yeah. play. Uh, obviously, have a very sane and healthy way to fix issues because like in any team, you always have issues, right? And if you do that really well, it's not going to be tiring along the way. There's no reason. Uh, honestly, if we do it well, it's, it's fine. So the answer is we're just going to keep working and cooking. So <laughs> you're not you're yeah. not scared of uh, like getting burnt out? No, we have so we have a very intense schedule. But uh, like we uh, personally, I want it so much. Like I, I want to win so much. I'm aware that everyone can burn out at any time, right? So we need to do things really well. But I, I want it so much that I'm just going to fight for it. doesn't matter. Uh, how, all the way. How do you think missing out on Madrid affected you, you know, mentally? Because obviously you want to win, you want to go there. So when you were eliminated, uh, how did you kind of get back up? Oh, it was a huge reset. Yeah, I think, as he said at the start, that uh, not going to Madrid and losing kickoff showed uh, our weak points, what we have to improve on. You have to take a, a, something from the lose, right? And uh, you need to improve that in the other way. That's what I think we did. And that's what, what we're going to keep doing. And that's what is our focus. And uh, as he said, we're going to keep cooking. Uh, our Team Liquid back? Are we back? We're cooking. We're cooking. Yeah? We're cooking, yeah. 
But what? But you're gonna be back. Cooking. Oh, you're cooking. You're still cooking. I feel like we. I. I off topic completely. But you said you like to cook. Uh, what do you like to cook, <laughs> Enzo? Out of oh, the game. Yo, yo, don't Just get me voice. started. I will. Uh, it's What's never your best be dish? Over. Yeah. So What's if we're best if, dish? If, if we come to your house for dinner, what it's are you the, making? I will make tacos for you. Like you know oh, the what? tortillas. You're gonna make me tacos. Tortillas. Si. Okay. I, I, I see. Have you tried his tacos? They good? Oh, do you have? Wait, you haven't cooked tacos for, for yeah, well, yet? Yeah, first, first time I heard that. <laughs> About tacos. Oh, I feel it's like... It's two different cookings. It's two different cookings. Yeah. <laughs> I, will make, I will make nice tortillas for you and all the team. Okay. I, I think we, we should come around. We should go around to Enzo's. Are we invited? Yes, yeah, have some are. tacos. Yes. Oh, I can't wait for this. We can maybe do yeah, a rating. Hungry. We can do a rating okay, of the tacos. Let's go all, the, yeah. all the chat as well. Chat, yeah. you're invited. Let's eat, eat tortillas <laughs> together. Yeah, if you're in Berlin, come to Enzo's house. Yes. Yeah. Uh, before sure. before we round this off, um, so we do this thing at post on, of course. Every single day we get a couple of players here as guests. Tomorrow we're going to have two more players. We don't know who it is going to be. Uh, yeah, it will be uh, Fnatic players or Heretics players because they play game two. Um, would you like to ask them a question? If you can, any question, feel free to... It can to, be broad. It can be to create some could, chaos, Yeah, some you drama. can instigate. You can ask them if they like tacos, you know. Uh, feel free. You got a question, Lias? I hope you have inspiration on this one. Yeah. How many times a week you go to the gym? Oh, there oh. we go. You have to look at the camera. Yeah, you want to do it once more down the camera? Oh, that's your camera. You see it right there? This there one? you go. Yeah. Hello, everyone. How many times you guys go to the gym a week? Oh, I'm looking forward to this answer because apparently that's like a good thing, right? That's the that's the gym <laughs> yeah, buff. If they haven't seen this, they're going to be so confused. Yeah, that is uh, the gym buff indeed. But thank you very much, Enzo. Thank you very much, uh, Nats, for joining thank us. You. It's thank absolute you. pleasure to see you guys win and back on form again. Thank you, Kakuka, for joining me yeah, uh, as well. Of course, Bone Cold. Uh, we will be back tomorrow for more games. It's going to be a banger day as well. So make sure you guys have a lovely rest at home and come back and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Are you ready for that, James? Your body, baby. 